get it. I am going to get it. Huh. I am going to get it. I am going to get it. Huh. Put it on the line. This will silence all the critics. I will leave with many rings because I am going to get it. Huh. Find my rest while I am asleep. Walk the talk that's highest speech. In the city, fighters with me going after prior peace. Higher, I go higher, light a fire that's required. And we rally. Hello and welcome to your 2024 HCS Arlington kickoff major hosted by Optic Gaming and it's Championship Sunday, baby. We are so excited to get things going today. We have four teams left in the competition and this room is gonna be jam-packed with all of the fans from those teams who've been battling it out all weekend long at a chance to lift that trophy. That coveted first major title is so big for these guys. To let them know that their season is starting off right, that they are on the right tracks in terms of the progress they're making coming into this brand new year. To talk about all the fun stuff I have, Wes, and I do have Walshy. Lads, welcome to Championship Sunday. Sunday brings the best out of our teams, and I am so excited to see them clutch. Championship Sunday, baby. It's going to heat up in here very shortly. These four teams left have so much firepower. There's going to be fireworks on that stage all day long. It's St. Patrick's Day, so I brought out the green. But I'm excited to see who can really accomplish their dream of starting the season off as a champion, because it's so validating when you make a team change, or if you win the world championship, to, to know that you're starting the new meta of Bandit starts off on the right foot. Let's see who can take this and how they can build on it throughout the year. I think this is going to be a historic day for Halo. 100%. Well, she, when it comes down to a championship Sunday, the mentality of players, you know, what, what kind of comes to mind for folks at home who might never get the opportunity to play on a main stage with the stakes this high? What are some of these players feeling right now? Oh my gosh, they've been training for this months on end. As we talked about, this is the first event of the season. So some of these teams, they've gotten to rest well over the season, like FaZe, going confident into this new season. And other teams, they've just been hungry. They've been thinking about those losses since the last World Championship. So they've prepared, been preparing for this day, for this moment to perform for this crowd. Let's talk about some of the things that happened yesterday. And look, the stadium is lit up green. Of course, we're at the Optic Major. It would be rude to not talk about this team, especially after the incredible feat that they had yesterday. Clutch Optic Gaming, they looked unbelievable against FaZe yesterday. In fact, I'd go as far as saying they are now maybe the favorites to win this tournament after that incredible 3-0. How are you feeling about the green wall? Yeah, they're definitely my favorite. Coming into this championship Sunday, they look polished and for a roster that made a team change with the meta shift and everything you wondered how strong and how consistent this optic gaming roster was going to be at the first tournament you thought maybe it would take more time for dead zone to really find his groove on this team no instant impact is what dead zone has brought to optic gaming they have looked by far the best so far that series against phase was dominant and those are the world champions that took your opportunity at a second world championship in this title I'm excited to see the green wall and what they have in store for us today. Gotta agree with Wes there. I think many people looked at this swap to dead zone and thought it was more of a lateral movement. And sure, we maybe didn't see the exact results in the online qualifiers, but we're here 
on land, and he came out and performed, taking down FaZe, the 2023 World Champions. You know, something that I'm loving about Optic right now with this edition of Dead Zone is actually the change of pace we're seeing from this team. I know they are still slightly slow and methodical at times, but the swarming that's now coming in with Dead Zone has been so impactful. I think being able to change up the pace when they need to has caught a lot of teams off guard, especially FaZe. Really excited to see how that continues to grow on Championship Sunday. Another team that we've got our eye on, of course, is Shopify Rebellion. These guys, the Rebels, they are out for blood, and it doesn't end here. Championship Sunday can be a lot of pressure, right? And Walshie, when you think about Rebellion and how they played day one and two, it was great, consistent, actually. I wouldn't say they actually got even better on day two, but day three is where teams start to find their final form. Do you think Rebellion has another gear to go to? Nothing that I've seen thus far is telling me that they cannot do it. There have been many times throughout tournament runs where we'll see a team outside the established three, make a big run on one of the days. They'll have a really good Saturday, a really good Friday. But to chain together day to day, to me just says consistency and a top level team. So I'm not just seeing some sort of fluke from, this, from these guys on Saturday. I'm seeing them being the real deal and they're gonna bring it here today. I believe in them. Consistency is key, firepower is everything. They're in the mix with the big three right now, Clutch. Can they handle what the big three might give them on a Sunday? I think they can. I think they have to play a little bit better than what they did against SSG, but they were just margins away from being able to take that series to a game five and anything can happen there. I think they're gonna give FaZe everything FaZe can handle early in this series. You start this Sunday morning off with the best of five against a very strong team. It is all about how you get off on the right foot and gain advantages. I'm looking for Shopify to maybe catch FaZe off guard, catch them flat footed. And if they can get off to an early lead in this series, they can win it. They certainly can indeed. And exactly like you said, with FaZe there, catching them off guard is going to be everything. But with the FaZe bounce back yesterday against Complexity, I think that was everything you needed from this roster at that moment in time. They did fall so flat to Optic, 3-0 and sweep. It was not what they wanted, especially when it comes down to a World Championship rematch. That is going to be rough. But I love the way Walshy, they picked themselves up. They had a little bit of a weight. They kept warm. And they managed to answer back in quite a dominant fashion. What do you think about this FaZe roster right now? I mean, I expect nothing less. When I look at the space roster, in general, I don't see them losing very often, if at all, to teams outside that top three. I don't see them dropping many series to teams outside of Space Station or Optic. Now, can Rebellion come up to that challenge here against FaZe? FaZe have just shown they're so consistent. Their floor is higher than most teams' ceilings, but we are gonna have an area of overlap here, and I think if Shopify is playing well and FaZe are not coming out hot, this could be a Shopify series. We don't see FaZe lose series outside of really the top three tier or the top three teams ever, but they do get pushed to game five very often. And this Shopify team is yet to lose a Slayer in this tournament. I would be shocked if FaZe allow this series to go the distance because you do not want to find yourself in a game five versus a team that hasn't lost a Slayer. They will go into that game five confident if Shopify can push it that far. Certainly, I do think at times FaZe are their own worst enemy. If they do not respect Shopify on that main stage, things could start to go horribly wrong for them. What did you like, Clutch, about FaZe Clan yesterday in the Complexity series that really started to pick things up for them? I'm really looking at their main slays, the flashy players, to start turning things on, and I think that's exactly what they needed. I think it was everybody on the teams really stepped up, started making plays. That's the big difference from the Optic series to the Complexity series. Felt like in the Optic series, FaZe were getting hunted the entire time. They were on their back feet. They could not get map control. Optic were so aggressive. Not traditionally what we know Optic to do. I love the fact that we saw that. This FaZe team against Complexity, however, they were hungry. They were the, they were the hunters, not the prey. That's how FaZe need to play. They have to be in that mindset that I need to step up and make a play because they have four playmakers that can clearly get the job done. Well, we have some exceptional games coming your way today. And of course, fighting for that trophy to earn the right to lift it by the end of tonight. What do you guys earn though for watching? That's Twitch drops, of course. You guys need to be watching, of course, for three hours today. Make sure that you have all your tabs open. We have a bunch of streams going on to so make sure that you are always, always watching to get your hands on all of these gorgeous things. I actually haven't had a proper look at these before, but I've got to say the gold, that's right up my alley. I absolutely love these. Wes, are you going to be rocking any of those? Uh, yeah, I was thinking Dave's the, trip, uh, the double kill guy, and uh, I'm more of the triple <laughs> kill guy. So uh, medals for both of us, or at least uh, gun buddies for both of us. So it's nice to, to have those additions. That Warthog is clean, though. 
It is very, very clean, of course, uh, but it's absolutely fantastic. So make sure you guys are tuning in all day long. We also need to talk about the prize pool as well because there's a lot of money on the line. $250,000. First place will take home 100 k And as well, the, the players are loving, obviously, the amount of money that they will be receiving. Yeah, but this is too. such a big stamp on their season as well. So to get that first place, the prize money, and also the pride of place too, is huge for these teams. And it really just starts to pave the way for the rest of the year as well. We also do have our bracket uh, you know, being updated, of course, from yesterday and coming into today. If you guys haven't caught all of the action across the weekend, this is how things have gone since Saturday morning. Optic Gaming find themselves in the winners' finals against Space Station, and our semi-finals match versus Phase. It was absolutely insane what Optic managed to do on that main stage. It really was electric in here with all of the home crowd. And then we do have the elimination bracket. Of course, a few of our teams fell short early on. We did see Foe have a bit of a fight back through the elimination bracket, and fortunately. Unfortunately, Shopify Rebellion got the better of them. Fo though, taking a game off them. I was so impressed, Walshy, with what Fo managed to do here. And I think that is so buildable for the rest of their season. Yeah, Fo absolutely impressed this event, uh, especially Wudum. I mean, yes. the is going to continue to get better. I'm really excited to see what their future holds. Also, when you talk about taking that game off Shopify, I got to be a little concerned. They took off that yeah. King of the Hill, and we do have a King of the Hill in this next series. They were I like up, that. They were up 3-1 in that King of the Hill, and Shopify let it slip away. And th that's testament to Foe and the amount of ice they had yesterday, winning two game fives, and then being able to come back in that first game. That was incredible by them. But it does show you that Rebellion can keep the door open, and they do that against FaZe. That is going to be a massive mistake, because you know Royal 2 is kicking that door wide open. Absolutely. I'm really excited about this first matchup, though, because Shopify Rebellion have showed so much promise this far. And I do think they have an opportunity to capitalize on maybe a slow starting phase here. If they can win map one, that means everything to this roster so they can start to push momentum forward and snowball in the right direction. Yeah, I, I also think if you win map one, what does that do to the heads of phase? You saw how the second round of oddball was so competitive against Optic after the first one they got shellacked in. I think if FaZe win that second round of Oddball, that series can go completely different. But when you lose that game one, and you kind of like choked it away in the second round, and then you lose the game two, that series was over after game two. I worry that if FaZe doesn't get off on the right foot, do they even have an opportunity to gather themselves before they find themselves in such a big hole once again? We need to look at what is coming your way today because we have so much action on the score for you. I can't wait for some of these games and to see how they shape out. Of course, we have Face Clan versus Rebellion set in the elimination final. After that, our winner's final will be happening. Space Station versus Optic Gaming. Who will continue on out of Phase and Rebellion? They'll find themselves in the elimination final against whoever drops down from the winners. And then, of course, 4.30 p.m., we have our grand finals, which could be a quick one. It could be a slow one. It could be a reset bracket. Who knows what could happen, but I'm here to find out. Folks, before we do get into this first matchup, we have some incredibly talented players on all of our pro teams, and we need to give the flowers to the individuals who've been working hard this weekend. So, Blaze, it's time for our event commendations. Thank you so much, Lottie. And you said it perfectly. We have had so many hard-working players throughout this weekend here at Major One, absolutely putting on a show on the stage. It is time to show them some love. So help me do that eSports arena and to help me pass out some medals, I got my Irish brother shirts here on the main stage for St. Patty's Day, okay? Now, coming out first is for Main Slayer. Make some noise for Stella! Now, Stellar has been top five in kills per 10 minutes throughout three modes and top 10 in damage throughout four modes with a 1.22 KD. Give it up for him. Coming out next is going to be best objective. Show some love to Lucid. Now, Lucid is the number one rank for flag caps, fifth in steals, and number one ranked in objective across all four objective modes. All right, for best support, new name, same game. Show some love to Dead Zone. Now, 
dead zone is first in assists per minute in CTF, second in strongholds, and third in Slayer. And now last but definitely not least, for best coach, it's the best man! Best man has his highest placement as a coach this event, leading Shopify Rebellion to a championship Sunday. Now, let's get all our event accommodation winners to the center of the stage in Esports Arena. Give them a loud round of applause for all of our finalists. Congratulations to all our incredible players on the stage and of course our coach best man taking away their event commendations That's a nice little pick-me-up I think for a Sunday to get a dog tag go back knowing that you're the best you know in the entire weekend at what you do. I mean, that's a really nice little pick me up and confidence boost going forward. I think it's testament to a few of those guys up there that have gotten a couple of different awards for different reasons. Lucy getting objective player shows you just how versatile and how impactful he has been for this Optic Gaming roster. He's usually the main slayer, right? But the fact that he's doing it all now shows you that Optic continuing to grow in their roles and Lucy continuing to be the MVP type player he is. Yeah, indeed. Well, we've got a match to talk about, and that, of course, is FaZe versus Shopify Rebellion. I, I've got to say, this is going to be a really, really exciting matchup. I think this could be very close, actually. It depends, I think, on what phase we meet. I think, you know, first and foremost, when FaZe are rolling, they are absolutely gunning for you, and it is really hard to stop them. I think you can say that almost about any of our big three teams. But FaZe in particular, they can be very difficult to stop, and their pacing with the likes of Renegade, if he's just on one, on a tear, and they're letting him do his thing, that is very, very dangerous territory to be in. Yeah, and I think there's no question as to how will FaZe play in Series 2? How will they play as this series goes on in Game 4, Game 5? Are they going to get their groove? But it's can they pick this up right away? Are they going to fall flat against Shot by Rebellion? When we were watching them last night against Complexity, I actually was a little kind of confused and caught off guard with their comms when we went to a listen-in. They sounded a little more panicked, maybe a bit more intense than they normally would. Usually you hear them being so stoic about calling out their calls, and you hear them calling out like their tournament lives depend on because their tournament lives depend on that match. Yeah, you heard it from the FaZe guys in the interview. They needed more passion against Optic, they came out and said. Sometimes that emphasis, that energy, it impacts your team and how everyone's playing. The moment is real. They almost slept walked what felt like through that Optic series. It was a very quiet series from everyone on that side. So for them to wake up and bring that passion to that complexity series, they had to get kicked in the rear, I guess, to wake up here this weekend, defending their world championship, obviously. It looks like that kick has done a lot. Let's see if they still can have that mentality and carry it over to today. It is actually eerily similar to the World Championships. When you look at the stats, they're actually perfect outside of the Optic matchup. They're 5-0 they're and oh in clutch maps. That's going to be a little bit dangerous, I think, for Shopify Rebellion to kind of go up against. We know how icy phase are. How do you stop a team from being so icy, so clutch? Is there any kind of remedy that you can maybe slow phase down so they can't get the edge? I think it's all about knowing that you believing in yourself is the first thing you have to do and then you also have to just like stay mentally focused in these high pressured situations which is easier said than done obviously and i think that that's what makes phase such a special roster is because they've been doing it for so long and whenever they do get to those icy moments those 46 46 slayer games they figure out ways to close it out shopify will have to kind of show us that they're capable of that same clutch factor against a caliber team like phase it's not easy to do but if you want to be an hgs champion you have to win the close games so shopify we're going to see what you're made of and how much ice you have yeah it's going to come down to the ice but also the beautiful thing about competitive halo is that these players are going to have to make a thousand different micro decisions throughout this game. They're going to have a thousand different bandit shots they're going to have to hit. And who is making those slightly better decisions, who is hitting those shots a little bit better, is going to add up over the long run of this series. Indeed it will. Shopify, of course, being a very good Slayer team, as well as FaZe, though. FaZe are also known for how good they can be in Slayers. That is going to be a brawl for map two. What does Shopify Rebellion need to do to really make sure that they have such a strong start in that Slayer because it's so important? Imperative. Yeah, one of the big focal points I always feel like I point out when this 
kind of a series is going underway is who gets the power weapons because once any of these eight players can find themselves with a snipe and a camo or whatnot, they're going to make plays. It's inevitable. That is the position you don't want to find yourself against. It's all about getting control for that. So Shopify need to make sure they bring the numbers to the power-ups, the power weapons as they're coming up. You got to win those battles because you know what Frosty, Roll2, Renegade, everybody on phase can do with the snipe in their hands. You want that in Cyclos hands. You want that in Soul Snipes hands. You have to find ways to give your superstars opportunity to make plays because you know if you don't, it's going to happen to you the other way. I was going to ask you actually about that as well, Walshie, in terms of the individual players here, because Cycle, he actually leads the team with Slayer with a 1.57 KD, and then actually suppresses right there behind him as well. These two superstars, they can pop off, but against FaZe, do you want to see some individual light? Do you want to see a team synergy? What kind of way do you think the dynamic needs to go against FaZe in particular? Yeah, I agree with both sides of what Clutch said. On one hand, you want to see your superstars lead and take off, but at the same time, you have four players who have that ability. You need to really rely on who's in the right position at the right time. And it can't just be only relying on one superstar to go off. So at some point, even though someone like Soul Snipe has not had the strongest KD for his team throughout this event, when he's at the right position at the right time where he gets that snipe, he needs to step up to the challenge because you cannot have any weak links against a roster like FaZe. Yeah, you cannot have any weak links at all. And talking about weak links, there were some the last time FaZe actually did match up with Shopify Rebellion. Cycle and Mental being on that previous roster, they're looking for revenge. At Worlds, they took them down 3-0. and oh. That was really difficult, and I know that Renegade was being a menace as per usual. Across the three maps, he had 1.77 KD. He had over 22,000 damage. He was a problem. Do you think Shopify Rebellion will come out for revenge here? Do you think that they want to shut Renegade down? I mean, this team was put together to potentially create upsets of this magnitude to knock phase out of the elimination bracket out of the tournament this team has so much skill they put in so much hard work shopify believe that they can do it and i think that if they come out and start making individual plays and play as well as they have this weekend this series can go the distance it can even go in shopify's favor it can indeed. This is going to be a battle on the main stage. Make sure you guys are ready. Strap in because it's going to be a bumpy ride. We do have our two teams set, ready to go. One will keep going through the elimination bracket. One will fall short on Sunday. Let's meet Base Clan and Shopify Rebellion. world champions so far only dropping three maps this entire tournament i was those three two optic earlier knocked down to the elimination bracket much earlier than expected and out for blood right now on the other side you got Shopify Rebellion, the ultimate dark horse team, one of the most dangerous teams here in this tournament. I don't think anybody wanted to run into them. Not even FaZe. Can FaZe carry that momentum from last set against Complexity into today, into Championship Sunday is my question. When this team plays at their absolute best, they're a scary roster to behold. We had FaZe. 3-0 to competition, 3-0 complexity in order to make it to Championship Sunday. Meanwhile, on the other side, Shopify Rebellion felt like they should have 3-0'd foe. You know, maybe losing that first game, but then winning three in a row. Both teams riding that 
momentum to make it here to this best of five series. Strongholds Glide Fire going to be our game number one. What's that telling you? Honestly, I, I'm, I'm looking for Faze to come out swinging, but again, Wes talked about it on the desk. I'm looking for Shopify, who was built to upset this roster to make something happen. Arlington, game number one is on the way. It's Championship Sunday. If you're with me, make some noise. Faze, an absolute domination last night against Complexity. Will they be able to make something happen here? This game number one's about to be on the way here, but strongholds are game number one. Both teams, strong strongholds teams. I mean, obviously, FaZe have been there, done that Shopify Rebellion, trying to show what they could do. Who has the advantage in game number one? Who, what do you want to see out of both of these teams? For me, the one game that Shopify lost was against Foe, right? It was on live fire, but it was King of the Hill. Foe ended up taking that game after being down 1-3 in Hills. If Shopify want to come out strong, they can't be making mistakes against this championship roster and phase. They've got to come out swinging, like I said. They've got to play essentially perfect Halo here. That's a great point. That game number one, you, you blow a 3-1 lead in King of the Hill to that phone watch. You obviously were very talented, but a 3-1 lead, that's... That's some Steph Curry stuff blowing the lead like that. We don't do that here in Texas. The Mavericks don't do that. The Spurs don't do that. Absolutely <laughs> not. For me as well, that game too, we talk about Shopify Rebellion, six and zero in Slayers, but I mean, FaZe, one of the best Slayer teams in the HCS. Cycle's the big one for me. We talked about him being the leading KD on his team and suppressed a little bit behind. I'm very impressed with these two, but Today's where it matters the most, Tony. This is it right here in the elimination bracket. This is where you have to bring your all. I'm really happy you brought that up because I'm thinking, you know, FaZe are one of the best Slayer teams. But they've only dropped one this entire tournament, obviously, again, to Optic Gaming. Right. But on the other side of things, Shopify Rebellion, undefeated in Slayers, and obviously in a best of five series, you're guaranteed to see at least one. If you go to distance two, are you leaning on Shopify Rebellion being the favorites in that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just comes down to that first game. If that first game goes into Shopify's favor, we've talked about momentum time and time again. That's going to be a big factor. But I've got to talk a little bit about Soul Snipe, right? This man made a change after four years with the same roster, dating back to Halo 5, Tony. He made a change. And that change so far has paid off. His highest placing is third at the last Worlds, right? at first worlds but his team a bit new are they going to come to play here when it matters the most yeah i got the chance to sit down and do some content with the coach best man sitting behind this amazing shopify rebellion roster by the way coach of the tournament shout out to my man nick but he talked about having a vision for this roster and he talked about reaching out to soul snipe and challenging him to leave that friend group to maybe just maybe go a different route and like you said, I think it really has paid off for him. So, best man, want to give a shout out to him for really taking the risk right there to put this crew together because at first sight, it was like, okay, this is a little bit of a mosh posh crew, but it looks like a true team. This weekend, Shopify Rebellion have shocked the world. A lot of habits to break, right? A lot of changes to be made when you're on a completely new roster. We'll see if Soul Snipe can make those changes work for him. On the other side of things, you got World One. A lot of experience behind them on the coaching side. He's gonna be behind these phase boys, this world championship roster as we're about to load in to game number one, live fire, strongholds. I wanna see some snipes. Both of these teams are two and one in strongholds thus far. This will showcase who the better team is. And I'm looking for phase to come out swinging here when it matters the most. We talked about passion on the desk. Championship Sunday is where you bring that passion through. Sniper was snatched up by Renegade, but Soul Sniper and Shopify Rebellion immediately putting Phase 3 down and immediately grabbing hold of that power weapon and now control over towards the camo side. Camo's about to come up and Shopify Rebellion, Trip Cat coming out swinging. That was a quick three down for Phase and Soul Snipe's got the snipe in his hands. It's in his name, Tony. We'll see if he can put it to work. He's gonna get one and he'll collect that camo as well. Camouflage down to the bottom mid side. Find that Whoa. sniper. Royal 2, where's your head? 
Taken off is where it is on the floor. This camo is going to be a huge factor. They're gonna take A. He's gotta turn his attention, but look how he's playing this. He backs up right, goes towards his teammates. They play really well together. Mental's gonna clean up that kill. 39 to 1 run start by Shopify Rebellion. As we see FaZe trying to attack another base, but it's not gonna happen. Shopify defense looking tough. I was looking for Shopify to come out swinging. A 43 to 1 lead in Strongholds is exactly what the doctor ordered. Can they continue this momentum though? My question is, will they overheat against FaZe? Soul Snipe still has the sniper, hasn't died just yet. Oh, he's the one that has to hold off multiple members of FaZe for pushing through, but Snake Fight would not be denied. Snake Fight pushing through A. Will this be a trip cap for FaZe? This is the first time FaZe has had a bit of semblance of control. It's a triple cap locked in. And now Shopify Rebellion. They're gonna need to break this. And that trade might be the opening answer. Three down for FaZe momentarily. 48 to 27 right now in favor of Shopify Rebellion, but it is FaZe that come out with a trip cap. Shopify sending resources to try to take over Seaside, but they are being met with FaZe at every given turn. They don't get C, but they will take A. Not enough FaZe winning points. I really like the wolf pack by FaZe there to make sure to secure C and with securing that double cap, guess what? They also secure the lead so far. It was Shopify starting off really strong, but FaZe, they've come back here. They've brought this close. Shopify definitely set the pace early, but it was only a matter of time before FaZe were able to weather the storm, able to hold them off, and now this double cap. Really punishing Shopify Rebellion at the moment. They grab a hold of Charlie, they lost Alpha. What will happen with Bravo FaZe? They still have it. They sent a lot of resources towards that camo side. And they'll collect that camo if Royal 2 can stay alive. Enemy that teams. trade for B might be worth it here. We'll see if they can utilize this camo to potentially break this. You see Renegade, he's gonna end up going down, but Frosty gets the trade quick. The sacrifice of base in order to grab a hold of camouflage. Now you have camo, now you have Enemy resources teams. in the sandbox, and now you have a double cap just as quick. Sacrificing a few seconds to grab a hold of the resources, it's worth it. Yeah, it's just math, right? You got 30 seconds of camo to work with against maybe six or seven points at hill time. I would gladly take that trade if you're phase. You can see the rotation comes through. They're gonna try and get C here. Frosty does have to drop off that top tower position, but it's Royal 2 in front of him to make Enemy sure he's in a safe spot. Score. As the Slays are starting to favor Fade going into this mid game, so is the score line. 81 to 58 at the moment here, Fade. They have oh. control, and Frosty, you know he's icy. This is exactly what you're looking for if your Fade is Frosty starting off real hot. 11 and three for him, the sniper in his hands. You can see his head is tilted. He's in a flow state, ladies and gentlemen, he's locked in. He's on a six kill streak, he's locked in for a reason, and with the sniper, almost hits the quick scope, forced to back down right now with Shopify Rebellion, overwhelmed the B side, and Frosty, he's playing games right now, as he makes his way towards that sniper, should have been off the map. That was a great play by him, right? He goes for that no scope to potentially get the max damage, and then throws the sniper off the map as well. Renegade's gonna get a double in the feed. This is potentially control for FaZe as they get A and C. Nice little flank coming out of cycle, it's what he's known for. And right as World 2 tries to get involved, it looks like his teammates are covering his back, but you get into a 1v1 battle with Renegade. That's somebody you don't want to tussle with. Shopify Rebellion having to pull away from the nest side, pull back towards Charlie. They're currently down as far as Cap at the moment. FaZe have both Alpha and Charlie at are they moving for Bravo? Yeah, it looks like Bravo may be taken as well. There's a little bit of contestion there on the side of the Cycle. He's taken out, but it'll be tower control. Look how quickly they remove the players from Shopify Rebellion. On this C side, they gain control of C and B, and it'll be Renegade in a prime position on top tower. They're starting off as a 49 to zero run in favor of Shopify Rebellion. Since then, FaZe have got control of the game and have not let go. Camouflage is coming up, and you see Shopify dedicating three if not four members over toward that side of the map, they know they need camo in order to come back here as Renegade battles it out with Soul Snipe, not able to burn it, gonna go for the challenge of the Suppress, I thought he tried to stick him, but that's a frag, it doesn't matter! Still gets the kill, Suppress gets the trade, and camo sits over towards mid map. That was complete timing there by Renegade, a great job for him to slow down the pace of the game, and then when he had the advantage to go for those two kills, he did just that phase, picks up the camo here, huge for them. After that crazy fight we just saw, Shopify Rebellion losing Enemy out on time to dedicate numbers towards that camo. They don't get it. Snake fight gets away with it. 
And once again, 158 to 81 lead. Finally, Shopify get a double cap of their own. This is the setup that they have to hold. They need to make some waves, at least 30 to 40 seconds right now. And Frosty gets the first kill. Staked by and Renegade are going to follow it up. Three out of four members hit the black screen. So what does that mean? FaZe get aggressive. That's exactly what they do. They get B. This camo's value is huge. Just based off of objective efficiency. And it'll be B controlled. And again, you see a little bit of deja vu here. It's Frosty on the top tower with that sniper, the clear off the tower side, and now he's looking for picks on the beat. Shopify Rebellion, relentless with their Bravo push. Enemy right through the A side, scoring. straight to green. Sniper in the hands of Frosty, and all the way doesn't get the kill. The assist will be good enough. The headshot, another three down. Shopify in trouble. You generally see players go towards that C side when you have A, right? You go for that full Enemy rotation. Scoring. But is Shopify, like you said, constantly headbutting the B side? And FaZe are shutting it down time after time. They've almost doubled the score line of Shopify Rebellion. As, as Frosty with the sniper, the FaZe clan chant are starting to come here in the crowd. Body shot, another one. Multiple going down here for Shopify Rebellion. Snap their fingers, half the members to the black screen. Three down goes Shopify. So snipe the final player alive. Absolutely incredible job by FaZe to be so dynamic, right? I talked about the B push time and time again, but now they change direction. Go towards C, and guess what? FaZe are ready for it. FaZe, shut it down again. This might just be Shopify Rebellion's final opportunity here in this game number one. You see the push coming in, but it's a solo one by Menso. Not gonna work against Royal 2. He simply wins those pivotal battles. Soul Snipe, luckily, able to come up with that cleanup. Suppress tries to get involved, but before he's able to cross the map, he is shredded. Soul Snipe ends up going down. Phase are moving in for Alpha. Is that it? Yeah, great patience again by Frosty. They don't just charge in with camo, they utilize it to secure points. Game number one and momentum in the series. Shopify Rebellion starting off hot. But did they just run out of steam? Yeah, like I said, I talked about the overheating aspect, right? When you're playing one of the best in the world, you can have those shining moments, especially at the beginning of a game. But the question is, can you continue to play phenomenal Halo throughout? FaZe is going to pick apart your positioning. If you're just a step out of position, they punish it. They've got that damage to do so, and the individual talent as well. We saw an absolute clinic being put on by FaZe Clan right there with that stronghold. The ability to up the tempo, to push it, to push the pressure when necessary, but also to slow it down, set up, hold on to that double cap to really punish your opponents. We saw a little bit of everything with FaZe, and I think the score line kind of shows that. Absolutely loved the fact that we talked about Shopify consistently headbutting B, which is unconventional, right? You don't generally see, unless it's me, right? I'm, I just charged through me on big door. But, you know, for these teams, <laughs> they, they take the smart option. They go towards that C side, but Shopify weren't doing that. They changed pace. The crazy thing to me is that FaZe were just ready for it. It's a seaside push, immediately three dead. Just a beautiful job overall. And things like this, like you see on your screen, Renegade getting that kill, that shouldn't happen. He thought he had a plasma, and he ends up getting the kill anyway. That's what I thought as well. The frag kind of bouncing off of his visor right there, but the kill still came out. Suppress did have that extra time to trade out his life. And uh, it was good for them. You know, moments were good but they didn't put a complete game together. Now going into Solitude, Slayer. You go from Live Fire, one punishing map to another. If Shopify Rebellion aren't able to stay alive, they aren't able to keep it two or three up throughout the entire map, they're gonna get spawn trapped. They're going to get punished. That shock, Woo Oh yeah. <laughs> I've talked about it before, having that shock rifle, Tony, when the spawns come out on the blue, it's so devastating, right? You all know about the AOE damage. So if you're all spawning blue, your squad spawning on blue, and then that AOE damage comes through, it just makes it impossible to come off that spawn trap, like you said. So that's the person I'm watching right here. It's Cycle, the highest KD and Slayer on his team. He has to come out swinging today in Championship Sunday. This is his shining moment. He's the top KD and Slayer. This is his game type. As much as we talked about FaZe being one of the best Slayer teams in the league, it is still one team in this lobby that's undefeated, and it is not FaZe. It is Cycle. 
and Shopify Rebellion 6-0 right now. They have gone down in game one time and time again, but they've come back and it's always behind a game two victory. And then they carry that momentum into game three. Shopify Rebellion, they should make their, they should draw their line to sand. They should treat this game two like they've done everyone before. Treat it like a game five. Treat it like a must win. I love that, Tony. On the flip side, you've got FaZe who, we question the passion coming into that Optic series, the one Slayer game that they lost, right? They came out swinging today so far. Their passion can't be questioned on Championship Sunday. Has it ever been questioned on Championship Sunday? We got that camo. Sending towards the mid-map. Both of these teams are going to be fighting quickly forward. And like we said, if you go three down, if you go four down, it is so easy to manipulate spawns here on Solitude. It's gonna be bad, but Shopify Rebellion, you need a win right now. The last thing you want to do is fall 0-2 in the series, switching gears to fall 2 sitting up high. Playing a bit of SWAT, taking down that one shot player. Suppress answers back with a double kill. And Frosty also on the high side map, sitting on S4. Camo still up. Yeah, Camo still being up is a big factor, right? It's gonna be suppressed to pick that up. He was the number two KD in Slayer on his roster. So someone to look out for. And look at that. The pass of the shock rifle comes into his hands. The combination of the shock and camo is the most deadliest combination that we have here in Halo Infinite, especially when you talk about this game played at a professional level. Suppressed, he's not one to miss it. If he can catch the jump on a FaZe Clan member, it can snowball from there, but hits the body. The headshot just avoids him. Now waits for his teammates to push up. Soul Snipe with a double on the kill feed. It looks like he's gonna oh. change his attention to the main slayer, slays the demon. I was gonna give FaZe their flowers in terms of bulk packing when a camo was on the other team, but Shopify Rebellion, a great job to shut that down immediately. And that 6-0 record's looking real good right now, Tony. Eight yeah. to three. We're seeing why they're undefeated. Get going at Baze the way you are right now. Soul Snipe 4 and 1 suppressed yet to die once at the moment. It still has a bit of shock rifle to work with. So now you see a double push out of suppressed and cycle. Cycle taking a lot of damage. Suppressed just baiting that angle, anticipating the push. Still not enough. Phase again won't be denied. Yeah, a great job by FaZe. With Shopify having all those resources to work with, it's still FaZe that bring it within two. And that's just what impresses me about this roster, right? Being against the wall, being on your back foot, and still coming out, getting those trades when necessary. We've got a look now, though. Camo coming up at four. Although Shopify Rebellion were able to get an early lead, I feel like that camouflage had limited impact in the hands of Suppressed there. I want to see them grab a hold of this camo and do a bit more with it. Really punish FaZe, and FaZe have caught up. Only down by three kills at the moment, as both teams really surrounded this camel, using it as bait. Yeah, it's such, it's in such a threatening spot, right? The top center of the map, so many angles to be able to see that camo. You see Soul Snipe, he's gonna make the flank towards top center. A lot of damage comes through. That's two down for FaZe. They do trade out Cycle, but they've got the numbers advantage to potentially pick this camo up. Suppress gonna chase down Renegade, and as the final player goes down there, Roar 2 with the challenge. Shopify Rebellion still with the lease. I wanna hop on board with a listening with Shopify Rebellion. Huh? Yeah, they do, they do. They have it. Probably gonna try to get sniped. They have a killer out the window. Yo, I saw Camo at 2. Shock and 5, shock and 5. I'm trying to get Camo shock. Yeah, I'm on check Jive Bite. You wanna, you wanna just wanna change the contest? Contest Bite? Uh, right. yeah, we can. Alright, It's kinda late time. Yeah, yeah, it's late time. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard. Have the window, fell dip. You guys want shot dip? Two more shot dip? Oh, two more shot dip. I'm like, dip one. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Don't die, don't die. They're trying to get. Push it forward, push it forward. They're probably watching us. Money guys, money guys, one shot. Death, death. Hold on. Hold on, absolutely, bro. Watch out, Stu, watch out, Stu. Stop me, Camo. Two there, two there. Hold on, hold on, Stu. Hold on, watch out, watch out. I am, I am, I am, I am. We broke out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, guys. Bottom it, bottom it, bottom it on me. You turn, you turn. Snake bite. Drop on it, drop it. Turn one it, turn one it. Watch out, bottom it. Yeah, we're looking at U-turn. S2's looking at you. Press, uh, Donnie. Still U-turn, I got the lead. Still U-turn, still U-turn. Bandy, Donnie, Bandy, Donnie. Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy benches. It's all, it's all you, Billy. Yeah, we're, we're trying to stun you. Let's try to get to Billy. Yeah, we are. We're up. Let's get to you. We're trying to get to you. I came up 15. Dabby looks good. I'll be in Billy. S1 jump. Did you push the S4, S4, guys. There's a guy. I hear a guy fall right here. Stay strong, is market? Market, market. Okay, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, they're gonna try up. to play for camo. Yeah, we should push. They haven't used a lot of snipes. Two blue, two blue, two blue. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Two blue, two blue. 
Alright, alright, alright. Typing us more over. Alright, alright, alright. 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 Alright, alright
and then from there they ride that momentum into a game three win and they know from there all you got to do is take another objective in a row or worst case scenario you lose that right what's going to be game five another slayer which you have yet to lose this entire tournament shopify rebellion were built for upsets and maybe we see the biggest one here of the year got to talk about cycle on the side of shopify right there right 40 500 damage, the highest damage in the lobby. And that's the second highest Slayer KD in this weekend. He's proving it. And that's the player I had to watch, right? I wanted to see what Cycle was going to do when the pressure is the highest. He's our second youngest player in the league, and you got you to gotta think about it, right? When you're that young, you haven't gone through that much pressure very often. On the biggest stage, in the biggest moment, he performs. And it's funny you talk about how young he is here. There was one point we were doing an open series event and it started on a Sunday and ended on a Thursday last year. Yep, yep. He actually couldn't make the event. He had an exam. Oh. He had a very important <laughs> exam. He was still in high school. I love so the, it. the man starting his professional career, yep. missing out on a, a championship Thursday then. It was an online event yep. because he had to make sure he was on that honor roll. Love that. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, school is very important. Make sure you stay in school, okay? <laughs> Halo secondary. But when you can do both, <laughs> what kind of person are you? I absolutely love to see that out of cycle. But FaZe, I, I'm, I'm a little shocked, right? I, they came out swinging in that game number one. We talked about it often. Game number two, it was Shopify who had their number, and they called it often. Going into King of the Hill, you have an undefeated record coming in from FaZe. On the other side of things, Shopify Rebellion did lose one to foe after being up 3-1 in that game. They can't make mistakes like that. Not at this level of competition, not on Championship Sunday. If you have FaZe in a chokehold, you better make them tap. Otherwise, FaZe gonna get up and they're gonna knock you right out. We talked to SLG yesterday, Tony, in the green room, and he gave some great insight on the side of FaZe, like what he's noticed of this FaZe roster. Obviously, it's his opinion, but with that 4-0, he was saying how safe they play, you know? And I think Wes actually alluded to this yesterday on the desk as well, how safe they play as a roster. What my question is, is how Shopify is going to kind of break that, you know, how they're going to break that, you know, positioning by phase, how they're going to break through these setups. I, I think it's going to be really difficult, especially on a map like Recharge, where those cross shots are so important. Fist bumps going across the board for the new kids on the block. We know phase are the world champions. We know how good they are, but young guns that are here. It's maybe it's time to pass the torch. Maybe just maybe Shopify Rebellion upset and, and shock the world right here. We're going into this game number three, a swing game three series tied up. Recharge, King of the Hill. King of the Hill, my favorite game type. Every hill feels like a new game. Oh, it's great, right? I love King of the Hill on Recharge specifically. And honestly, I love the changes made to this map and game type combination. I absolutely love the Batteries Hill. I think it's really difficult to hold, but also if you get a great setup and you use those pillars to stay alive, it could be really beneficial for you. And speaking of those Batteries Hill, that's exactly where we'll start off, but the action starts off towards the mid map. Camouflage snatched up by one of these teams. And Enemy phase, they hill. start off three down once again. They've got to pick up the pace here. We talk about often, Tony, how FaZe have to have this switch that they flip at any moment in time. It's time right now. We're in Championship Sunday. This is the <laughs> elimination bracket. Flip the switch quick. Can't be playing in the dark. Not around here. Oh, oh. my gosh. Suppress coming out, putting a shot to FaZe's system. FaZe end up going four down Shopify. They're about to run away with Hill 1. You talked about having that interview with Best Man, but oh my word, he, he built a great cool. roster here. They look to be so gelled and ready. Suppressed, he's impressing me so much. Starting off three and one in this game. It was a three down, then a four down for FaZe. Finally though, FaZe get control of the Batteries Hill. It was psyched with one fresh out of high school, but it's suppressed that part is eight game. Meanwhile, State Fight was able to grab and hold up that shot. A couple shots there, enough to weaken Cycle, but not enough to get the kill. Snake Bite ends up going down 4-2, and the rest of FaZe trying to replace him. As long as the slays go down, it does not matter who gets the kills. Yeah, a great job by FaZe to get that immediate control after that 3 dead. They do give up a little bit of a spawn there on that glass side. You see Cycle spawning up there last, so they'll still be in this Battery's Hill, though. Not playing scared whatsoever. They're making sure to hold this. It's going to be Royal 2 with some shots, but he gets taken down. 
top of five rebellion, whenever they lose control, they play a very simple game. Take space right off the spot. Push right through that long haul side. Get right back in the fight. Never give up. The problem is, is that Renegade is a slayer. Triple kill out of Renegade Mental. The final player alive is gonna try to hold Renegade back. Enemy they can't even hold him down. Tony, the lights are on. The switch has been flipped. Renegade's starting to pop off. Days have the camo in Snake Bite's hands, and they've got initial control of this second hill as well. You see Frosty on that bat ledge side, right? He's gonna get info, he's gonna try and stay alive on, on that pipe side of the map. Snake fight with the camouflage, instead of playing back toward the blue pipes, playing towards the front side. A much more aggressive stance coming out of Snake fight and phase as they've run away with this one, about 80% done. Shopify Rebellion nowhere to be found. It might just be two in a row when Shopify looks like they were gonna close out the first. I really love the usage of the battle rifle here and the shroud screen as well. Such an important equipment to use, especially on a map like Recharge. Phase take the second hill. Two to zero is the lead thus far with how great Shopify started this game. I did not expect to see FaZe take immediate control. FaZe did take most of that hill, but I feel like towards the end, Shopify Rebellion gave it to them. They punted. They moved okay. over towards that next hill. At least if you're going to lose two in a row, at least be set up towards that next one. Shopify Rebellion doing just that. Halfway done with this. Maybe they put themselves on the board. FaZe is down. I love this, right? Immediate control of this next hill is so important. Elevator is such a heavy spawn. If you're talking about spawns, Elevator is such an important thing to control when the hill is on this Whirlpool side. And Shopify, because of that immediate control, look at that, a hill for them immediately. Finally, Shopify Rebellion on the board. <laughs> what a quick two down phase. Rotating toward the Z side of the map. Two members of Shopify infiltrating tower, but they're both gonna go down courtesy of that snake bite. The Venom is in. Staggered spawns by Shopify Rebellion. Phase setup has been locked out, has been locked in on the map. Shopify Rebellion need a break. They need to attack a perimeter. I love this. Snakebite has control of this Hydro side. That's going to allow, who well, I thought it was going to allow Renegade to get that camo, but I believe it may have been burnt. Seaside control is so important with that camo is up. Two down for the side of Shopify. Mental's in a rough spot right now. Cycle got a kill, but he's got to play against two players here on Hydro. Behind enemy lines, this could be a flank. Oh, gets himself a kill on the Snakebite, but the nade comes right back in. Raw 2, still trying to figure out where he went. Finally wraps him back to where he was. Takes down Mental. Shopify Rebellion still relentless with their push. FaZe have not weathered the storm just yet. In fact, Shopify just snuck into him. Talked about FaZe playing a bit safe. Shopify, they're pushing in. They're aggressive. They're confident. And on Championship Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly how you want to play. But it's two down once again for Shopify. Trades have to come out. Renegade somehow stays alive. Grabs himself back with the grapple. And He's still alive right now, and that's what some of the best players in the world are going to do. They're going to make every kill hard. You're going to have to earn every one, two, one lead. Still in favor of FaZe as they're about halfway done to making it a three, one. I promise you, FaZe, they don't choke me. about one to score. Snake Bite with a shock rifle in his hands on long haul. Such an important position for him. He's gonna be able to get that AOE damage into the pushing players. The Shopify don't have any safe way to get in this hill. But Snakebite's kind of trapped here. Are they aware he's on long haul? No, they're not. He's going to get the first one on the mental. Cycle goes down as well. Double kill coming out of Snakebite. And Soul Snipe was able to sneak through over towards Suppress. So this area, this seaside, still being fought Enemy over. Enemy team took phase. They do obviously have an advantage and a huge lead on this one. But they still have to slay out Shopify at least one more time. The nades are going down. And so will Frosty. A three-man push out of Shopify. Five, but Snake Fight with the shot might just change things, might just turn the tides. The General's having such a phenomenal game, 12 and 6 thus far. We've always seen him clutch up when it matters the most. And FaZe about to close out hill number three. Domination, Tony. Still two minutes and 44 seconds remain. And now this is a struggle bus for Shopify with million from the bottom mid hill. Even if Shopify take it over towards the battery side against FaZe, this is a uphill battle that Shopify Rebellion are going to have to fight their way, but they just walked their way out of a setup. They just hopped themselves over toward the hill when they have FaZe exactly where they want them. My biggest thing is FaZe only lead 42 to 35 in the kills category, but they're up two hills. That objective efficiency that we talk about so much with FaZe really starting to come together here on Championship Sunday in this game number three. Waiting for the push coming out of 
Jackson toward the A side runs into one over in the bottom tower. And with that, half the members of Shopify go down. And they aren't going to mess around. They aren't going to play time here. In fact, they're going right towards this hill. They want to close it out in 4 1 fashion. Yeah, I absolutely love that, right? When there's this much time on the clock, you can play time based off of the numbers advantage. And that's what FaZe do, right? The hill still being capped here by Shopify. FaZe are not too worried about it with that big lead. Gonna try to get some damage on the cycle. He has to go down here. Look how well he's playing his life. Whoa. He stays alive. Little Cali Clamber action coming in cycle. Put in the moves onto FaZe, and that might just be two in a row. But hold on. FaZe stopped him just short of stealing away this hill. Now FaZe have the opportunity to maybe just maybe close things out, but nobody accounting for it. Suppress. He grabs the second one. Hold on. Right within one. It ain't over. Faze aren't set up yet on this pipe side hill. Immediately after getting that hill, Suppress goes directly for that ledge. The most important position for this battery's hill. Renegade pushes in very aggressively all by his lonesome, and he's gonna go down because of it. Enemy team took the with the shock. Makes his way over towards the hill, and what a shot! With that shot from across the map towards the bottom tower side, three down go phase, and Aldo Suppress hits the black screen. He gets replaced immediately, and Soul Snipe, along with Shopify, aren't going to skip a beat. They're gonna go right back in that hill. They may just close things out before FaZe get involved. FaZe have to push off a spawn right now. This is the most important camo of the game, and Cycle has gotten it, and not only that, he stayed alive the entire time, and now he's got that bat ledge control. Get a kill on the Royal 2, and Mental's gonna get a kill on the Frosty. That'll be three down for FaZe. It should be Shopify Rebellion closing out this hill. I think it's mathematically impossible for FaZe to get the bout. Renegade tries to make a play, but it ain't gonna happen. We're going to a one hill takes all scenario. The question for me was, will Shopify overheat? Absolutely not. Guess what, Tony? They vented their weapon. They're ready to strike again, and a tie game with a minute and 30 but with three down goes Shopify Rebellion after being up 3-1 and seeing the comeback Enemy from Shopify. I want to hop in and listen in, but with FaZe, I want to see how they respond. I think he's on the right. I got a, yeah, you got to take I got a really good enemy. Yeah, 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 stack, stack, stack. Watch your stack, watch your stack, watch your stack, guys. No, let's see how many he's up. We're living, John, we're living. Are you? On the left, on the left, on the left. On the right, Hey, you went home, you went home. They all spawned up already. Yep, we got camo in 20 as well. Look, 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 Yo, I can push right. I can push right. Yeah, I can push right. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Camo 15. Camo 15. Look at CQPJ. Look at me. 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 Look at Yeah, Shopify and Rebellion were able to weather the storm despite the fact that Renegade had the camouflage. He wasn't able to make the play to get Shopify out of this hill, and this could end right here, right now, unless Royal 2 comes in with that shot. Three down goes Shopify. I see his Royal 2, 46 seconds remaining. He's got the shock rifle as well, directly aimed at the spawns of Shopify Rebellion. And he takes out Mental, but Cycle gets a kill in the feed as well. Shopify Rebellion had the game in their hands, but Royal 2 just snatches it right up. Another shot, a killing spree. And now Cycle's gonna push it, and he may just get it too. But Cycle off the top rope. Mental gets his. Three down goes Shopify. Cycle's not able to hold it. That may just be it. Frosty's in the hill. He has the shroud. I don't see anybody from Shopify. They're taking the lead. Absolutely phenomenal job.
by the side of FaZe to close that out when it mattered the most. Royal 2 with the shock rifle, the difference. And again, they come up icy. You've been in this, these situations so many times. You've learned from them time and time again. They're the world champs for a reason. That end game was breakdown worthy. When you see Shopify Rebellion in that hill, just closing out on the final split seconds that they need, they, FaZe had two chances to break. Renegade with the camo, wasn't able to do it. Right. Royal 2 literally had to make a play. Otherwise, it was over, and you already know, he clutched. He does what he does. Royal 2 with that shot, absolutely shutting down Shopify Rebellion, stealing that game away, and now all that energy, that momentum that Shopify had off of that game to win, off of that 3-1 comeback to tie things up, where is it? So much weight is given to the KD, right? How many times you die? You should have a high KD, but Renegade, that was one of those situations where him dying opened everything up for the side of Royal 2. How much damage he did with that camo was the factor for me. Royal 2 coming up clutch as well. Cycle almost had it at the very end there. He won that 1v1, but again, FaZe come out and they continue to send forces your way. There's not much you could do. There's gonna be times where going into a championship Sunday where you're gonna be put in those positions where you have to make a play to win the game. And I feel like that's what separates world champions. That's what separates the best of the best from, I guess, being matchmaking. <laughs> like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're definitely matchmaking kids. But absolutely, I'm excited, uh, you know, for, for the, the Tuesday changes as well. I'm curious how that's gonna affect land at the next event. But these teammates, these guys are not worried about that right now. Right now, they're worried about the most important match. Elimination semifinals. Aquarius CTF up next. I'm really curious. When it comes to these two teams, who do you favor in this Aquarius CTF match? The fact that I love me some game fives, I almost want to favor <laughs> Shopify Rebellion, we but both do, yeah. the stats are just a bit biased. I'm not a biased caster. Don't, don't no. be you -E -S -T me. I'm not a biased caster. No, not at all. But the stats are biased. FaZe are undefeated on Capture the Flag. Ooh. Not a single loss so far this tournament. So although I really love the young boys, I, I really do. The, sh the Shopify Rebellions of the world really are the future in this league. It's FaZe. It's FaZe that are the favorites going in. This could be the last time we see Shopify Rebellion in this tournament. To me, it's going to be about that comeback on the last match, right? You were in control for such a long period of time, and then FaZe just kind of come in and swoop it from underneath you. Is that going to affect the mental of Shopify? This is where coach of the event comes in best, man, right? To keep them collected, to keep them focused on what's next. Forget the past. It's time to lock in for game number four. Switching gears over towards Aquarius, and we've seen some changes made going into this season. We talk about that overshot spawning towards the bottom P side. On Capture the Flag, it's interesting. You normally want to control, what, the car side of the map, but that overshot draws you toward the P side at least every two minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how this starting strat works for both teams. You can even see some teams they decide to go towards this car side, send a 2-2 push, but it's Shopify Rebellion, like you said, immediately rushing towards that overshield. Can they get value out of this OS, though? FaZe have actually elected to almost punt the OS. Nobody really going over towards that P side and really allowing Shopify Rebellion to get it for free. I'm not sure this strat is going to work. In fact, I think they throw it away to cut it out of the playbook and toss it in the trash because FaZe end up going three down. Luckily, Suppress goes down with that OS. Yeah, with three down, Suppress ends up pushing that fridge side and they end up spawning in the back base. So he's going to get pinched by two players. And because of that, that flag cap, that flag pull, I should say, will not come out. It's a double push once again from Shopify. They've got control now, and that flag will go into utility. Another three down for FaZe, and Shopify Rebellion want to take advantage of it. Mental down to one shot, trying to avoid any kind of angles from the bridge side, makes it through. So far, trying to cross the 50, though. You see Renegade taking down Suppress. You're going to have to bring this slow and steady. They have to slay while they move the flag across the map. Yeah, you can see he's playing really slow, waiting for slays on the side of phase. Look at the top left of your screen. You start to see the phase members fall. Mental will be a bit more confident to pull this flag, but that card two player is going to be a big problem. Suppress pulls it out, though, gets towards those stairs. 
but he gets taken out. Oh, Mental with oh. the patience. Not just a virtue, but a weapon that Mental uses to take down two members of FaZe that were actively trying to push for the return. Another three out of four down state fight. The only player alive and Shopify Rebellion, they're gonna push this one in. Mental was the catalyst for me on that cap. 22-time Gears of War champion. He's no stranger to championship Sundays. But for me, it's about this overshield, right? A lot of pressure given out by Shopify with that first OS. World 2 in posi position for the second one. As another overshield comes up, it looks like Shopify Rebellion want to make it two in a row. He turned one overshield into a cap, but Renegade going to deny you of that second one. And now with Renegade pushing right through the Uto side, perfect kill. The audio tells him to turn around and turn on Soul Snipe. Beautifully played by Renegade and FaZe, and even Snake Fight's able to trade out his life. FaZe still have control, they still are pushing up. Yeah, they end up getting three dead on the side of Shopify, but they don't have any pressure on the map, no space to control, so they have to play it a bit slow, and because they don't, and because Shopify is cemented into their setup, FaZe are gonna fall two down once again, and it leaves Renegade all by his lonesome, but he doesn't need any teammates. He's gonna get a single kill, and potentially a double on the soul fight. Make that a triple for Renegade. Renegade. Like a wrecking ball, oh. goes in for the overkill. You can't stop that man, he's the demon. That's exactly what you need if you're FaZe. A player like Renegade to pop off and give you that energy that you need. It's so important for the momentum of the game. And Frosty follow up though, gets a lot of damage out. He ends up falling. It'll be Shopify Rebellion playing from their flag. And they'll go for a push once again. Starting a bit defensive, want to make sure they secure their slaves before they inch forward. This is just good fundamental halo now coming in for Shopify. The moment phase dropping numbers is the moment Shopify wants to attack. Buster's grabbed by some rest, but looks like FaZe was using it as a bit of bait. Easy kill now for FaZe. Cycle with the heat wave, bringing the heat, taking two down with them. Cycle, eight and seven so far in this game, but an impactful two kills there. Renegade still, though, playing this very annoying route in the back of his face. I love the confidence by Soul Snipe. Wow. Don't let Renegade go on a run. Shut him down early. Just snipe that man's soul from the low ground. Did Soul Snipe. Another overshield coming up. It looks like it's going to be a 2-1 to one grab here for Shopify Rebellion. Suppressed, just sneaking that one through. Maybe three snare. Next leg going to be important. Renegade answers with the double kill. Is he under the triple? Oh. Come on. Goodness. That's just unfair. That's just not fair. Tony, why don't you play like that? Absolutely phenomenal by the center renegade. <laughs> Insane by him, right? And this is what you need again. I said it again. I'm going to say it again. This is what you need if you're phase renegade to start to give you that energy, and then you can all come around that momentum together. Flag going to be tossed by Frosty just to create a bit of pressure for the Shopify side, but this renegade knows someone's behind him. Sneaky beaky like is suppressed. Can he stay alive? Not. Renegade falls. Buy, buy some time with the movement, Del. Still not enough. Both were going down here for FaZe, and Shopify Rebellion always will take advantage of that. Suppressed makes his way towards the peace side. Instead of running to three members coming off a spawn. I thought that sticky was good. Suppressed probably thought the same. He's still gonna push up. Look at the pinch mental from the car side. Suppressed from the peace side. Limiting the options of FaZe lead to a three down. Shopify should be running flag. Suppress played that really well. You saw him cut off the angle on one player in a 1v2 situation. Gets enough damage on that second player for his teammate and Soul Snipe to clean it up. But Soul Snipe's gonna win a big pin or lose a big pin, I'm sorry. On the side of FaZe's base and Suppress, wait a minute. Suppress is behind Renegade right now. Is he gonna get any damage on him? Renegade gets away. There's no possible shot. He still gets the trade with Royal 2's help. Bit of a sneaky beaver play coming in out of suppressed, but it's still Frosty and FaZe that pulled that flag out and passed the car side. Frosty gonna try to curb slide his way into the relay. Soul Snipe with a perfectly placed grenade working on the return, but FaZe are funneling members. They want to keep this flag alive, and looks like the relay will work. Double kill them out of Shopify. Flag still towards the bin map. The return is still possible, and with an overshield, it's definitely coming. Yeah, that overshield was huge in that play, right? The fact that Shopify was able to get that first initial kill, clean up and get that overshield, allowed them to continue to maintain this one cap lead. It's Psycho once again with the heat wave in hands. Still with Shopify rebelling with the advantage. 
And as they take control, as they get the slay, Cycle wasting no time whatsoever maneuvering this flag through the util side. But now kind of using it as a bit of bait. Hiding in this corner, waiting for FaZe to push forward. An easy shot in melee, but with the nade coming out, FaZe might just be anticipating this move. I like the support by Mental here, but it might be a giveaway. Cycle playing very patient here. He's got to touch the flag or make a move at some point. He's going to get the kill on the save fight, but no one's going to be able to touch the flag. That's a mishap by Shopify. Two down for FaZe, three down for FaZe, though. Royal to the last player alive. He's got the top center position. Interesting play. FaZe was almost returning that flag, but just using time, just using the reset. They said, if you're going to try to bait us out, we're just not going to fall for it. Right. We'll allow the flag to return an opportunity for Shopify Rebellion to go up 2-0 in this game. Down to nothing. Gonna get a snake fight back Ooh. to back kills. Royal 2 showing us a bit of the boost. Lead down goes Shopify. Mental going to back down. This flag is already pulled. Mental though breaks right through. Ooh. A double kill out of Mental stops. Phase Clan right in their tracks. A massive double by Mental coming off of his spawn on the back of flag. Like you said, stops a very important tie game flag cap from going in. But again, what I'm seeing here, Tony, is the fact that constantly it's World 2 on top center control. Is he going to be able to utilize that advantage, though, to potentially stop some players from pushing that OS that's coming up right now? Shopify Rebellion once again take control, and with the three down for phase, there's only one player that can deny the overshield from Shopify and Snake Fight, who gets the kill on the Soul Snipe, but oh. suppressed once again. That's what is third this game. That's at this point, I think he might spawn with overshield. Yeah, honestly, he gets OS, and it's at the last second each and every time. But, honestly, really good by FaZe to make sure to deplete that overshield instantaneously to make sure it's not a big factor. And now you see it's Shopify Rebellion with top center control. Still a 1-0 lead in favor of Shopify with 3 minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. So plenty of time for anything to happen in this game, including Shopify putting another one on the board where FaZe maybe to come back. So Crest going right at World 2. Target prioritization as he switches over towards Snake Fight and continues to put down damage. This is what Suppressed does. He puts down that damage and you have one of two things. You either back down and his teammates clean you up or you challenge and you lose it. 21 kills to his name right now. Three down go phase as Suppressed gets this flag over towards the mid map, over towards the courtyard, but didn't account for World 2 and Frosty. I love Suppressed movement right there to use that little bit of a curb slide to get that flag through the bottom center of the map, but there's still a lot of work to do for the side of Shopify Rebellion. Phaser doing an incredible job of making sure to trade out these kills time and time again. Flag passively returning once again, Tony. Great damage. Almost able to take advantage of that opportunity, but Phase, they were relentless. They did not give up on it. Eventually, the return comes in. So it's like going right after Frosty. You have two more phase members looking to take his place. Another overshield coming up, but this time it's phase that have come. What's crazy to me is the fact that Shopify Rebellion only, uh, Shopify Rebellion lead in slays 75 to 64. You're talking about a team in phase with three, I mean four, absolutely incredibly individually skilled players. And you'd expect a bit of a difference there, but phase not having that slay power that we're known, we know them to have. I like you lose to. I mean, you're out slaying the opposition by double digits, 78 66 at the moment here. A Shopify Rebellion suppressed with the stick onto Renegade. Where did that come from? World 2 now going to be the final player alive here for FaZe. Luckily for FaZe, Shopify aren't in their base, but they are coming off of spawn, and Frosty wins those picks. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the bottom center of your screen. Time is going to be a factor here. A minute and 25 seconds remain. FaZe. Backs up against the wall, have to make something happen, but they constantly are going three down. Finally, Frost is gonna get a couple of kills here. Make that only one. It's two down for the side of Shopify. Days really are on the clock at the moment here. Just about at the minute mark. He's gonna be the final, what, three, maybe. Four One pushes now remain. coming in for phase. Shopify Rebellion could be on hard defense mode at the moment. But as of right now, Cycle's on the black screen. Soul Snipe catches the stick. World 2 taking two down before going down himself. That's just efficiency. Suppressed wins his battle. Mental takes down Snake Bite. The defense from Shopify is looking strong right now as Frosty is forced to slow it down and 
time is not on their side. I said a minute, it felt like just a few seconds ago. Yeah, they have one last push maybe here. Frosty going down, they're going to have to wait for him to come off the spawn. That's gonna be 10 seconds to wait for the side of phase. And you know, for me, it's the general right now. What he's saying in the comms, that's going to allow this team to make a good play. He goes for the heat wave, suppress takes him out, but he ends up falling. I'll tell you what the general is saying right now. Could be going to a game five. Hold on. Renegade with the last ditch effort to at least get that flag out of the base, but a quick return is going to give Shopify Rebellion the win. Are we going to a game five? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to a game five. Let's hear it in the arena. Shopify Rebellion surprising everybody right now against the world champs in phase. The crowd going wild right now. Shopify have been killing it. And again, we talked about it from the beginning. Lottie asked, she said, who was that Dark Horse team? Who was that team that's flying under the radar? I, told, I, said, I, I, I said, it has to be Shopify. Everybody is counting them out. Nobody even had them here in Championship Sunday. You think they had them ever have them the world champions? In a game five, an elimination here in top four? This could happen if Shopify take one more. Tony, I don't like to give you a big head because I like to have the biggest head on the stage. You, but, oh, you do. Oh, I do. Okay. But, during the open series one, when we were talking in Discord, I remember you saying, Shopify is my dark horse. And I'm not gonna lie to you. In my head, I was like, okay, Tony, stop it. This is this not a, that's not a thing. But again, well, I wouldn't say again. Again, I don't want to make your head big, but you were right. <laughs> they are looking phenomenal here. And even with Renegade playing the way he is, this team is scary. Now, if I'm Soul Snipe, you know what I'm feeling right now? Very confident. I'm feeling like, you know what? I made the right choice. It was a high risk, high reward play. And now he's playing for his highest placement, potentially his highest placement ever. Yeah, I mean, it was literally just last, what, a couple of weeks ago, something yeah. where Native Red, along with that good soul snipe and Druck and all of them, made that incredible run to make it to a third place in a world championship environment. On top of that, the success that they've been able to have and being able to team with your best friends, but, Best man, coach, best man of Shopify Rebellion, challenged Soul Snipe. He said, I want to bring you out of your shell. I love it. I want to pull you away from the group. We love that group. We right. really do. But we want to go, we want to challenge you. And I will say, Soul Snipe and Shopify Rebellion have been so good this tournament. Dare I say, great this tournament. Dare I say, elite in this tournament. It had to be just that to hold the phase down, who were undefeated and capture the flag. No flags for face who are undefeated crazy to bring us into a game five so let's talk about this right you're coming in as shopify rebellion you're now what seven and oh and slayer six and oh and slayers seven seven and oh and slayers and you're coming into this game five you've got to feel good you won that first one 50 to 38 very different map on the side of streets of course we've got that camo on the bottom center in, in place of rockets which i absolutely love that change i gotta give Again, another shout out to the Pro Insights team. I think these changes have been phenomenal, but if you're Shopify, you can see it's Soul Snipe telling you to shh. <laughs> it's our time, right? 7-0, let's make it 8-0. And, and to me, it's that man on the left of that graphic, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Donnie, the former baseball player, man. He is a damage dealer, a game changer, a play maker. I talk about it time and time again. When he's putting damage on the map, you have one of two choices. You either duck for cover and his teammates are going to clean you up, or you're going for the challenge, and nine times out of ten, you're going to lose that battle. He wins battles against some of the best in the business. If there's one player, if there's one team that doesn't fear phase, it's suppressed and Shopify Rebellion. You know what I love about Suppress is uh, his selfless gameplay, right? In that last game, 27 and 17, but that's not him sitting back. I mean, he does sit back and put shots in, but he's very selfless in the fact that he will die for a play if he needs to. I'm looking at the stats right now. We've been talking about this undefeated record by Shopify Rebellion, but it feels even more so when you see it on a graphic like right. this. And then also, 
the average margin of victories. We say that FaZe is one of the best Slayer teams in the world, beating out teams by 4.9, which is decent. Yeah, yeah. But at this point, Shopify Rebellion are beating out teams by double digits every time. They are not just winning, they're blowing out teams. They don't come close to them. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. No, no, no. But are Shopify Rebellion the favorites to go at least into a Game 5 Slayer against the world champions? I'm a little bit scared, Tony, because we had Quadrant, obviously, last season, the former Quadrant, strongest Strongholds team in the HCS. Are we looking at the strongest Slayer team now in the HCS in Shopify? That's a big deficit right there, 13 kills. Well, we talked about the underdogs enough. Why don't we flip it to the other side, and that's a phase again world champions and when right. when it comes down to a slayer you got the main slayer you got the demon you got the renegade then on top of that you have world two and his ability to not only put damage down the map and get his kills but to stay alive one of those players that just gets into his position that you simply can't get him off and you always talk about obviously the general you always talk about how this team is is so good and so built for wins deep in tournaments they're the number one seed of the team. So although we want to give Shopify Rebellion their flowers, we also kind of want to bring it back and say, hey, Absolutely. you're still dealing with FaZe, you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, not only just a FaZe, but a FaZe who went to the back and had a talk. And you know I'm big on mental, Tony, and that's just huge, right? You have the general talking to you, preparing you for this game five, and you can see. Look at the KDs on the side of FaZe. I mean, they're pretty similar, I would say, to Shopify, but you wouldn't expect that out of, I would say, the, the most individually skilled team uh, in the HCS. What really surprises me on the opposite side of things of Shopify Rebellion is the fact that Cycle has the most damage right wow. now. Cycle yeah. normally is, is one of the best players at picking and choosing his angles picking and choosing his opportunities and lots of times it'll be a flanking route so when i think of shop or when i think of cycle i don't think of a player that's putting down that max damage like that but when he's playing like this no wonder you were able to just literally beat an undefeated phase and a capture the flag and able to bring us into this game five cycle is having one heck of a series. Yeah, honestly, I kind of agree with you, Tony. I kind of saw him as that flanking player, that, you know, player who has that really fast-paced individual skill, but he's now formed to this new roster. And, you know, with Soul Snipe on the roster now, he's got to change his gameplay, his game plan. And, and maybe it was Best Man that kind of formulated this. And I'm going to tell you, Cycle looks extremely comfortable right now, like I talked about. One of the youngest, the second youngest player of the HCS. When I was 17, I was scared of everything, okay? Even the monsters under my bed. So, absolutely what insane by cycle. What are, you, what are you scared of every, no everything? One, no wonder why I beat you in every gunfight. What are you scared, what are you scared uh, of? Yeah, I just, it, the nerves, man. The nerves get to me. But absolutely, and just incredible job by cycle. Can he continue this on? Again, we talk about Championship Sunday. We talk about how important this day is with both of these teams being in the elimination bracket. The loser of this, Tony, will go home, right? Yep. Really early. Well, not, not very early, but they'll go home. Yep. And now you build up the pressure even more. Now we're talking about the very last game to make something happen. Both of these teams guarantee top four in this tournament right now. But I think for Shopify Rebellion side, pretty darn good. For FaZe, considered a bit of a disappointment, I would imagine. But I feel like when you come down to a game five, when you come this close, both of them have aspirations to making it to the elimination bracket finals. Both of them have the aspirations to fight their way, maybe into the grand finals. A win here puts you one series away from the grand finals, one series away from fighting for a championship. That's crazy. It's very crazy. I'm very impressed by Shopify Rebellion, but we talked about FaZe being the world champs, right? When you're the number one and you've got you've gotten what you came to play Halo for, you've gotten a title for some of these players on phase three rings, Tony. It's absolutely insane. Do you still have that passion? And can you ignite that passion for this very last match to get you and push you forward to that elimination final? As all players hit their seats and we get game number one ready for you, I want from eight players in the lobby, mm -hmm. give me one player that you're looking out for one player, one expectation. It's Renegade for me, Tony. 25 and 24 in the last match. What I'm seeing out of him is not bad Halo, but it's not Renegade Halo. 
So that's the player I'm looking for. Arlington, are you ready? Game number five is on the way. FaZe versus Shopify Rebellion. One team will make it to the elimination bracket finals. One team is going home. Tony, they sound ready, but I am as well. We're hopping in with suppressed game number five. and FaZe taking that early lead. I love the fact that we're able to hear both sides of the crowd chanting for both FaZe and Shopify. Shopify have gained some fans here today on Championship Sunday. But FaZe have the immediate lead against an undefeated Slayer team in Shopify. Can Whoa. they make it? Oh, that's not good. That is not good. Snakebite ends up getting the betrayal there. It'll be now a two-kill lead for the side of FaZe. And the player you want to watch is Cycle. So Snipe was able to get a double kill with that flanking Cycle. Taking down three members of FaZe. That betrayal might just bite FaZe in the butt there. Luckily, Snakebite, huge kill onto Soul Snipe. Stopping Shopify Rebellion from infiltrating the Neon side. They're going to slow things down. You know you don't want to make any mistakes. Neither one of these teams. Shopify has the resources. The repulse, the shot, the stalker rifle as well. And Cycle makes something happen with this. The highest damage dealer in this series thus far. A lot of damage can be output with this stalker, but only 13% remaining in the ammo. And he's gonna have Wall 2 and Renegade to deal with right now is Cycle, but the reinforcements are here. All four members gathered up here for Shopify, but are you just trapping yourself? Are you just making yourself a bit of an easy target? Apparently not. You clear out snake bite, but you did lose Camo. Camo in the hands of Frosty. I love how far back he's playing, right? You've got to make sure to get these 100% kills. The repulse by Renegade's going to save Frosty. He has another 15 seconds left on this Camo, so value is my question. How much value will he get? It's one down for Shopify. 12 to 8 lead here by Pace Clan. Frosty still trying to find the right angle with this Camo. Doesn't even need to get the kill. Snake fight's already on that. Soul Snipe goes down, and Frosty may have lost Camo, but gains a Bulldog. Now you're starting to push up onto Shopify Rebellion. And the moment you do, you notice the spawns are coming up, pull right back. I love that. Again, it's the phase playing safe, trying not to make any mistakes whatsoever. So be, it'll be the pace of game slowed here. I talked about the general. What a game he's having thus far. Eight and two for him. On the opposite side of things, I, I said suppress was kind of my, the man of the hour for me, at least on Shopify. One and four. One assist to go along with it. Not exactly the stats that you want to see out of that young man, but luckily the game is still early. What's, what's the old saying? The game doesn't start until the 30 kill mark. Well, we're not there yet. Not there yet. Shout out to Pocket, of course. We all remember you. One of the greats. But another great on our screen. It's Snakebite. 25 seconds for Camo. Look who's in position for it, though. FaZe, they have that seaside control. And that's the favorable side of the map. If you want to get control of the camo, the push does commence here. Renegade's going to be in a bit of a situation, but I love the idea of him to back up. Suppress gets the initial kill on Whoa. the player top C, and he gets a triple kill in the feed. Whoa. Suppress goes from one and four to four and four immediately. And as camouflage is coming out, does it when it matters most. Snake fight understands the situation. He has to clear out the subway side. That ain't going to happen. Soul Snipe getting away with the camo. Now it's Shopify Rebellion just down by one. What a beautiful job by Suppress. We talked about the seaside being ever so important for that camo. He gets a triple kill to break the setup of phase. And Soul Snipe now with the camo. About 10 seconds left. My question is, one player on phase that I'm just looking at right now is Royal 2, right? One and four with three assists. I'm looking for him to step up a bit. He was suppressed not too long ago. That was one and four, one triple kill is all that was needed to turn things around. Maybe Royal 2 can do the same. Not when 
Soul Snipe is sneaking around with that camo suppressed. And Soul Snipe now going to push up. Frosty goes down and roll two. We're going to catch this assault rifle. Almost caught the hands on the melee. Two more members of FaZe to deal with Shopify Rebellion. Your, your job is not done. They wait to the right time. They collapse when it matters most. Shopify Rebellion have just taken the lead. I want to hear how Shopify sound and elicit in right now. I want to hear what their passion sounds like. How about Josh? We might have to wrap. Grab it, cut right. Drop it in the middle. Rotate. 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 You guys have to wait. You guys have to wait. Many tires. Just one tower. I think I hear him. You guys, that's one people. Two people. One people. One jump right. Two three steps. Can you hide in the arcade? So, they can be playing damage for the arcade guys. Recover. I have, have Jody. Can we get smoked for this? Uh, I smoked. I smoked. Can you be serious for us? Uh, we'll just smoke yeah. it. Yeah, we're trying to wait for yeah, the tower. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. I'll drop the tires with you, and if they try to ape, I'll just repulse them out. He has spikes. He has spikes. You yeah. should have them. All right. I'll repulse them out if they try to ape you. Have shields. They, they might try to make a move before us. Be ready for it. Yeah. Is that okay? We're okay, we're stalker. Okay, we're stalker. They might play heavy beast B-side. I have camo. Are you guys gonna go tires? Yeah, I'm on a smoke, I'm on a smoke, Billy. It's B-side. Smoke, 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 Plants, 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 plants. Yeah, I'm plant. Maybe in arcade, maybe in arcade no, as well. Purple, 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 yeah, go purple, go purple, go purple. Go purple. Get about five seconds of camo. One top A, one shot, one shot, one top A. Back tower, back tower, back tower. Back tower, back tower, back tower. Watch PD, caution, caution. Yo, tires, we're gonna be dangerous, they're dangerous, they're dangerous. Okay. Okay. Dangerous, dangerous PD. Okay, they're in PD, two, two A, two PD, I think. Let's, we just have to aim back here. Yes, yes, top B, top B, top B. They're getting space, they're getting space, right? Aim back here, aim back here. We need a trade left, we need a trade left. Mando? I think we don't have space. Alright, alright, alright. They rotate. There's already a guy Mando. Bottom guy tower. Yeah, I'm gonna stop here. Alright, this guy tires. Tires in bottom A. Yo, top A. Challenge. Top A. 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 Top
Ends up getting a trade, 46 to 40. Just one more squad wipe away from taking this game and moving forward to that elimination bracket finals on FaZe Clan. And it looks like they're gonna slow the game down to a snail's pace, but Suppress doesn't want to go down, at least not easily. The 41st kill for Shopify. This is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. Stay in your seats. Shopify are not throwing up the white flag just yet. They're not throwing in the towel. 46 to 43, three kill game. From a one in four start from Suppressed to 15 kills. He's leading, willing his team forward oh. for stake fight with the flank. Nobody accounting for stake fight. Over towards the A side, it's a huge kill on to Mental. Now Frosty and World 2, pinching from Neon. One more kill, that's it. Shopify's going home. Shopify's going home. FaZe clutch it up when it matters the most. The massive flank by Snake Bite. So many resources thrown back for him. The general once again comes in with the ice. So well far for Shopify Rebellion to bring us into a game five to keep it as close as they did, to not allow that game to get out of hand when it could have. Time and time again, FaZe had control, but Shopify matched them at every given turn. They threw everything out. They really did. They really emptied the tank, but you're dealing with the world champions, and it's FaZe's time. A crazy turn of events. We had a team. 7-0 and in Slayers. Coming into this, even beating them in that game too. But I'd said it before and I'll say it again. The more times you're put in a situation, the more comfortable you feel in those situations and the more confident you are as well. The talk in the back that FaZe had really was the catalyst for me. Collecting as a team saying, this is our game. They knew they could win, they just had to make some small adjustments and make sure they, like you said, just had that talk, get their mental in the right space. And I'm sure they came out invigorated. They came out, you know, with that passion and really came out ready to close things out. Wow. I got to point out something on the other side for Shopify. Of course, flowers to them. Very incredibly high placing. It was suppressed with 5,500 damage, the yeah. damage dealer of the roster. <laughs> but it wasn't enough. Faze come through once again, 50 to 44, a massive game five for them, and we'll see them in the elimination finals. Well, I hear we have a, a Faze member up there. I hear we have the general, the one you always want to hear from on the stage with Blazer. Why don't we send it over to that main stage with just a small interview? Thank you so much, Tony and Active. Esports Arena, show some love to FaZe Clan as we get the Game 5 to kick off Championship Sunday. And man, Snake Bite, the atmosphere in here was electric. This series going down to the wire. What was going on through your head? And we could just hop right into that, that uh, Slayer there at Game 5 because it was close back and forth. How did you manage to close that one out? Because it was so close. Uh, we just did a good job like pushing together. Uh, we had some really good comps. We had a really good bot review session yesterday on that game type specifically. Um, so yeah, just really played our game. Had a good read of what they were doing. Uh, got a few nice broken spawns thanks to 343. So uh, yeah, just managed to uh, close it out. Managed to close it out indeed, okay? And now to kick off the day, I gotta say that was a, probably a good warm up for you guys to really kind of hit your peak here. How you feeling about the boys and how they clutched up over here? Yeah, feeling great. We uh, clutched up a lot of games. Uh, obviously, that's something we try to do a lot. Uh, need to tighten up on a few game types. Aqua Flag is a great one for us and just came out really flat. So I need to uh, be a little bit better on a few objectives, but overall feeling really good. Overall feeling good. Only up for here for the defending champions. Now, what do you want to say to these FaZe fans in the crowd that's been chanting for your name, El Capitan? Uh, big thank you to all the fans being here. Everyone chanting for our team. Really appreciate it. Uh, whether you're here for us or anyone else, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. And uh, yeah. Show. Show some love to Snake by the FaZe Clan. That's gonna do up us on the stage. A lot, take us away. Thank you so much, Blaze. After an absolute bloodbath, this room is filled with red. And it's not just the blood that was pouring off of the main stage, but it was because FaZe Clan will take that series. It was a nail biter right up until the end. Clutch, 
thoughts about how that series went down? Actually, you were saying you would thought it would have gone to the wire and it would go to a game five, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, uh, as much as FaZe could handle is what Shopify gave them, and unfortunately, Shopify's amazing Slayer run, it ends with the fact that they lose and get knocked out of the tournament, but I mean, if you want to start with game one, FaZe came out on all cylinders. After this game, I wasn't so sure that this series was going to be as competitive as we thought leading into it. But Shopify did a phenomenal job rebounding in the Slayer in game two. They certainly did indeed. Well, when it comes to the Slayer, in terms of Shopify Rebellion, I think they have a really good idea of how they want to play. They love the traps, they love to swarm, and they're also darted all across the map, just making sure they're dealing damage and capitalizing on that damage always. They have such a good synergy with their movement. Yeah, one thing I really want to study and go back and watch from Shopify's perspective is just how does Suppressed break through some of these neutral scenarios and just get like a double or triple kill? Yeah. I saw as Cam was coming up on streets, I saw on the kill feed, Suppressed Suppress killed, suppress killed, suppress killed. I'm like, how do you do that without a bunch of these exchanges and other people falling? So somehow he is able to identify some of these opportunities and break through the defenses of one of the best teams. Let's talk about the regain from FaZe, because going into that final Slayer, that's not easy on the mental. You just lost significantly to Shopify Rebellion in the second map, and you're coming into game five knowing you're going against a team 7-0 on Slayers. They're looking really hot. They have your number. They managed to take you down in your favorite map, CTF Aquarius, which we're seeing right now. Clutch, the regain is huge from FaZe, and they do it time and time again. Yeah, I asked myself uh, and, and the audience, how icy is Shopify? Well, unfortunately, when you find yourself in a game five against FaZe, that's probably the hardest task you can ask yourself because these guys have done it for so many years, so consistently do they find themselves in game five, sevens, or elevens, and it feels like they always bring their best. Snakebite is who you got to call out as far as the start to this game and giving FaZe an early lead and every opportunity to stay in this game long enough for the Royal Twos, Renegades, and Frosties to wake up and impact the outcome at the end. You're right, Clutch. It started with a snake bite and ended with that snake bite flank to really close it out. He started off strong with those 11 kills, leading, I believe, more kills than his entire team combined. And then the rest of his team got traction, caught up, and like I said, wasn't afraid to take the game-winning flank over at Tower. He has been more versatile, I think, this weekend than I think we've ever seen him so far. Is that to do with the meta changes, do you think? Has it shifted things slightly on the team? I think he's definitely a lot more comfortable, and his individual skill is starting to show. Not often do we talk about Snakebite as one of the premier individual skill players, but uh, having an opportunity to play with him back when he was 15, he was the best in the game, I thought, and he is still a force to be reckoned with. He can take over any series, any game, and it feels like when FaZe needs Snakebite most, is when Snakebite actually takes over that Slayer role and dominates for them. Love what I saw from him. Honestly, you took a look at the stats there for a second. Renegade and Frosty going negative, not something you would expect, but it's beautiful that that's how powerful this phase team is, is that even when those players maybe not at their peak just yet on Championship Sunday, they still have Snake Bite and Royal 2 to rely on. Another Slayer with smarts is Royal 2, and he is very reliable. Walshy, going back to a moment in that Strongholds, Royal 2 having a really big rotate. Talk to me about what you noticed about the gameplay there in the clip that we're going to be showing in just a moment that really had you kind of like, okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, we'll both talk over this one together, me and Wes, but in short, Royal 2 just this patient, and on top of that, just pure execution. Um, Sorry, looking back over at this one on live fire. Yes, when he gets his camo, look at one part, this patient's going through the back. And then secondly, look at this rotation out of the hill. We'll pause it here in just a second, but you notice how Royal 2, he leaves that stronghold immediately. And that's because of his overall awareness of the map. There's two main factors here. One is he sees Renegade all the way across the map in a one-on-one -on -one against Mental. He's gonna try to rush over there and help over at the A stronghold to swing that one in his team's favor. And then secondly, he knows that his teammate Frosty is behind him at this tower. And so his teammate Frosty can fill over in at the C stronghold. These are just these minute differences from these top teams where they're saving seconds at a time by rotating ahead by who's in the better position. And so as we play the rest of this clip, you'll see Frosty jumping inside the stronghold. Royal 2 pushing over towards top center and trying to help towards A. And it's just those little decisions that add up through the entire match that make FaZe have those slight advantages a little bit faster than the opposing teams. I think the most important thing 
That shows you how FaZe is a different team than what we saw against Optic yesterday and how they've kind of transitioned their mindset. Is the second one Royal 2 leaves that stronghold? I challenged FaZe to start trying to make more plays because against Optic, it felt like they were so, they were trying to be so structured and use so much teamwork that it almost limits your superstars from being aggressive, making those plays. The average player would stay in C and double cap it with their teammate, especially when you're not in control of two strongholds there. You're just like, let's get, let's start scoring points, right? And the Royal 2 uh, progressing on the map, looking to find a gunfight, because what does he do best? He wins gunfights. If Royal 2 can find ways to impact the outcome of these games, he makes face such a juggernaut to try and deal with. Those are small plays that when you see them, you start to see the difference in the mindset that could be a championship run. I also just want to give the utmost respect to Shopify Rebellion. The run has been unbelievable. They should be so proud of how they have achieved this so far this season. I mean, it's right at the start, and they're already looking like an absolute force to be reckoned with. Going game five to Faye, that, that is very difficult to do. So an incredible roster, and I can't wait to see the rest of their journey this season. Let's take a look at the bracket right now to see how things stand, how they've shaken out after that series. If you're just joining us, we're into our elimination finals here, where Faze will progress on Shopify. Shopify Rebellion, we say goodbye to them early this Sunday, but boy oh boy was it a battle. Very impressed with what we saw from the Rebels themselves and FaZe. They're waiting to see who's going to be coming down from the winner's side of things. And in our winner's bracket, we do have Optic versus SSG, and that is sure to be an amazing matchup between two absolute titans. They have fought their way through the winner's side of things, haven't fallen short yet, and are both looking absolutely amazing. Clutch. Do we see this going the distance like we saw in this elimination match? Or do you actually see this being a, a lights out one way or the other? Yeah, it depends on game types for me. Uh, the map mode combinations are so important when I feel like you're talking about the big three and how they match up against each other. I think we have seen such great things from Optic so far. So if Space Station bring their A game, I do not expect Optic in any situation to get blown out per se. But I think that, could, that series can go the distance. It can also go heavily in Optic's favor if Optic is playing strong, SSG potentially coming out flat. I'm hoping for some fireworks up there and all the game fives we can get today. Me too. Hopefully the smoke alarms won't go off because there's going to be pure fire on that stage today. Well, folks, I want to get to the match. So let's get to a break. Let's get some water, grab some food because this is a prime time match coming your way. The winners, finals, the stage is getting set. Optic versus SSG right after the break. Hey, guess what? New year means a new optic scuff design for a new controller. Check out this sexy design. It's a nod to the original OG logo and a great way to rep the green wall. Choose between the Reflex for PS5, the Instinct for Xbox, and the brand new Envision for PC gaming. Guess what? Scuff saw your comments and they're now selling the faceplate separately for the Envision and the Instinct for $29.99. Sorry, I'm kind of busy. Kind of not. Leave a message. Yeah, the mega rev boys here, cinnamon. Flow tastes sweet like cinnamon. Open up doors, I'm a gentleman. View top floor, I'm still staying ahead of them. Running on fumes and adrenaline. Do what I do best, huh? Can't rush in like a roulette. You can't name a better duet, huh? Don't ask questions. Trying to figure out what sound. Don't worry about what next. Just know we got now.
HCS 2024 Kickoff Arlington Major is presented by AMD, Scuff, and Corduroys. All right, everybody, we are back. It is major number one, and we got Optic Gaming going up against Space Station Gaming on the main stage. But before we kick it off, I got Hitch with me here at the Corduroy Lounge. Yep. How you doing, Hitch? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. I don't know why I'm in an interview, but hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, guys. You guys know why Hitch is in an interview. He's the man, <laughs> is he not? <laughs> Make some noise for him. So, Hitch, OK? We're back at the eSports Arena. Yes. Optic Gaming on the main stage. We got so many fans here. How does it feel to have them in the Winners' Finals? Oh, it feels great, man. We haven't seen Halo in what feels like 100 years. And so it's great to see the guys playing. And they're playing super well. So I mean, well, so look well. Look at them up there. They look good. They're feeling good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're excited to get into this match, I believe. And now, you guys got a new member of the Green Wall. It's Dead Zone. How has it been getting to know him and having him there with the squad? Oh, he's a great guy. He's already been on the eavesdrop. He's been on the fly. Cast. He's uh, doing content, but also, as you can see, he's just up there playing, gaming, yep. just being a gamer, and uh, that's what we need right now. Just being a gamer. <laughs> and now, I did see, speaking of content, you did an interview recently with the Go Walsh, okay? Yes. How was that, and where can we watch it? Oh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, we just recently filmed a, an Around the Bar episode with Walsh. He talked about Halo. We talked about Halo for way too long, and uh, he ran out of time. So when we, we'll, we'll have him back on. It's on the Around the Bar podcast, so you can just look that up. And, uh, yeah, that should be out, I think, tomorrow or the next day. So uh, I'm excited about that. All right. Now, make sure you guys go check out that one. Now, one thing that I always love seeing you do in the eSports arena is get this Optic Gaming crowd hype. What do you want the Green Wall fans to know as we go into this Winners Finals matchup? You got to get hype, man. You know Formal plays better when you're chanting his name. So you got to get hype this series. And uh, actually, all of them. All of them love the hype. They love the crowd, especially Lunchbox. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't say it a lot, but he loves that shit. He, he loves does it. love yeah, yeah. it. All right, Joe, that's going to do it for me and Hitch here at the Corduroy's Lounge. Lottie, let's get this thing started. Let's do it, Blaze. Thank you so much, Blaze and Hitch, over at the Corduroy's Lounge. And up here on the desk, well, we're gearing up, ready to go for this exciting matchup on the main stage. And of course, it's your winners' finals. The hometown team, Optic versus SSG, both with new additions to their rosters. And lads, I'm so excited and eager to see what these two teams are going to look like when they battle it out. I think on one hand, we've got Optic Gaming. There's a couple of advantages here. One has to be the home crowd. The home crowd, they get loud. The boys know it. They love it. And you really do actually feed off that time type of energy. It is, it is true. You see that in sports all over the world. The energy of a home crowd is so, so incredible, but very hard to play against. How do you think Optic are feeling about this matchup right now? Honestly, that home crowd is everything, and they mention it multiple times in their interviews, right? Getting that energy from the crowd can really change a series and give you that momentum going forward into a series that is a, kind of up in the air, right? Both teams have made changes. Whose change is best? Indeed, and another advantage, I have to say, more detailed is Optic in the Slayers. They definitely do have a statistical advantage here. Tony, what do you want to see for them to progress that advantage onwards towards Space Station? I mean, it's really just doing what, you, what you've already been. I mean, lots of times we talked about Optic Slayers last year and that being a bit problematic at times, but they've somehow turned a weakness into a strength and they've been looking clean. This is the best we've seen Optic look and they look like they're ready to win a championship. Now, Active, how are you feeling about Optic in terms of clutch matches? Because the maps, they are going to be close. Let's be perfectly honest. These two teams, they come out to play, and it's never really a one-sided affair. These are both teams with very similar kind of play styles now, especially with their new additions. You know, Optic getting faster. I think SSG kind of slowed down just a touch, which is a little bit unusual with Legend coming on board. But Legend is a little bit more passive. He's very kind of precise with what he does. So between the two, in terms of the clutches, Who's got that factor? Well, in 2023, SSG were the best team in clutch matches. They had a 51 and 27 record, but it's a little bit different here today. Optic are looking phenomenal, and honestly, 
it's going to be dead zone for me. I was questionable about this change, but I'm to shut up because he is playing phenomenal this weekend. Certainly is indeed. Tony Formal on our screen right now. The crowd are getting loud about him. He's only gotten better through day one to today, and it has been amazing to watch. How are you feeling about this guy right now? I mean, who, who would ever doubt? I mean, he has some of the best reticle placement in the game. He is icy. He wins his pivotal battles. When you have a formal on your team, the game just seems easier for the players around you. Formal has always been a legend, and to be honest, I'm happy to have him back here in Halo. Speaking of legend, let's go over to SSG, because legend is that new addition to the roster. He's made all the difference so far, but my big question right now, Active, is how much of a difference maker has he been so early on with this change? A lot of these teams are still progressing, trying to learn how they want to kind of infiltrate bases of their oppositions and how they want to play together. How is Legend fitting in? I think he's fitting in great, right? He's allowing Bound to be free like we talked about before. I think if there's one player that's maybe having a little bit of a rough time with this change, it's Eco. but give him Championship Sunday and he'll make that change very quickly. He certainly will indeed. And something I do love about Eco, let's talk about him. He has got one of the best minds in Halo. I don't think this guy gets the, the kind of credit he deserves sometimes. Eco has phenomenal games, game-changing games for a series. Eco is capable of everything. He reminds me a little bit of Snakebite on phase. Very versatile, will be able to interject when he needs to, and often makes decisions that impact the entire series. Tony, when it comes to Eco, what do you want to see from him out in this series? Yeah, I mean, I think Frosty said it best. Eco is one of the smartest players in the game, and his Halo IQ really is up there. When you see Eco moving around the map, he's not thinking about the micro. He's thinking about the macro. He's thinking three or four steps ahead. It's not just about that one kill. It's about what that kill leads to, and that's what makes SSG one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, to not have a top-down point of view in Halo and to have that mind to understand when to make plays, where the spawns are happening, and how to make plays based off those spawns, I think Eco's the man to do it. I, I'm excited to see how he brings that intelligence and that play calling here in the series. A little bit of a red flag for SSG, though, is, of course, the Slayer. They had the worst record for Slayer last year. Does Legend coming on board maybe hype that up a little bit for them, Tony? Absolutely. I think Legend, well, the reason why SSG went out and sought after Legend and brought him over to American Source because he's good at everything. It's not just the slang. It's not just the objective. It's not just the speed in which he plays with that pairs perfectly with SSG. It's the fact of all of it together. And that's why you reach out to Legend. And that's one of the reasons why SSG have improved in Slayers, but so have Optic. I mean, and SSG had this problem last year as well, and uh, they, they find this problem again here this weekend. I think it's just going to take a little time for everyone to find their spot, right? You've been cemented. If you're legend, you've been cemented in the roster of Quadrant for such a long period of time. You've got to kind of pull those strings and, and change things up a bit. And with all these roster changes, we're seeing this so very often. Is SSG going to be able to make those changes here today? Have they learned from all the reps they got during this tournament against Optic, who looked phenomenal this tournament? So many questions, and we will get the answers in moments. All right, folks, here we go. Your winner's finals on the main stage. You know who it is. Optic versus Space Station. It's winner's finals time, folks. Optic Gaming, your green wall, up against Space Station Gaming. The hometown crowd are looking hype. They're trying to get behind their boys.
but Space Station standing their way. Yeah, I think we're going to have a very competitive crowd, if not a very competitive game in this winner's final. And of course, two teams gunning to get into that grand final and have the advantage when we get there. This is the series layout. You know me, I like to look at my stats, I like to look at my numbers. I have to say, just off of first glance, SSG might be taking the advantage just based on game types. We'll get a bit more into that a little bit later. CTF Aquarius is going to be game one. We do not have to wait long, but it's going to be vindication or redemption here. It was only a matter of time before these two teams collided on that main stage. Dead zone, legend, we know what happened in the off season. And now it's time for these two players to prove they were going to be the difference maker. They will be the ones in the big games to step up and make that difference. It's the green wall and it's space station. And Dan, tell, talk to me about what we expect to see here. Well, a CT of Aquarius to kick us off, and it is a very dominant game type for Space Station. Throughout qualifiers leading into this tournament, they are unbeaten on Aquarius capture the flag. On the flip side for Optic, we have seen them lose it a couple of times. Even though it's another strong game type for them, it's not their best. So, leaning towards Space Station naturally, and I think that's for the reason, maybe because of Legend being added into this team. Back when he was on Quadrant, he was always the guy getting in the base, running that flag at an insane speed. But you've got to then look on Optic's side and who's doing the objective work. Surprisingly, Lucid has been up there. Not only has he been getting the objective work done, but he's been slaying like crazy. He was leading KD coming into this as well. So you've got to be aware of that if you're on the Space Station side. You have to shut Lucid down. We know what he can do when he starts to get free roam of a map. And surprisingly, Lucid was just as surprised as everybody else when he heard that he'd won the award for best objective. He was asking, can you count those numbers again and double check, triple check, because he didn't believe it, but he has been the difference maker so far. Well, sometimes when you're naturally leading in KD, when you are getting kills, you are going to be progressing further forward on the map, and you're like, oh, well, you know, I'll grab the flag, I guess, or I'll grab the ball. But he's just a player who knows how to play Halo. He knows when he has to just kind of put his best foot forward and ensure that he can help his team in any way possible. But is he going to be able to help his team into the grand final? That's the big question here, because everyone on SSG will be wanting to shut him down. Game one, about to get underway. Formal looking locked. Will he be lasered? And will he be able to punch Optic Gaming's ticket into that grand final to give them that massive, massive advantage, excuse me. Space Station have fallen short too many times here. Shields up, weapons up, we're underway. Straight away, Overshield is going to be the focus, of course, but it's Trippy who usually dives straight for it. I think he may have been able to grab it, he did. And that allows him to get the first kill on to bound. Stella will at least reply though. And Stella, usually that player who can play a little bit more of an anchor point at times, just listening to those call outs, waiting to hear for those players to be on low shields. And then he just flies out of every nook and cranny that you could possibly think of to get that extra damage. Dead Zone now showing what he can do. How good has Dead Zone been on Optic Gaming, by the way? Uh, a very difficult matchup for him here. Dropped by Space Station, and now it's his time to shine and him to show what it means to him to go up against his old squad. And naturally, we've highlighted him all tournament long because of the change, because it came as a little bit of a surprise. But he's silenced some of those haters, silenced some of those critics with his performances. And his replacement, legend. I wonder what's going through that young man's mind. Will he be able to prove that it was the right move to move all the way across to the United States to literally uproot your entire life so that you can try and be one of the best, if not the best? And this is why he's on the team as well. Moving that flag, getting it going, but also working alongside the rest of the squad to ensure that they just spot out any spawners. Don't want to try and force a flag too quickly. I love this from Stellar and indeed Legend doubling back, recognizing that Optic had numbers on their side. Flag's still out in the generator, so perhaps a player can get a touch on it if need be. Looks as though both flags are going to be sent back Enemy home. Flag return. Nothing doing. Honors even, but the map still split. Yeah, very important from Legend there that he just said, all right, I don't want to try and force this flag. I know that we're going to potentially go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them here, and we've actually lost a couple of players. So he doubles back, plays with the rest of the squad. 
Next overshield's gonna come up and Legend's gonna be in prime position to grab this one and should be able to grab it comfortably because he's got support from Bound. And now you have to push if you're SSG. Take advantage of the extra shields. Yes, you've lost Eco, but just try and even things out a little bit here as it's a couple of loose shots. But Legend does finally get that kill and now Space Station can try and control the base. SSG trying to shift through the gears. Legend continues to pre-fire just in case. Formal got a little bit dicey. They have numbers now, three dead, make it four. First real opportunity to get a capture of that flag. Gonna be a P1 spawn. Legend's quite happy to go for the pinch. Seller gets one. Dead Zone's in big trouble of being the second. Trying to output damages, Dead Zone, but Legend's there to cut him off the pass. Killing spree, he oh. waves up. Double kill for Legend. <laughs> And he's already moving forward, interested in getting even more space for his team. I was speaking to Elamite backstage and I was asking, you know, how, how is Legend doing? Is he getting along with the team? Is he getting along with the players? Is he feeling okay? Is he comfortable? And he said, he's great. He's feeling at home. And not only that, I think he may be one of the best players in the game. And we're so lucky to have him. And he's putting on a show at the moment, a killing spree right now. The Optic chants start to ring through the arena as the fans encouraging Optic Gaming to get back into this one. This is the expectation. SSG should be winning this game type based off of stats. But Optic will always want to try and go against those stats. Important for SSG to get that early score. Try and quiet the crowd, plant that seed of doubt. They really can be the difference maker at times. Firing up their team. And for Space Station, they're in hostile territory. Three go down. Legend's gonna be the first up here. Hey, he gets popped up, spins right into the visor of Lucid, takes him down to half shields. This is good for Optic. They're starting to descend on the base now. They've got a quite a lot of damage on the map. Over shield as well for Trippy. Z pushes towards top P now. Backwack goes in. Three dead once more. He goes trying to be an influence, trying to stop that flag. But it was all for naught. A trip, you can pick it up and get moving once more. Taking quite a lot of damage, that overshield has helped him immensely. Yeah, I think they purposely waited for Trippy to grab that flag because they knew he had the overshield, he could take those extra bullets, but Dead Zone has been able to get another Ooh. open. That flag doesn't quite go up though, so this yeah. is a chance for SSG to stop it. Formal though, doing formal things in the base, but it is going to be a scrap for this flag as now Formal drops into it. But I think there's going to be players from SSG in place to try and stop this one. Flag gets pulled out, dropped to the front base. In the courtyard, no man's land, nobody wants to be there. But how Space Station simply delayed this is an inevitability. Numbers again favor Optic Gaming. Very close to tying this one up. Flag goes home, Enemy and they do punch it home. 1-1 one, one the score. Yeah, that was a great hold from Optic Gaming. Even though SSG made it difficult, and as you say, perhaps just delaying the inevitable. Optic didn't oversend it. They didn't overcommit to it. They played it carefully. And now Optic fans beginning to believe as Trippy getting aggressive alongside the rest of the team. But one thing I have noticed from Space Station, they will commit together. Off sport, they ensure that they either they're all gonna die or they're all gonna survive. It's not a case of just trying to send one, but then all the meanwhile, this is what Dead Zone can do. A nice little distraction technique here when Space Station were gaining some control. Dead Zone causing a little bit of carnage, as is Lucid. Laying siege to the enemy base. And as they get that flag moving, Overshield's gonna be pivotal here as it pops up. 2-1 the score. Optic get it home, and they're looking to compete for the Overshield. I think Optic have been doing their research and they've started to notice the patterns with Space Station and how they approach the game. They've dominated the P-side. They haven't allowed them to get control of it. And of course, if you can continue to dominate P, you are rewarded with the overshield every couple of minutes. And even though it hasn't resulted in much in this particular play, because Eco's been able to steal it away from them, Optic certainly have had plenty of their share and it really helped with one of those flag runs earlier. Go in the front base. Legend there too. Try to get his hands on the flag. It's gonna be Legend who gets a bottom middle, which is always a difficult place to get it out of. Bound putting down damage. Does get his hands on the flag, and there it is. It can be a bit of a mosh pit at times. Grenades go in, and they've nowhere to go but to explode. 
Stellar has to give this one up. At least for now, Legends come off the respawn. He's got that touch, he's got a kill. It's remaining. And perhaps an opportunity then with three dead. Unless Lucid can per perform some sort of heroics, which he can't. We should be all tied up here. Should be all tied up. And again, it was Legend who said, actually, I don't feel like giving this one up. I can grab this flag from bottom middle. I've seen the grenades go in. I'm confident the other team doesn't have any left. He's able to pull out the rest of the team and start it moving and grooving. 2-2. Two, two. Three dead for Optic Gaming. Space Station regaining control of P once more, but Dead Zone's going to be there to try and compete with it. But he will fall. So now SSG have control of top middle. These two teams. This is a little bit of a standoff for now. A lull. Formal will get a touch. Legend, very important that he can try and stay alive here. He gets cleared out though. Dead Zone and Lucid pick up a couple. Bound has got to do damage, he's doing it, but he's chasing it. It's gonna be a trade. Formal's in the front base, Trippy's got hands on as well. Formal's got all the way to the car side. Dead Zone's got overshield. This should be a lead. Should be a lead, should be a cap, should be Optic Gaming taking advantage once more. And it seems like every time SSG think they've wrestled back control, it's just a quick double kill from the likes of Lucid, the likes of Dead Zone, the likes of Formal, anyone on this Optic roster has that capability to pull a double out of nowhere. And it just kind of sets Space Station completely off of what their target was previously. That's now SSG with three minutes and 28 left on the clock. They have to start thinking about how they get another flag back home. Formal being a nuisance. Dead Zone gets a lovely double kill as well. Legends on the map by himself for the moment. His teammates have now very quickly spawned up. Stellar spawned towards the fridge. That could be very beneficial to them. Manages to get formal. Trippy could be next. A trade. That's all Optic need now. They can stop the pressure. They can hold strong. They will win this game. And I think that would be such an incredible start for Optic Gaming as well to win one of SSG's better game types. Would give them so much confidence going into map number two and following. As we've seen already, not just in this tournament, but in Halo Infinite in general, a couple of minutes left in Aqua Flag, and you can see many a flag go back and forth. So Space Station, you know this one isn't over yet. As do Optic. Optic naturally getting a little bit more defensive now, waiting to see what SSG are going to do. Eco trying to tee up some sort of push. Both teams continue to posture. It's off to grab map control now. Lucid slides away. Up the cover, the, the shroom stairs. Loose it now, in the gen. Beautiful nade kill for Stellar. Combined with the bandit was needed too, just, just to stop that flag in its tracks. Dead Zone continues to jiggle peak, doing so much damage again. And now we look towards time. Two minutes, overshield pops up. Formal in the 1v1, Stellar's gonna win it. Stellar's gonna get two. This is the moment then. This is a big moment for SSG. A double kill plus the overshield, now you can push up. You're in a four versus two with the spawners. Optic are gonna have one player probably spawn over towards Fridge. So you've gotta be careful of that one. It's gonna be Lucid and he gets a big kill onto Stella, but now he's the last remaining player. This flag will move, but will they be able to find Lucid is the real question. Lucid was in a 1v1 with Eco. They know exactly where he's positioned. Eco used that thruster pack just to get out of dodge. Dead Zone gets one. Eco trades it out. Two players fall for each team. Three dead now for SSG. Stellar, but it's oh, back to the wall, huge kill to keep this one alive. But Trippy's trying to get close. Trippy wants to get the kill. Space Station is spawning up around him. They're on the re. Can you get it? Does get the touch. Massive touch in his 3-3 with one minute left. And Stellar just staying alive on no shields was huge for Space Station. And we're starting to look closer and closer like we might get some overtime in this game. But still, one last push potentially now for SSG. Like two heavyweights standing in the ring, trading blow for blow. Nothing to separate them. As we head towards the final 40 seconds of this game, it's gonna take a little moment of magic. But who has the magic is the real question. Who's gonna be that one player that can maybe pick up a big double kill to make the difference? Bound in the moment trying to survive, but he's also gonna fall. Optic have the numbers. Can they actually get a push going? Can they get a flag pulled before we start to think about overtime? Or are both teams just gonna happily accept Ten OT seconds. here? 
That one gets a pick. Here's the pull. Formal gets the pull, but little more than that. However, that does start the pie chart. That does mean Overshield comes into play, but oh, that's a big stick. But the pie chart's active, and Eco says, how will move this flag? Hold on a second then. Oh, Eco's fumbled. How detrimental will that be to the cards? Formal's there. He's got eyes on flag. Eco recognizes this. Moves his body, shifts his angles, makes sure he can't take damage. Still has got two. Up the go four down. And this should be the fourth and final cap for Eco and SSG. They take game one. Should Optic have maybe just accepted overtime? That little pull from Formal, that little flag toss out of the base, it blew things wide open for Space Station. It gave them that extra time to push into the base. And Eco said, this might just be a freebie, but it always off the back of that stick onto the overshield. Lucid had grabbed it, but he goes straight down off the back of the stick. And Space Station will win game one. They will win one of their better maps and modes, but boy, did Optic make it competitive. And we asked for a little bit of magic. Stellar, P1, faced with the overshield, gets the trade, spawns back up, gets a double kill. He was the difference maker, as he so often is. One of the best to ever do it. Averaging, what, it was 600 damage per minute. Still leading after day two was Stella. He just gets into so many gunfights, so many engagements. And he's such a difficult player to play against. But you could say the same, I think, for every player on this main stage as we are now into the business end of the tournament. It's Halo royalty at this point. And it's so difficult to call these games when they are that tight, when you get to 3-3, and I think you hit the nail on the head. You just need someone to step up with a big moment because it's going to be these fine margins that separate these teams, and that's going to be a tough one for Optic. You know, they had the lead a couple of times. Only a minute left before that flag went in to equalize for Space Station. And even speaking about that equalizing flag, Stella, if he had died, that flag was dead. But he was just dipping, diving, dodging just to get out of the way. And because of it, Space Station find themselves 1-0 up in the series. There can be inspiration to be drawn for Optic, Dan. You spoke about Aquarius CTF should be Space Station's game. It was, but it was close. It was more than close. It was a nail biter. And they can say, listen, that's one of their best game types. We just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And even better news, we go into a Slayer and Optic undefeated on Slayers so far this tournament. They've only lost one map for the entire tournament prior to this series, so make it two now. However, Slayers have been incredible for them. Similarly to what we just saw from Rebellion, they were undefeated coming into their series. Can Optic, though, continue their undefeated run in these Slayer game types? I will say, though, SSG looked amazing on Slayer Recharge throughout the entire qualification process. Even when they had Monster on their team, they were still winning that map in mode. So they just know how to get it done. It's about the way they control that map. They control the power-ups on it as well. So you've got to be careful here if you're Optic. You do not want to find yourself 2-0 down. There is the man with the magic touch. We asked for something special, and he provided. We, he added it to the card, he checked out. There is some of the impressive damage per minute, you can see. 5,000, third in the Slayer, third, second. Mr. Consistent is what Slayer is. Every 10 minutes, we're seeing over 5,000 damage from him. And I know we made the joke about matchmaking teammates not even reaching that throughout the entire game, but Stella is no mere matchmaking teammate. If you ever get him on your team, you know full well you're going to be winning. And maybe SSG feel that way as well, because Stella, he does just seem to have that Championship Sunday feel about him, as he still continues to be one of, if not the best in the game, as we now lead into map number two, and it's going to be Recharge Slayer to kick us off. Rocking and rolling. You better to start with. Dan Stellar immediately heads towards gold, into red pipes. Grenades go down, Legend's got a pick. Camouflage remains up. It's gonna be Eco to go for it. Shock rifle in the hands of Stellar. You just wonder, will he pass this one over to Eco? The answer is no. Camouflage player has been shut down. Stellar now on Sneaky. Two Optic members in tower. Legend. Isolated in blue. 
Malid helping Malid it quickly. That, speaking of legends, four kills off the, off the rip. The only player on his team with kills up until that point. One of the reasons why both of these teams have been successful throughout Slayers is their ability to slow the game down when they feel it starts to get away from them themselves. Or even if they're so far ahead that they don't really want to press an advantage and give away too many easy kills, they also slow it down. I've mentioned the key word a few times throughout this tournament for Optic Gaming. It's all about structure. And Recharge Slayer can certainly play into their hands. You can set up, you can wait, you can be patient. But SSG, they're not a team that kind of falls into those traps. As doesn't get the kill. That's massive from Trippy. Stella just couldn't find that final headshot. Some of the scariest moments when fighting a shock rifle or sniper players, when they stand still, you go, you say, please don't hit this. And Trippy was given a lifeline. For once, Stellar shows he's human. He's not AI generated. He is capable of missing a shot or two as he slides back in, gets the stick, gets a trade. 11 11 the score right now. On board with Eco. Doing some damage to Formal. This one's on a knife's edge. Halo Infinite could be very fast paced. It could be a big frenzy, it can be chaotic, but Recharge Slayer can really be one of those games that slows down and it's quiet and you wait for your moment before you start to pick your chance to attack as SSG doing just that, trying to find a couple of kills. Eco will do so, it's going to be a good double to regain control now of the map. And actually he's going to follow up and make it a triple. We talk about Championship Sunday, Stella, but remember what Eco can do as well. And the chip he's held on his shoulder quite a few times after Championship Sundays, it's trippy. Goes down to bounce, setting off a remote destination. All tied up as we head towards the mid game. Eco's picked up a double kill. Let's go to a, a listen in with Space Station Gaming and seeing how they're navigating things. Pushing top, back cell, back cell. Top cat, top cat, hiding, hiding, hiding. Nice, nice, nice. Get out, let's sure get we're just walking. We haven't trapped, we haven't trapped. Hey, Rick, watch up, Benami. 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 Top pain now, I think. He's top pain. Hell, 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 hell. All we have to do is keep me alive. Grab one, grab one. Yeah, I'm coming. What's your mind? What's your mind? Yeah, I'm coming along with you. We might get pushed. I think they're going pipes, guys. We'll come back, Kevin. Watching pipes. Watching the push, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, I like Kevin. Hell, hell, hell might have saved me. I don't see any other. I don't know, I don't know. Is it weak? Is it weak? Get it weak. No, no, There's a guy pipes. Could be a guy pipes. Get this guy weak. He's yeah, hell. Yeah, C-Jump, C-Jump. C-Jump. Okay, watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. C-Jump. Watch out, watch out. He chased me. Turbine, watch out. Watch out, watch out. I can't push that. I can't push that. Watch out, watch out. Bottom tower, bottom tower. Nice. Heaven, heaven. Weak, weak, weak. Tommen, watch out, Tommen. Lucid. Yep, Mangler, Mangler, just up. Mangler, just up. Watch out, Turbine again. Nice. Shot him once, there's gonna be two there. I spent close. Oh my god, I think Dead Zone's gonna be there. Top guard to the left. Two shot. Yeah, for the other one. There's gonna be two on the left. Pushing Brayden, pushing Brayden. Let's get pushing, let's get pushing. Weak backstage, weak backstage. I'm sneaky, I'm sneaky, I'm sneaky, guys. I go on, turn up, I go back, I go back. One guy backstage, guys. Weak, weak, watch out. Two one shots. Optic Gaming. Down by four. Let's have a little listen in to see how they're navigating things. Guys, I, I, listen, I think there's only one guy here right now, okay? Yeah. Shock is up, okay. Yeah. 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 One guy C-Plat, one guy back silo. I want to work for his A here, Zane. Mango, Mango, okay, there's two guys in A now. Two guys in A. I'm locking A, I'm locking A, okay. Bottom A, bottom A, bottom A, bottom A, bottom A, one shot, you good? Lockers, one shot lockers. And heaven, 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 heaven. I'm going to one, I'm going to one, I'm going to one. Bottom A, bottom A, bottom A, bottom A. Yeah, bottom A, bottom A, bottom A. Let's go to the front tower, so let's go to the front tower. He backed up, he backed up. Not here anymore. Sure. All right. Yo, Zane, stay here with I'm here, Zane. Top tower, top tower. Yo, shock, guys. We have to play for shock. Yeah, top tower. Here's the shock. Here's the shock. Here's the shock. I'd be watching this. Careful. C-Plot. C-Plot, Eco. They're hitting long. They're hitting long. I think two. Yeah, yeah, two, two long, two yeah long. I think last. Three long. Three long. Three okay. long. Three Locking tower, then. Locking tower. Come on, guys. Can I get the shock? I'm trying to get it. Look at Tommy real quick. Long hole still, guys. I have the shock, guys. Trying to live. Yo, we have shock. Just let Joey work. Let Joey work. Yo, glass out. Glass out. Sell it. 
Yeah, we gotta check bottom middle. Yeah, one guy, two guys tower, two guys tower. Two here, two here, two here. Tower, you go with the shot. The long, we can really be bottom. Got melted then. Two guys tower. Okay, it's okay. They're hitting top. They're top. I think. Neither, neither, neither. Pushing out here. Neither weak. Neither on top. Top glass on me, Joy. He's one shot in gold. One shot in gold. Going glass, glass. One shot, careful. Neil, Neil. Last one shot. Go, you win. Last <laughs> Yo, let this one go. Let this one go. Okay. Yeah, all the gold. Go batteries, Joey. Go batteries. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
They've got the shock rifle. We're down to just a one kill game. And that could have been 47-47. So close to striking the back of the head there. All four members of Optic Gaming trapped towards pipes. Do SSG try and surround this one? Stalemates in the past. Lockout. Was a scene for it all the time. Shoot the static tights, you might shout. They're not here. They're not involved. Only one minute one now minute on the clock. Remaining. SSG are going to be forced to push the envelope. They're going to have to be the ones to make the play. Bound just wants oh. to find the face. And he does. And now SSG know. They know where the rest of Optic Gaming are. And look at this. They're beginning to close the gap. Bound can be on one side. The rest of the teammates on the other. 40 seconds. And they're beginning to push into pipes. Big kill from Trippy though. But it's 49-49. A one kill game. Lenti could be the difference maker. They're all tied up. It's a tie. 50 to 50. Unprecedented. It's that close. You can't even split them in a slayer as it means we reset the whole damn thing. So close from SSG to making that comeback towards the end, but it was a trade right to the death to make it 50-50. It's very rare we see it. It's only a couple of times in Halo history it's happened, but that means we just go right back to the beginning. We're going to use that little Men in Black memory wipe machine. Forget you saw anything. You've, you haven't seen the Slayer. Game one has just happened again. Dan, talk me through those final moments. Bound hits that shot. They go, they move. Trippy with a massive 1v1 win. I love that SSG got aggressive when they needed to. As soon as you have that extra player, especially with the time on uh, going against you a little bit, they begin to try and pinch, they begin to try and push. But the fact that Optic were able to hold and trade out that successfully also demonstrates what a powerful defensive side Optic can be. The structure that I was talking about, they literally build a wall at times and it's tough to break them down. But think about what's going through the head of some of these players in those final moments. When you see it tick over to 49-49 and you're in that gunfight and you swing for that melee, you just hope it registers for you first. Of course, on LAN, it's going to be registering for you both, and it means we get the trade and we get the reset. It was 18 kills for Lucid in the end. Once more, just living up to his name, living up to the MVP status we've seen him claim before. As we look back at some of the replays, what a match on Slayer Recharge. And that was that final moment where I think it was Legend who did get the trade in the end with, S with Lucid. Oh, look how different it could have been. Had Lucid have not got that melee, had he had died, when he was on those shields from those bullets from behind, it would have been Space Station 2-0 up in this series. But now as we get to reset, you get to replan, you get to rethink. I, I speak so much about starting strategies and how difficult and how important they are at the start of the game to try and give you that momentum. We saw Optic off the rip send several players down long haul, really try and gain control of battery side so they could get that shock rifle. If SSG are aware of that now, they can start to maybe set up a cross, set up some angles to try and stop that push from happening. That final moment really reminded me of something you'd see in the Royal Rumble where you're waiting to see whose feet touch the floor first. Incredible. And the good news is, folks, we get to do it all again. Game two, about to get ready. Lucid with the biggest trade possibly in Halo Infinite. If he does not get that trade, if Legend gets back down them steps, we've seen SSG had the numbers. But it was that moment there, that one moment. It's margins, that's all that separate these top teams. And we're moving and grooving once more. Just to clarify, in case you don't know how the rules works, we just play again to 50. It's a complete reset. 2-2 Two -two off the rip, it's gonna be a different starting strategy from Optic Gaming. Not going to allow that shock rifle to maybe be just gifted over towards SSG this time. And I think it's going to be another similar game where we get a slow method methodical style here, Shurs. 5-3 to begin things, make it 6 as Optic get a nice early break to take a little bit of control. Both teams continue to jostle for map control. Optic all over on the gold side here. 
almost a carbon copy of the collapse we had just seen moments ago. Newton lets go of that plasma pistol shot, probably the worst possible moment. And as a result, Optic Gaming go down by three. Trippy's able to help answer back with the damage formula just put down. Eco equally answers the call and gets Trippy. They're trading back and forth. These two teams putting it all on the line here on Championship Sunday. Again, it's bound with the responsibility of the shock rifle and it was a big shot that he hit in the previous game to even encourage that space station push. Had he not hit that shot, again, could have been a very different game and these are the really small details that can make or break a series. I think we'll look back at that tie at the end of this series and reflect on it a little bit more because it could be series defining. The bounds going to be patient. He's going to wait. Two minutes have gone and it's only 10-9. So our attention once more turns to the camouflage. And he's got the grapple to lo go alongside it. But actually, he's not going to try and play for the grapple. Instead, he's seen teammates oh. go down. So he knew he had to do something special, but was not able to even go for it. He tried something. Had to sell it for the trade. Looks as though Formal's managed to pop that camo into his chest. They trade two kills apiece. Stellar closes the distance onto one. Another trade. 16 16 then. I mean, both, both teams might be need to look to their controller sponsors after this one because we might need new buttons after all the melees that are going down. They're so closely contested and they're so aggressive at times. They're always diving in for those trades because they know how important every trade is. You can't allow a player to get away on no shields because they could come to bite you in the backside a little bit later. As once more, it's 1919. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but just imagine if it did happen. Have we ever seen back-to-back -back ties in the HCS history? Not sure, but... Cer certainly not Halo Infinite, that much is for sure. This might have been the first tie we've seen. Maybe in the past with H2A, of course, you had that Sanctuary Slayer a couple of times. There were some ties along the way with the old Tox roster. Now, of course, representing FaZe. Eco, though. In tower, Legend dies. Optic take the lead. It's back and forth. Lucid with a huge double kill. Dead Zone trying to play his life. Unable to do so. Lucid though, oh. down the no shield. Stellar again. Showing exactly why they call him SS Jesus. And you speak about back and forth, it's just we constant double kill into double kill. It's one player stepping up on one side into on the flip side. The next player then stepping up for his team. We're on board with Stellar at the moment, and he's the one who's been finding back-to-back -back kills to keep SSG in it. And now they take the lead, 28 to 25. He finds a little cheeky shock rifle to work with here too, and you know how dangerous that could be. Oh. Connects with the second, and it's a killing spree. Ego, jiggle peeking, has the camouflage, has got to try and stay alive, cannot do so. Dead zone with a huge kill. Perfect trade for him. Formal's gonna fall. Stellar's still got that shock rifle. Still being an influence, still being a menace. We've yet to see a team really gain control of Recharge Slayer. We haven't seen a lead by more than, what, five, six? As it just keeps staying within three or four. As soon as you think one team's ahead, the other just replies with a moment of brilliance. Is now bound trying to stay alive and will do so. Good grenades, good communication from Optic Gaming to try and find where Bound is, but he's still... Oh, he eventually falls, but Optic used every grenade they had in their pockets to take him down. Nothing left in those Optic pockets, but IOUs, if they try and pull out any more grenades, they have to try and salvage some on the map, one way or another. More trades. It's the story of this Slayer. Like you say, neither team really able to put together any significant control. Whether it be with the power, weapon, power weapons, the power ups. So evenly matched. My worry for Space Station is you look across to Optic and you look at Formal's stats at the moment. Only the three kills, but seven assists. And we know that every single game Formal's in, at some point he heats up. If he does begin to heat up toward the end of this game, he could really take control for the green wall. And SSG needs to be aware of that as the push comes through. Great grenades, but two kills in favor of SSG as they continue just to stay far enough ahead in this game. 
But every single time that Optic make that push and they get a couple of kills, SSG reply. 37 to 36. Camouflage once more is up. And maybe this could be the moment for Formal to start to heat up himself. Optic down by one. Formal with the camouflage. Bound charging forward into two members. He'd be made to look a little bit silly if he dies here then. Legend rotates over towards elevator. Two members of SSG head towards long haul. Space Station are split here. They're trying to get to Bound. They're trying to help him out. The smoke screen will go down. Legend falls. Formal gets the one he needs. Stellar soars forward on double stack. Also goes down. Bound continues to take damage, as does Eco. Formal is a turret right now. Such an interesting game to watch because there's so many 2v2 oh. fights happening on the map. But that's why you have Formal on your team and you need him to turn up. He does turn up and Optic, they regain the lead here. 42 to 41. And SSG, they're over towards Elevator, and Optic can start to surround them, but Trippy falls. Eight kills required for both teams now. And we're heading right down the same road we've already been before. We know where this leads. Back to pipes, back to a trade, and we run it back once more. Or will one of these teams, will an individual on these teams take over in these final moments? Who knows, maybe it could be history in the arena here in Arlington, Texas for Optic Gaming, but SSG have regained that lead. They're up by two once more. Eco surviving in control. An aggressive push though out over at Middlebridge from Optic Gaming. They really want to get Eco out of control here. Both teams have done that well all series long, finishing off those one shots, not allowing people to escape. Shock in the hands of Lucid and Camo's coming up. Camo pops. Dead zone, the first point of contact. You know they want to get it in the hands of Lucid. You know he can be a menace with the shock rifle. Attempts to get a couple of headshots. Dead zone elsewhere gets a double. Eco and Bound answer back immediately. Bound comes in, tries to get the trade. Lucid gets the pick, though. We're all tied up, 46 apiece. I mean, this could happen again. Everyone in the arena could be saying, I was there when it was back to back oh. ties between SSG and Optic. But will we see some magic from someone? 48-48. Oh. Big double, but still tied. Lucid gets two. Bound replies with two. Into the final knockings, then. Stellar soars forward to his death. Put to the sword. And Lucid, eyes up long haul, shock rifle in hand, just wants to see the smiling face of an SSG member. All it takes is one bullet. One moment for Optic Gaming to tie this one up, and SSG know it. They can't poke out, they can't show face, they do have three minutes to work with, to plan, to try and coordinate. But you've got to be careful where you step out here. Whatever angle you face, there may be Ooh. a shock rifle waiting for you. Shock Rifle now out of ammunition. All of SSG have completely rotated. They were cowering on glass, waiting for numbers. They all rotate in. Through to Whirlpool, bound on Batledged. Trying to get information nobody's showing right now. Can you imagine? 49-48 still. SSG, they need two. They can't afford to push in and just get the single trade. Big nades coming into control, though, as SSG are slowly but surely creeping towards Optic Gaming. Are they going to try and set a trap here and then maybe pounce on Optic when they least expect it? Optic. Here we go. Entrenched. But SSG are going to come knocking. And Dead Zone gets the kill onto his replacement legend. We're all tied up one to one. Plasma nade there from Dead Zone. He saw just a couple of heads heading over towards Top Bridge. Top cross. And he says, actually, this plasma could do some real damage. Might have even ended up on 51 kills if it had hit properly. But you mentioned Dead Zone. Not only did he get that final kill, 20 kills for Dead Zone in the end. You, you spoke about vindication. You spoke about redemption. Well, Dead Zone, he is certainly looking to take some revenge on his previous team here and say, well, why did you drop me? Optic Gaming, tie us up one-to-one. -one. What a series and 
What a couple of slayers we just got to witness. Looking at the stats then, dead zone making the difference. But that was back-to-back -back slayers in which we've seen Legend register 16 deaths consecutively. That is far too many in a slayer. It is, but Legend is that kind of player. He's always looking to get into those gunfights. He's very quick around the map, and we could be singing his praises had he got a couple of kills towards the end. So it's one of those where it's always going to come down to just minimal differences between these teams. And in the end, it was a sticky grenade to separate the two. Got to respect Space Station for making that push towards the end. Across top cross. Had Penguin not seen it, had Dead Zone not seen it, formerly, the artist known formerly as Penguin, then it could have been very different, but he just spotted them out. But the Shock Rifle, very important throughout that game as well, both games, to be honest, and I think we're in for a real barn burner here in this series. After two, well, I guess open bracket three, close bracket, we're tied one to one. It was Optic Gaming who found the ice. You have to commend Space Station. They made that full rotation around the map. They tried to be the players being the aggressor. They were forced to be. They were down by one. They had to do something. But Optic were equal to it. And we said we may go back and we may look at that trade for the 50-50 for Optic Gaming. That first recharge layer, it was Space Station's. They were so close. One bullet away from winning it. And with Lucid getting that trade, it allowed them to get the reset and allowed them to get to this moment where they only needed one kill. And it was the sticky grenade of Dead Zone. And look what it means to the boys as well. These high pressure moments. After two then, 4-3 Aquarius CTF, which by the way, had unofficial overtime. And after two Slayers on recharge, we finally could separate them. Optic Gaming leveling up the series. Oddball streets now, Dan, on the horizon. We know you love your stats. Stat man Dan's what I've been calling you. Give me something. Uh, Optic went undefeated on Oddball streets throughout qualifiers. It is one of their better modes. We know they love Oddball. Very good at setting up and really destroying, disassembling their opponents when they try and break those setups. On the other side, it, it is one of SSG's worst game types, I'd say. It's hard to say that about a team like Space Station because they're good at pretty much everything. But if you had to try and narrow it down, I think Oddball Streets would be one of them. So this is good news for the Green Wall. A great chance to take a 2-1 lead in the series. But at the same time, yes, stats are great. Yes, stats give us an indication of who is kind of better at a certain game type, a certain map or mode. It's about who's really playing well on the day. And there's such little things that are separating these two teams right now. And let's talk about Space Station a little bit while both teams catch their breaths. So often they found themselves in the winner's final, in the elimination final, and they fell short. And that's got to grind your gears after a while. If you're Eco, if you're Stellar, and indeed Bound, who slightly less experienced, but at the same time finding themselves in the exact same position. They've made this change to try and give them that push, give them that oomph push them over the line, get the grand finals, win the damn ship. They felt like they needed a change. They felt like they needed to replace Dead Zone. And now Dead Zone playing with a chip on his shoulder and has been phenomenal this tournament. I really feel like Dead Zone joining Optic Gaming has opened up a brand new play style for him. He's almost been able to feed into a different kind of Dead Zone that we had seen previously on SSG. His slaying power starting to really shine as he's not being forced into purely an objective play. So he's now suddenly leading in slays at times. He's the guy who's getting into those engagements. He can play the support role as well. He's doing everything for the team. But on the other side, for SSG, their replacement was Legend. But of course, we were highlighting Stella because Stella is the big game player. He is the one that you would expect to make those big moments for the team to get those big double kills and put them on the board to keep you ahead. It's so interesting that you even mentioned Dead Zone and, the and how he's re almost reinvented himself on this Optic Gaming team. The reason why he made the name change, he said he wanted to do away with the bad habits, look after himself, get to the gym, really start to look after himself. And now even his gameplay is starting to show it. His gameplay has certainly been even more impressive at this tournament. And that's hard to do because it's not like he was playing bad on SSG. But we'll have to see whether the change was a good one or not because we still haven't settled it. It's only 1-1. One, one. We're into map three. It's Oddball Street somewhere that Optic Gaming can call home at times because they're so good at setting up. This one's not done just yet. It's got plenty more to give. 
Eco goes down. Legend falls down to B steps. Trippy just about escapes with his life. Loose it in the L. Takes the challenge by the middle. Good for a trade. He got his pick. Trippy's got ball. And he's moving it towards C. Trippy knows he had a chance just to toss that ball, but has to start to reconsider and think about that camouflage. The shroud goes down. Bound doesn't want to get him, let him get away here, but Trippy will escape, and not only with the camouflage, but with the bulldog too. Just have to kind of avoid the bombardment of grenades. If a grenade does tickle you and you lose that camo, it's so frustrating. Trippy could have a massive impact on this game. And nearly knock-ins, but as I say that, obviously he gets shut down. That one's on me. The curse of the commentator rings through. Legend goes. Trippy and Lucid also in the respawn screen. SSG have numbers. Stellar has the ball. He's got it all the way over towards Tower. Formal looks to close the distance. Ball gets played towards the statue. Legend and Stellar try to combine, providing cover fire off the backs of one another. Bound gets a huge double kill. Formal's all alone now, isolated, needs help. But it's not going to come quick enough as he falls. He did get an assist though. He did do enough damage to allow the rest of his team to spawn, make a difference, and Enemy stop Space Station from getting too much ball of a setup drops. here. It's a little bit of time, 14 seconds. Nothing to kind of write home about, but it's a start here for SSG. Is now Lucid trying to find the kill onto Eco and will do so. Lucid with the repulsor, slides down driveway straight into SSG territory. And he was not provided the welcome he would have wanted. He wasn't even turned away at the door. Formal, Jiggle Peaks gets the kill on the Stellar. Eco equalizes it once more. You spoke about it, Dan. These teams so good at capitalizing on damage done, ensuring no kill gets away. It's very rare you actually get to see all four dead in any of these games. It's only happened a few times. Three are down at the moment for Optic Gaming. They do take down Formal, the last remaining, so there was a small time where all four members of Optic were down. Dead Zone's first up, and SSG are now scoring. Bound notices they have trap control. He can't quite stay alive, but he will be able to toss that ball to Legend, but this is not going to be a setup that will last for very long, because it's a four versus two. Another scene from Oppenheimer. We see it time and time again as Dead Zone the brings the boom, brings the pain, gets the ball. 23 seconds is all SSG oh, could muster before the setup was ultimately broken. Enemy has the ball. That's why Optic Gaming are so good at ball, is they will not allow the opposition to get a proper setup. You won't see other teams getting 40, 50 oh, seconds bro. against Optic. But Optic can Enemy be that team who will suddenly turn a setup into like 40 or 50 seconds if they get into the right spot. But SSG also known for breaking oh, setups bro. as well, and that's why we're going to have a very back and forth match up here. On oh, no, ball streets is oh. Lucid, gets the double. Lucid starting to turn the screw now. That stock rifle having a massive impact in these the engagements. Ball. He's also got a bulldog to play with if anybody gets a little bit too Enemy close. The ball. He let his dog off the leash. It's got a nasty bite. Enemy has One ball. bite of a bulldog and an arm. Enough to get the job done on the legend. Ball. The Frenchman falls, has Enemy to watch has his teammates now. Dead zone with ball in PD. Bound over towards the arcade. Stellar gets a trade. Get a pick, excuse me. They have numbers now. Oh, wow. And just like that, Optic take the lead in the game. The dead Zone's got the ball once more. Pull him off as a Dead Zone. PD at the moment, holding onto the ball and taking down anyone who might arrive to check in. 40 seconds on the board. What did I say? Optic, they can have those runs, but SSG eventually will shut it down here. Bound will make sure that Formal falls too. And they regain control of said ball. Camouflage is going to be up. So with those kills, SSG should be able to get camo. Depends on the positioning of the Optic spawners. It looks like they spawned down bottom trap, so they are able to keep Space Station off of Camouflage for now. Bound tried to take space, perhaps tried to take too much space. Overly aggressive on the fresh spawners. He ultimately paid for it. He went down. Camouflage still down on the podium. No team really able to get their hands on it just yet. Lewis is going to be the first one to go. Didn't grab it. Didn't pop it. Eco's got it. Three dead for Optic. Formal's going to try and stop this camouflage making the play. It's going to be a trade. It's down on Generator. You can see him relaying the information. They know exactly where it is. Problem is, Optic do too. Yeah, still not popped. As both teams know how important that kill could be as Lucid does eventually pop it, lock it, drop it. 
All the body pops coming out from him. Now we're going to see whether he can get some body shots, but the grenade will just stop him from pushing and pressing at his advantage. Legend predicts exactly where the camouflage player is going to go. Throws down a couple of denial grenades. Ball drop. Ensures sure he has to reroute those lucid. He's made his way towards top tower now. Looking for players in PD. Stellar pops out, receives quite a lot of damage. Stellar does receive a little bit himself. Enemy. Numbers advantage now, first pick. They've got ball, and they've cleared out the riffraff from PD. I will say that was an important touch from Dead Zone onto the ball. We were in a period of play where the ball could have reset had that not happened, and it was an important time to do so because they get three dead and they regain control of PD. They begin to score once more, but because that first camo took so long to get popped, we get another one now so soon after as Trippy follows up with a kill of his own. What can the Frenchman do then? Oh, with this camouflage. 60 seconds to 53. A minute on the clock now. We are dwindling down. We're into the fourth quarter of round one. Legend standing still. Legend eats two grenades, gets one, but not the value he would have wanted. Two go down for SSG, two for Optic. This one still remains on a knife edge. God, it really shows how close these two teams are, right? We had the tie in the Slayer, 50-48 in the next one. And it's so difficult even to separate the two here in the ball game. Only seven seconds between Optic and Space Station right now. 30 seconds left on the clock. So Optic, if they want to, can just play Slayer a little bit. They can force SSG off this ball, but if they make one single mistake, it could cost them the round. SSG find themselves in a similar situation as they did in the Slayer. They're the ones that have to make the play. They're the ones that have to make the move. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Optic have got this ball right where they want it. It's in no man's land. They got the touch to stop the reset. We're down to the final two seconds. They're trying to make the play, and it's not going to come quick enough. Optic Gaming take round one. What a great round it was from Optic. They were down to begin with. Space Station got that initial 20 plus seconds. But Optic had that one in strong setup where they got 40 ish points. Ever since they had that lead, they were able to just control the game a little bit. It was a PD setup they tended to lean towards, and we'll have to see whether they try and do the same thing here as Lucid cleverly getting rid of some of the Bulldog ammo there as he knew he was going to go down. Enemy has the ball. Helmet stock rifle goes for the instant explode. For a moment, I thought he thought it was a frag grenade. Of course, I'm the idiot. He's the pro. There's a reason for that. Double kill for Bound. Stock rifle remains in his hands. Camouflage falls on the benches, and he descends upon it, doing damage all the meanwhile as he slides across the map. Get touched tight with a palm tree, but Formal gets a huge kill. Yeah, that could be a massive kill for Formal there to shut down the Stalker rifle, which was doing way too much damage to Optic Gaming. In all the meanwhile, Stella was picking up ball time. It's similar to round one, though. Space Station find themselves with a 29-point lead here. This time, can they actually use this lead and press on and get a significant advantage just to keep the green wall away? But Lucid keeps getting this camouflage. It's a slippery one when he does get hold of it as well, but they spot him out. He's not able to get the kills. Stellar falls. Two down for Optic. Make it three. Reset. Ball. Formal's over towards Cafe. They have that information. Ball does reset, though. Eco doesn't know exactly where Formal was, so he started to fire shots through the screen. Hoping he connect with something. In the end, it wasn't required. The damage has already been done. Stella gets yet another opener. This is a chance for them to impose their will onto Optic. Trippy drops the shoulder, gets a kill. It's another trade, though, and this is perfect for SSG as they whisk the ball away. Ball dropped. Every player on the map struggling to survive at the moment. As soon as you are down to half shields, you know full well you're being called out. You know full well a grenade is probably going to be landing at your feet shortly. So you have to try and go out with a bang, whether that's just a couple of bullets into someone else, a grenade at your own feet, or just wasting bullets like we saw Lucid do earlier. But it's Formal who grabs the camouflage now. And a chance to try and make a difference. Enemy has the ball. in phantom mode. A trade, though, is all he has to ball settle for. Enemy has the ball. You could wish he has that play back, but unfortunately for him... Enemy has the ball. That was what happened. That's what transpired. But as he got that kill... 
Optic were able to get their hands on the ball. They are now able to score. Just having the camouflage was presence there for Optic Gaming. It allowed Trippy to say, well, actually, Space Station are waiting for the camo push. We can sneak this ball away and get some cheeky time on the board. And it's racked up to 16 seconds. That's not bad, just off the back of one camo. They have lost a couple of players, and now SSG suddenly gained tram control. Ball dropped. Ego waits on benches. Ball. Sits in the bus stop. Enemy has the Gets ball. lucid. And again, his teammates continue to do damage, Enemy keeping him alive. Stellar and Legend combined to wipe half the Optic roster off the map. Enemy now the equation. To victory. They're gonna push back commando and driveway. Lucid with a beautiful grenade, spins up. Oh! And plasma grenade from Trippy sticks to bound. And latches on to Eco as well and takes two of them for a ride. Enemy has the ball. I will say, Space Station are playing with so much more structure than they did in the qualifiers on this map in mode in particular. There was a few times when they were playing in qualifiers that they would send one player out to kind of scout things, try and find those kills. They'd die and then they'd be in a three versus four. That's not really happening as much. I think they know that Optic Gaming are a team you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with four versus four. You can't be facing them. That player down as Lucid gets another one. And Optic, they had temporary control, but Space Station once more demonstrate how good they are at breaking their setups as Legend comes from behind. It's the first camouflage Enemy that SSG the got their hands on in quite some time, and Enemy has it was insta-burned. Optic navigating this one perfectly. Stellar. Black Tower Eco there too. Dead Zone fires a couple of shots through the eye of a needle. Optic recognizing SSG did still have that numbers advantage until this very moment. But now they push forward, now they take map. And they go looking for that ball and they get it. Sounds a little bit like a cave map. Me take ball, me take map. Me get ball, me succeed. Me do kill. Sometimes you just need those kind of players though. You need those players who can just push forward and get those kills for you. And Bound does just that, gets two, but Stella responds with some of his own. As Optic find three of themselves on the floor and Lucid could be the next. There's a nice spawn though over towards Red Room that will allow Optic to just keep pushing in and stop oh, SSG from getting too much ball time. Eco expertly uses that shroud screen once more to get away, oh, take right. minimal damage. He's gotten it right the way back to his teammates, but Formals on the hunt with the stock rifle now. Two shots and a beatdown, a good for one. Eco though will stand them up, get the kill. Another one, double kill. As Eco sends two men to the boatman. And they have to watch their teammates trippy and formal team have some victory. sort of influence, but Eco's quite happy to hold this ball and they hold a significant lead. Not only is Eco getting ball time, but he has 26 kills on the board as well. 10 seconds away from taking round two here. Our oh, Space Station Gaming. Maybe one last push from Optic. You can see Lucid's trying to make his way around, but that's not going to work out. SSG hold on and SSG will tie up. Map number three. The hold was good. We get to go again. Nothing to separate them after two. Much like the series. We continue on. Eco heads up B steps. Enemy has the ball. Tries to get as much information as he possibly can. Clearing his angles, clearing his corners. Knows how sneaky Optic can play. Legend gets a massive double kill. Trippy answers back though with the Bulldog. And he fights from the back foot. Trippy's in big trouble. Lucid's coming to provide some support. It didn't come quick enough to survive and to keep his teammate alive. Dead zone. Sitting on top tram. Gets the kill he needs. Camouflage is now up. Lucid's in the respawn screen. This should mean SSG can get their hands on it. One of them's got it. They didn't really know who, but Legend oh. just sneaks round. And he should get a chance to reset and try and do something with the camouflage. Did notice off the rip, Optic really trying to prioritize pink side. Wanted to get hold of the Bulldog nice and early. I wonder where that Bulldog has ended up because it could be a difference maker, but now SSG going to begin to push with the camo. It's a trade one for one, so many trades again. Camouflage and Stalker Rifle in the hands of Space Station and they get all four dead on the side of Optic Gaming, but the ball is still a little bit in no man's land. It's not going to be easy to score here. It gets reset even, so for all the hard work, for all the pushes they actually went through, they have to go through it all again. Decent work from Trippy as well. First player off the respawn. 
immediately set his eyes on the ball, trying to do his maximum damage, trying to make it a tough task. Because of that, Stellar couldn't go straight for it. Because of that, the ball gets reset. Trippy gets a double oh. kill. And now Optic Gaming, after going four dead, they have the ball, and SSG are down three men. Ball. Trippy made himself big, didn't he? He said, actually, I'm prepared to throw down. I'm prepared to take any of you in a gunfight. I don't care where the ball is. I'm not going to allow you to grab it. And off the back of it now, Optic begin to score. Two are dead on the side of Space Station, so Optic do have the extra player, and they are moving with the ball at the moment. It's not a solid setup, it's not physically structured, but it is a loose setup that can work, but Legend beginning to do some real damage here. Could make it three back-to-back -back kills alongside this camouflage, not allowing Optic to get set up. Still a little bit of camo to play with. Legend. Currently sitting at 27, 15, and 23. He's ball been amongst it. Enemy has the ball. Formal, recognizing exactly where that camouflage player is likely to be. Legend steps forward, though, still gets the kill. Formal wasn't there to do the damage that was required. Backs away into red room, and all it is is red room. Formal falls. And all the meanwhile, Space Station have got hands on ball, and they've now taken the lead. It was something that you had brought up earlier. Legend is always doing something productive on the map, whether it's repositioning, whether it's damage, whether it's trying to prioritize a weapon that's spawning as he gets a killing spree now, picks up some grenades, three are dead for Optic Gaming, and SSG will have a chance to get some real ball time here. And they'll get closer and closer to not only taking this round, but potentially taking this back. That one's pretty safe with the ball right now, as it stands. Lucid's oh, gonna make that. A little bit more difficult though, Bound will fall in the hands of Trippy's grenade. Perfect shots from Legend though, as he continues to try and create space for his team. Cause chaos once more. Lines up dead zones in his crosshair. Opsis instead to move away though. Goes to the bait and switch with his teammate. But Optic Gaming now surge forward. They're the ones getting the kills. They're the ones around the ball now. Bound with that commando. Oh, four dead. Well, ensured. Four go down for Optic. Enemy has the ball. Optic committed heavily to that push, and it was looking good, looking like they had the pinch, but it's the damage output from SSG. They make it so difficult for any push to actually happen, but Camo is grabbed, I think, by Optic Gaming. I'm not sure if anyone was able to actually punch it into their chest, though, as three are dead. It could be four dead again here if Stella wins this one, oh. but oh, Formal had to win that engagement, and he did so. Enemy has the ball. So impressive from Formal. We know how difficult it is to fight a player on the pillar using that jiggle peek. But he stood up strong, he stood up brave, and he got the kills. Lucid now with the camouflage. And he's closing in on Eco with the ball. Bound replies with a kill of his own, though. And Legend gets it onto Lucid. The back and forth's insane, like a pendulum at the moment, swinging through this game. So hard to call, but SSG still have that lead, and the clock is beginning to tick down. Two minutes and eight seconds left. In a game that I just never really want to end, in a series I don't want to end. I, I could watch these guys go toe-to-toe -to -toe all day long, but it is SSG scoring once more. It was a jiggle peak and bound. Not shy from the fight. Forma was there, though. That means SSG's hold is going to look a little shaky then. Eco recognizes this, tries to rotate the ball, tries to get it out of trouble and out of danger, but Trippy picks up a huge double kill. Does that mean that Optic Gaming now have the chance to tie us up if their setup and their hold can be good? Yeah, can they get an actual hold here? It starts off with a kill to Legend. Formal has to make sure that there's no PD players, and I think he's got that information. They're all going to be over towards L. Two kills in favor. Make it three in favor of Optic Gaming. Good ball time now coming out of it. But Formal has to worry about Bound first and foremost, but Bound's done so much work. Yes, there's a lot of ball time being gained by Optic, but they've lost enough players that now SSG can begin their charge. It was an unofficial four dead for Optic. Enemy has the ball. But they still have their hands on the ball. Uh -oh. Dead zone though. Bound takes care of one. Ball dropped. Formal's gonna jump up. Did Formal get the camo? The answer is yes. Formal can have a massive influence, but he gets shut down. And four went down for Optic. And now all of a sudden, SSG are in the driving seat. 
SSG have PD. SSG just got the opener onto Lucid as well. So now Optic, they're on split spawns. They've got one last push to try and stay alive here. It has to be now. Has to be here. Has to be now. There is no more time. Dead Zone goes. He gets cut away. Bound continues to hold. And SSG take game three. That is a massive game for Space Station to win. When you look at that series layout, this was the one that was leaning a little bit more heavily towards Optic. It was one of their better maps and modes. And SSG put themselves firmly in that driving seat that you were talking of. 2-1 up in the series in what was, again, another very back and forth map. But ultimately, it was SSG, their ability to break the setup of Optic time and time again. For all my talk about how Optic can set up, how strong they can be once they are set up, SSG negated it completely with their ability to get behind enemy lines and wipe that wall down. You spoke about how good Optic are at breaking setups and equally how good they are at holding the ball and holding their setups. They had exactly what they needed in that end game. But SSG, SSG came, they took over. It was bound as well over towards the pink side, able to get a big kill, then stay alive, regain his shields, and then re-challenge. And sadly, Formal knew he had to take that fight, but the spawns had already happened at that point. And Space Station wrestled back that control and got the ball into PD, and from then, it was always going to be their game. So now they find themselves 2-1 up. Now they find themselves one map away from the grand final. This is what Legend was recruited for. We speak about it being the difference maker. It's one thing to say it. It's one, another thing entirely to do it. You have that expectation on you. So much weight on the shoulders of this young man to come into this team, to drive them to be champions. They were only managed it once last year, and some people will say it didn't even happen at a major. But to do it in Optic Gaming's backyard, that would be massive for them. They're still one away from the grand finals, and they'll have to do it all over again. But to have that advantage in the grand finals, to be able to have that reset possibility, that's going to be huge for them. Even more huge when you look at the rest of the series layout and it's two maps and modes that Space Station didn't lose throughout the entirety of the qualifiers coming into this tournament. Arguably two of their stronger game types and sadly, Strongholds of Life Fire, one of Optic's weaker game types. It in fact, was one of the only map modes they lost so far this tournament. They lost it to complexity when we saw them competing yesterday. So if Space Station can kind of take anything away from that, if they have been doing their research, if they have been studying their VODs, maybe there is an opportunity for an SSG 3-1 victory here. But on the same side, Optic would have been looking at that, saying, okay, why did we lose here? Why was Stronghold's life fight difficult for us? And if they've equally been doing the same kind of studying, then maybe they can find a pattern that they can just tear apart, rebuild, regain, and try and take us to 2-2. Can Optic Gaming alter their recipe on Live Fire Strongholds, which once upon a time, you would have called Live Fire their haven, no matter what it was, their sanctuary. That's two maps you actually named, which is quite funny. That's why I got a little bit confused there. See that? I've done, done a thing there. It certainly was the home of Optic Gaming, was Live Fire, but it's been trending downwards ever since they've kind of made changes into the roster. The playstyle's changed a little bit. They've got better at different maps, but they need to try and find some of that same energy that we once saw Optic have on Live Fire if they're going to get back into this series. Otherwise, we're going to see them have to battle through that elimination bracket where FaZe Clan are waiting, and you know full well they are out for revenge. Optic Gaming are going to have to correct the errors of yesterday. Was it a blip in form? Or is there something a little bit more sinister there? Can they have made the changes necessary in just one day? Playing against a higher caliber team here in Space Station Gaming. They're going to have to. Or they're one game away, one loss away from the elimination final and dropping down to their rivals in phase. SSG will desperately want to do it here and now. Sniper rifle is going to be the big difference maker in this game. I've seen Formal destroy entire teams when he gets hold of it, so... SSG needs to be aware of that. On the flip side, though, Stella can do exactly the same thing. This camouflage for Bound will allow them just to sneak A. Now, one thing that Space Station are very good at when it comes to strongholds is their constant manipulation of the map, their constant rotations, keeping the other team thinking on their feet a little bit. And remember, they have Legend on their side, who was once a part of that Quadrant team who went unbeaten for so long in stronghold game types. And 
Legend can bring all of that information to this SSG roster. That one's camo finally dissipates. Lucy gets three shots. Dead zone shields are popped. Bounce that close the distance now. He's done enough damage as far as he's concerned to get some kills here. And he was right, dead zone falls. He immediately tries to capture B while his teammates get C. But something SSG here have done here, Dan, is silence that home crowd. And it's difficult to do. The green wall loud and proud at the very best of times, but Space Station know that they are so close to that grand final, but Ooh. dead zone. Maybe gives them something to cheer about one sport. Optic had a temporary triple cap, and that, if you are going to shut down Space Station here, you do have to start looking for it. You do have to try and put them on those awkward spawns, try and put them in those situations where maybe they are split two and two. Otherwise, the way SSG move around the map, they will punish you every single time if you try and just hold two every single time. B not quite fully converted just yet. Stella recognized that. He tried to get across, tried to cover the distance. Eco's going to do the same thing, but he's going to also fall down. Dead Zone's quite happy just to bait this hill. Trippy's there as well, guns trained. On the Frenchman that falls. They get the reset, and they continue to score. Yeah, Optic look a lot better than they did previously here. Working as duos quite often. Just staying close enough to finish off any damage that has been done, and it's an easy camo grab, surprisingly, for Dead Zone here. I think SSG were kind of focusing on those strongholds, so Optic said, well, we're happy to sacrifice them for now. Now you have to put this camo to work to make sure it was worth it. Four dead for SSG. Eco found himself in a mirrored situation, trying to get to B, trying to get the conversion. But now A, B, and C firmly in the green wall's control. Looks like the camo was worth it then. <laughs> it was a risky play at times to just give up a couple of strongholds, but the power of the camouflage here on Life Fire, we know the difference it can make. Is Optic, they can now surround Space Station. We're going to be over towards A, but Trippy doesn't get overzealous. Not going to overcommit. That's what Space Station probably want. Instead, he reads the push. He reads the flank, but doesn't get the kill. Legend with a super lunge. Legend somehow, some way, lunging across the continent to get that kill. Enemy halfway. It looked easy peasy. Legend made it anything but. Still using that repulsor. Still picking up kills. But that's good from Optic. They forced Space Station to double back towards A just to make sure they held onto one stronghold. And all the meanwhile, they got a couple of kills, so Space Station weren't able to get any points on the board. Yes, they're getting kills now, but look at the score, 147 to 14. There is a lot of work to do now for Space Station. A killing spree, though, for Legend is a great way to kick it off. Legend throws down everything in his pockets to try and stop the big door push. Nothing was coming. They also have a quantum translocator available to use that will pull the player right back to B. Formal taking a lot of damage, down to no shields, in fact. Lucid, though, will get Eco. That's the pick they need. SSG slowly climbing in points, slowly closing that gap. That triple cap. It was locked in tight, it was locked in hard, and they got a lot of points that SSG now to battle back for. SSG did not tap out, though, when the submission was locked in. His legend notices that the push is happening over towards B, so he's going to be making the rotation Jeez. as his teammates have fallen. But what a break that was from Optic, and they get the trade. It's a triple cap again for Optic Gaming. They look like a different side here on Strongholds on Life Fire, and that is massive news for them. Dead Zone gets a massive trade, goes back, recognizing exactly where Legend's gonna show up. Gets that trade, keeps A in Optic Gaming's possession. Three dead, or excuse me, two dead. It's gonna be Seller and Legend watching bound with the camouflage as he doubles back towards A. Optic Gaming now very close to that 200 point threshold. Strongholds are never done, but they are firmly in that driving seat that we continue to talk about. Yeah, at the moment, we've not really seen enough from SSG to believe that a comeback is possible with how Optic have been playing it. Yes. Yeah, they've been able to get a couple of camos. They have been able to get a few killing sprees here or there. But it's been the ultimate breaks from Optic Gaming. Every single time SSG gets set up, Enemy Optic team. are throwing bodies towards those strongholds. Formal does get shut down, though. 
this would be a best chance as any for a space station to get back into it, but Optic always getting those big kills just to stay just enough ahead. It's on inside C. 1v1 with Legend. You couldn't write it any better. SSG step back inside to reconvert it back to the color blue. And they will score again. There's a huge deficit to try and eat away at here. And like you say, SSG up until this point haven't really shown enough. Haven't shown the kind of control that they usually exempt. Double kill from Legend might change that here. His formal spawns back tower. Legend closes the distance immediately. Gets more than a trade. It's a single solo kill. Stellar also elsewhere gets a kill. Now they can start to believe. He did try and press for that trip cap, but shutting down Stellar was very important by Optic Gaming. You don't want to get locked into that position where you're on spawn and you're just getting pinched from both sides. Sniper rifle out of bullets, though. That's a shame because it was Optic's chance just to shut the control of Space Station down. Two dead on either side. If Stella can get a kill here, it would be massive. He does damage, but will fall. And Optic might be able to regain B here. Optic do claim B once more. What do SSG have? That 200 point threshold has now been passed. Three members of Optic Gaming back tower. Legend's there. Legend closed the distance. Legend gets a triple kill. But all the meanwhile, he gets a triple kill. There's only one player left on the side of Space Station, and it's Stella. Yeah, you get the camouflage, but Optic, they have a triple cap. They have to try and wrestle back A to Space Station, but now Optic are closing in, making map four their own, taking us to a game five. It's going to be one last push for Space Station Gaming. One last hurrah. Stellar has been given up, though. His position spotted out. Formal gets the kill. And he moves in on A. Legends all alone. Has to give it up. They capture C. But they lose A in the process. Formal goes back to Big Door. Bound's going to receive some damage. Formal's there. Down to no shield. Bound continues to try and stay alive. Just about maneuvers his hitbox out of the way of Formal's attention. Formal falls, as do three for Optic. This is the last stand then for SSG as Stellar again gets aggressive towards A. He did the same last time and he fell. This time he's got help from Bound. And they will now lock in the trip cap of their own. We've seen comebacks happen. Optic, they know it can happen as well. They can't allow Space Station to gain too much control. They need to just reset a little bit. Breathe and make sure they're working together. You don't want to make too many individual plays and trying to take strongholds on your own can often find you in a situation like this where the drip cap continues to breathe here for SSG. Lucid spawns towards dummies. The rest of his teammates are now making moves on A. Eco's forced to make a decision. Where does he go? The call came to come pillars. He provided cover. It wasn't needed in the end. It looks like Lucid will get control of C. Dead zone sitting top middle. As he drops down the chimney, and heads back towards the safety of his teammates. Unfortunately, Bound cuts him off. That triple cap has been costly. It has done the damage, but Optics still hold the lead, and Space Station still have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do, but SSG are taking the game to Optic here. They're not just kind of sitting with two strongholds and waiting and hoping that they can stop Optics' pushes. When they get that one kill, they are starting to flood. They are starting to try and find those extra kills. As now SSG close in on 200 points as this begins to get a little bit scary for Optic Gaming. Not only that, but the camouflage is also spawning to throw an extra spanner in the works. It's getting scary, the crowd getting leery. As they start the Let's Go Optic chance, we've seen it before, will we see it again? Formal gets one on the bound. Two players of Optic down to no shields now, thanks to Eco, but Lucid's behind. Lucid gets the backstab, and now we can look towards the camouflage. Well, they did get B, but A was then flipped. Space Station is still scoring. Now the fight turns towards C. Lucid, if he can hit a body shot, would be massive. C currently being taken by Optic Gaming. This is a big fight, oh. and it's won by Dead Zone against Legend. Optic regain control, but SSG are still fighting with every ounce that they can. Trippy gets a massive double kill. Optic continue to score. Formal calls out the players that he possibly can. But it's going this way and that. And Optic Gaming continue to hold the setup. We've got members inside B. Trippy has got to play this one perfectly. And does. Optic Gaming pushes to a game five. In a series that has had absolutely everything.
Whether it be a Slayer going 50-50 or a team winning one of their worst games, it's been back and forth between two giants of the HCS and we still have no idea who is going to be winning this winner's final. And the only way we can settle it is another Slayer between the two. And what a game four it was. I mean, it looked like it was firmly in the control of Optic Gaming throughout the majority. But Space Station demonstrate why it's one of their better maps as they finally get into a rhythm. But that rhythm, it just arrived a little bit too late. It's telling. The points that they lost trying to find that rhythm really came back to bite them in the backside. They didn't really start to piece it together until the latter stages of that game. And Optic had give, made SSG work so hard for it. I mean, the game was only separated by four kills when it was all said and done. Optic outstaying by four kills. That was the difference. You always speak about when you get those kills, how you get those kills. None may have been bigger in that game than Dead Zone holding that C. And again, it just shows how great Optic are at adapting to the play styles of their opponents, recognizing a game type, the only game type they lost through Friday, Saturday was Strongholds on live fire. And they study, they make sure they practice and they put it into effect against a team who hadn't lost it prior coming into this tournament. This series really has had everything, but we go into game five. Slayer Solitude, of all Slayers for us to get here, it always seems to be Solitude to try and split the two. And we know that Solitude can be a very snowbally game type, so the starting strategy is going to be very important here. And you gave us a little sneak peek at the start. You said, game three, favorite Optic Gaming. SSG flipped the script. Then Optic Gaming do the exact same thing in game four, and they push us now to this decider, to a shootout. It could not be any more tense. This moment could not be any bigger. I think it shows just how close these two teams are, how competitive it is between the two. And what it guarantees is that whoever goes through to this grand final, if they were to meet each other again, you know full well it's gonna go right down to the wire once more, but you've also got FaZe Clan waiting in that elimination bracket who can also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with both of these teams. As Optic, they're back on the stage after making sure they send us to a game five here. And I can't wait to get this one going. I do think it's going to be a slow-paced affair, similarly to what we saw in Recharge. We're gonna have to see where that shock rifle ends up because we've already seen the difference it could make previously. FaZe will be licking their lips in the elimination final. Like Vultures, just waiting for someone to drop down so they can pick away at the carcass. The, both these teams have given so much. We've already played five games. We've already played two Slayers in this series. It's gonna take, take at least a third. But with the way it's gone down, we may even get a, another reset. It's very telling the difference between these two teams. Optic Gaming deciding to stand up, move elsewhere, have a little chat amongst themselves. Space Station Gaming did not move. Well, I remember a time when it was all about Lucid and his kills and how he was the guy who had to make the difference. Well, he's been the objective guy for a lot of this tournament. And on the flip side, Dead Zone has been the one who has stepped up when it comes to his KD, but both of them with an incredible damage output. But as you go into a game five, you know full well it just comes down to who is actually hitting their shots, who is playing well on the day. And Optic still come into this undefeated when it comes to Slayers after making sure they take that game two earlier today. And for Space Station, they have to look across, they have to look at that game two and how close they were to making sure that they shut Optic's streak down. Well, they have to dig even deeper than they did in map number two. And as we glossed over the series layout at the very beginning, you mentioned how in game four, and game five, it would benefit and it would slightly favor SSG. Game four didn't go according to plan. Optic ripped up the script, but tell me why game five favors SSG here. It is their best Slayer. They are incredible at Solitude. Their record is 7-0 and at the moment from qualifiers into this tournament, so Optic need to recognize that it is one of their better game types. But the fact that Optic have not lost a Slayer at this tournament also gives them the edge, and it's so difficult to try and predict the two here. 
Arctic Gaming versus Space Station Gaming. Game five, alive from HGS Arlington. It's Optic's hometown, but can they get the victory? You know what, I'm gonna say it. Shields up, weapons hot, and we are underway. That was probably your best one yet. Thank you. Been working on it in the off season. Nothing to separate them after five. You heard me, yes, five. This Slayer rocking and rolling already. Trippy with camouflage, kills going in their favor. They're ahead by two. There's some margin for error there now. Legends in the hotel, Eco's on garbage truck. A Trippy could be about to take him out. Oh, Team Nade almost gives him up, but he's still able to get the kill. I said how the starting strategy is gonna be very important. It's Optic off the break, who seem to be firmly ahead, but great kills from Space Station to shut down those players who are marauding around bottom middle. Where does that shock rifle end up? If either of these teams can get into a commanding position with a shock rifle, the other team is definitely going to be fearing it. Legend retreats. Optic in hot pursuit. Mound gets one, formal another. They answer back again. Legend has to trade. He has to settle for it. It's a 1v1 with dead zone in his long time. Former teammate Stellar. Lucid gets the kill. How important could that one be? They have a four kill advantage. Let's listen to what their comms are like with a listen in. Got Joey, one shot, two there. Class, guys, one class. Oh, great, Joey, they're both I one. Got, I got that one needed. Yeah, I'm getting out there. Yeah, you're talking about the flowers. Yes. 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 Guys, I'm hiding. Flowers, flowers in blue. Thoughts, 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 two in blue, guys. No, look at where I'm at, too. Look where I'm at, too. I see that, Tom. Because they may be walking bottom mid. Awkward week. Did you challenge me to Joey? No, no, we're good, we're good. Okay, okay watch. I need to push flowers. Yo, somebody pick up my We push flowers, camo for camo. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking over you guys. I'm looking over you guys. We're through here. Careful. Look at that, right? Just score. Just score. Me up, me up. Yo, and top dip, top dip, top dip. Two shot in blue. Two there. Two guys blue. On camo, on camo. Three shots. Camo. Bottom mid, bottom mid. Flowers, flowers. Still top mid, guys. Top mid, top mid. We're good. Live, 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 live. Let's push LR. Yo, we should push LR. We should push LR. I'm looking for Gilmore. Cable's sitting dead. No, 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 no. We should not push LR. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Push gold. Let's score. Let's score. One guy has four also. Yeah, Malone and Yard, guys. He's gonna try to go top gold. Malone and Yard. Yeah, he's gonna try to go top gold. That's four. S4. Look, that's four. Look top of yellow for Zane. Watch for Yeah. Yo, Matt, back up a little bit. That's way top, top gold, top gold. Top gold. I pulled down one. Here. Top gold. One shot, mark it. One shot, mark it in the corner. Bobby, Bobby. Still, there's also one driveway. Yeah, mark it, mark it. Jumping up, jumping back up top gold right now. Yo, driveway, driveway with Kimo. I just saw him. It's on me, on me. Driveway, driveway and loop. Driveway and loop. They're going glass right now, and one guy's sitting on the right. go glass. driveway. Go. One guy's going out bottom mid. He goes going out bottom mid. Up gold as well. He said he was driveway. Top gold, top gold. Do we need help, Zane, guys? I'm going to enjoy you. I'm going to go back to Zane right now. One's driveway, driveway legend. Yeah, one guy in yard. Under top gold, one shot. You turn weak, Nico. Two shot, you turn. Top mid, top mid. Two shot, you turn. I'm about to lift up Zane. About to lift up Zane. Silo, guys, silo, guys. How are we? Yeah, and I think top mid, I think top mid. Could be S4. You're yeah, pushing my flower door. Look at flowers. He has thrust on me, he has thrust here. No, silo, silo with light, silo with mid light, silo with mid light. Shoulder weak, silo with mid light. Top of weak, silo with mid I got one, I got one. Silo with mid light, silo with LR. I got two, I got two. Top mid, top mid, eco. And LR, LR weak. Silo, silo by himself. Kill this silo, guys. Kill silo. LR hall, LR hall. I'm one shot. They're going to spawn, guys. They're going to spawn. Back up, back up, Joey. You turn absolute. And so do I. Top gold, weak. Top gold, top gold. You want yard? Priest, two shot. Priest, two shot. Mark it weak. Absolute mark it. One bullet under top gold. We got, gold. we got your hotel, hotel week. Hotel. Right, okay, one time, one time, one time, one time. Hey, chill for a second. I died. I died. For a second. There was a guy top gold, Jay. Is there a snipe? There's a snipe. Getting top gold. I'm making it. One guy sniped to posters. You threat to be up soon. One guy posters. Just snipe, right? Let's go. Last season, Optic Gaming were toppled out. The top six placement, one of their worst they had the entire season. All that stands between them and the grand finals now are these pesky spacemen. Uh, but they're not going anywhere. Bounds got the shot. Bounds got the camouflage, excuse me. And he's looking to collapse on the shock rifle. Yeah, Space Station's starting to take control of this one now. And it all actually stemmed from when Optic had a little bit of control and they gave away the shock down bottom middle. And now with SSG having the advantage, they're beginning to get more aggressive. They're beginning to up the pace here. They don't want to allow this to be a standoff. They don't want to allow Optic to start to set up. The kill lead is now 12. 
and Optic need to find a way to wrestle their way back into this game. It cannot be trades. It has to be an all four dead to give them control once more. Legend gets dead zone. Trying to stay alive on Prius. Formal does just enough to stay alive and avoid the headshot with the help of the thrust. To speak about can't be trades. It certainly cannot be free, clean picks. Optic do answer back with two. But they're in trouble of running out of lives to keep trading this one out. There's a reason why Space Station were undefeated on this map and mode coming into this tournament. It's the way that they move around the map and find themselves in really awkward situations to just bully their opponents. Unexpected angles and crossfire that you struggle to deal with. Where you're suddenly like, how on earth did they get there? How did they, were they spawning here? No, usually they just find an angle. They find a way, a route to get behind you. And they've been able to punish Optic over and over again to take this significant lead. It's 10 kills still, and they are 14 away from the grand final. Best teams on this map close distances very quickly, capitalize on damage even quicker than that. Eco gets Formal down to no shields. Formal rechals gets a kill he probably shouldn't have, but Legend was there to spare his bushes. Dead Zone gets the camouflage. Lucid continues to jiggle peak. Eight kills the difference. 12 kills the margin of error. This camouflage could be massive for Dead Zone and Optic Gaming. They've shut it down to what? A difference of nine now. You have to pick up these kills. He gets one, but he's not going to be able to get two, and it's still now a 10 kill lead. And SSG not only have the lead, but they've also got the shock in the hands of SS Jesus. Doesn't find the one off the spawn, but they now know where Optic Gaming are, so they can begin to reposition themselves and find those angles that I was talking about. Set the ambush, wait for Optic to finally push, and then you pounce. Light your candles. This SSG could be about to go a little bit Old Testament here. Dead zone and formal, not moving an inch, not willing to give up any information. Trippy tries to make the cross. Gets there successfully, gets hunted down, gets traded out. Numbers favor now Optic Gaming. The issue is they have so little lives left to play with. Damage is being done, Legends in no man's land. Tries to scamper, tries to scamper away. He gets cut down. Lucid's in trouble on Prius. Lucid just about survives, but he needs help and he needs it quick. He does need help, seven kill game, maybe get a six kill game. Optic are closing the gap, five kill game. And they are slowly but surely worming their way back into this one. It all had to happen from that push over towards blue as well. If they had pushed out and gone all four dead, it was game over. 45 to 40, still life for the green wall. Four kills in it now as Legend, down in bottom middle, looking to try and listen to those call outs. Camo is coming up too. If Optic can get a couple of kills and get the camouflage, this is still game on. It's still series on, but Legend gets the flank, and alongside the rest of the squad, they make it 47. Legend creates the opening, forges a path for his team. Eco falls with the camouflage. It's a four kill game. Bounds isolated in blue. Trippy gets one. Bound doesn't seem to know which way to turn. Trippy's got the thrust. Formal's coming in through the window. Bound's in big two trouble. Bound goes down. It's a two kill game. And Optic can start to believe. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Optic Gaming suddenly find themselves back into this game. And that's why they've been unbeaten on Slayer so far this tournament. They always find a way. And once more between these two teams, so little separates the two. Dead Zone goes down. Trippy tried to get over the cover fire. Uh-oh. Legend's there again, forging another opening, creating even more chaos. Legend still got Trippy down to no shield. Trippy falls. Two kill game. SSG need one. Eco falls. Yeah. But now he's gone down. But it does not matter because Legend stands. And he stands proud because SSG are able to slam home the final kill. They take down Optic Gaming. And they will progress to the grand final here in what was a very hotly contested winner's final. Such little margins to separate the two. It was a one kill game in the end. 50 to 49. 
Stellar got a huge kill on Garbage Truck. He made the difference. Both teams were brave. Both teams gave it their all. What an incredible winner's finals we have just seen. And we've still got more Halo action to come. I can't quite believe that Optic were down by 12. And they pulled that one back to just a one kill difference. But it does show that that impressive lead from SSG just about got them over the line. But in these final moments when it was so close there, you thought maybe there was something from Optic Gaming to have a miracle run in those final moments. But the clutch kill coming through, SSG confirmation, a 3-2 win to send them into the grand final here. SSG confirm they will be minimum top two. That makes it Legends best ever placement, the highest placing player from Europe of all time. We spoke about it, we might have sounded like a broken record at times, brought in to make the difference. He had the most damage in the lobby, in that final Slayer. And he could be all they need. Well, boy, did he make a difference. And someone else who makes a difference, although a different one, maybe behind enemy lines, is on the stage with Blaze. Take it away. All right. Esports Arena, show some love to Space Station Gaming as they move on to the finals. But the job is not done yet, coach, okay? But let's talk about the series. You guys played six maps in this five-game series, but what was going on in your head on that last layer? What was the game plan to close this one out? I mean, we practiced really hard coming into this event. You know, the guys are extremely talented. We've had a few heartbreakers in the past on Plaza Slayer or, or Solitude Slayer before, so we knew as long as we play our game, we're capable of winning here, and, and we just did that. You definitely did do that, okay? And now here, coaching this new Space Station Gaming roster, this is the first time I get a chance to really talk to you in depth about it. How proud are you of these boys, of how they just keep, you know, raising that ceiling with the little amount of time y'all got practicing with Legend? I mean, Legend is a different beast. He is one of the best players I've ever seen, arguably the best player in the game right now as well. And I think he's finally getting the, the respect and recognition he deserves. He's a first place champion type player, and I'm excited to see him get his first win. And you know what? I want to give Legend a, just a little bit more respect because he put out the most damage in that last map to get the highest placing of any European player on the major Halo stage. How awesome is that? Because I know you've been around Halo for a long time for him to be able to do that. I mean, in Halo as well, especially when you're looking at the top few teams here, like we knew our series with Optic was going to be a bloodbath. They're incredibly talented. I've known these guys for decades at this point. Um, so we know, like, no, no matter what it was, it's going to be a hard-fought battle here. And Legend coming out, he's going to be one to remember for a long time as well. Definitely will. Lastly, I saw yellow, a lot of yellow towels in this crowd. What do you want to say to the Space Station Gaming fans as you guys get ready for the finals? I mean, you know, we're coming in. We, our backs are against the wall here. Obviously, the Optic fans are incredible fans, and much respect to all of them. But shout out to all the SSG people keeping it strong. We hear you guys out there, and we're going for the win. They're going for the win. That's going to do it for us on the stage. Lot, take us away. Thank you so much to Blaze there. Wow, what a matchup. Optic and SSG were. We have to talk about Legend first and foremost. This young man, a historic moment for Europe, a historic moment for him. He's so young as well. And what an incredible, incredible change has come his way in terms of his career, not only to be picked up by a North American team, but to be picked up by a team who were gunning for that championship title. And quite honestly, in the postseason, we knew that was what was going to be happening. SSG making a change. They weren't just changing for anything. They were changing to take a win. They've done that against Optic Gaming in their own house and legend is looking divine with this roster he was really progressing things with this team and making it very very aggressive and very hard for optic to answer back yeah as we take a look at some of the replays here it's just incredible to me how legend opens up the game for bound bound just looks so much more comfortable and it's honestly the selfless play by legend pushing up aggressively creating space putting down that massive damage that was talked about and allowing bound to be free both of them just look so good together 
Yeah, I'm so happy you did mention Bound and Legend, because obviously when you look at the overall stats, it's going to lead more towards Bound being that kill leader, being that damage dealer, but we knew what to expect when you see Bound on this stage. This is the first time we've seen Legend in the Winners Bracket Finals of this magnitude when the lights are brightest. So definitely want to give a shout out uh, to, to Legend really stepping it up and really, really stepping into his own. Legend, he's one of the best in the game right now. I think everybody knows him. He certainly is. And we're looking right now back at the highlights. And of course, that Tide Slayer, that was the epitome of good Halo. These two teams couldn't have been closer at that moment in time. And I've got to say, there is something to be said about the fact that Penguin in that moment did manage to get that final kill to take them across the board there and keep things really close in the series. You know, Active, I I'm kind of wondering, is that because he knows the team really well? He was actually excelling so much in stats uh, for that game. I and I just kind of think that he might know his team better, uh, knowing what they want to do in terms of spots and the way that they want to play. Yeah, we've seen close games like that on recharge where maybe it might be a close Slayer and SSG are known to make that full cap push, but this time they were a bit hesitant and dead zone. 20 kills to end that game. He makes them pay with their hesitancy. Gets that kill to clean it up. It did indeed. Uh, we were looking at the strongholds there. Optic looking so good, so primed on that strongholds. But SSG managing to answer back at so many different times, take back control. And that's really what we saw across the entire series from SSG. Their game plan was so good against Optic. And as we're looking at the stats now going down the board, Space Station Gaming, who really stood out to you in terms of having a stellar game? Well, yeah, like I said before, you know, I think when you look at the overall stats, it's going to lean towards bound. Most kills in the lobby doing that absolute damage, just a bit behind Stellar. But I still got, I still got to give Legend his flowers. The lights were brightest. He came in, and again, he's that overall player. They're not leaning on Legend to just be a slayer, to just be objective, or to just be uh, a. a disruptive player with his speed. They want him to do everything, and they really have given him that spotlight, given him that podium to be the best version of himself that he can be. What a great thing for him as well to make history. That is so much pressure on your back, especially entering a squad that number two coming into this event and probably one, obviously one of the best teams in the HCS. So having all that pressure, making history, when it matters the most, that's what makes a superstar in my eyes. Well, next, it's going to matter the most to Optic and FaZe, who will have a rematch. Let's take a look at the bracket right now to find out what happened just moments ago. Of course, we just saw the winner's finals, Optic. They will go down to the elimination bracket in Space Station Gaming. They are in your grand final position, waiting for one of the other two big three to come back up and meet them. This is going to be just so intense. I can't even get over how this is all shaken out, really. I, I loved what I've seen also from Shopify Rebellion in the elimination bracket going up against FaZe, a very hard for match. And Tony, when you're looking back at that one and looking at the way that FaZe handled Shopify Rebellion, I feel like there was a game plan for the Rebels. I think they knew what FaZe wanted to do. They were actually countering so well and at many points leading the way, especially in one of FaZe's best maps, Aquarius CTF. FaZe, they did not have an answer. Will they have an answer this time for Optic Gaming, do you think? I mean, it's going to be tough, to be honest with you, going back towards that winner's bracket, the way the way that Optic won. I'm not, I'm not surprised that Optic won, but I will say I'm surprised that it was a 3-0. Optic definitely looked dominant when coming from that winner's bracket, and now when you get dropped down to the elimination, you would think you're more hungry. You want, you want to continue exactly where you left off. I don't want to count phase out just yet, but it must be tough knowing you literally were just swept yesterday. Yeah, honestly, being one of the best teams in the world, everyone's going to be targeting you. Everyone's going to be doing VOD review on the games that you're best at. And that's exactly what happened with FaZe. The fact that they're still coming out swinging and the fact that we're going to be able to watch them potentially make, you know, uh, another appearance in the Grand Finals is kind of crazy to me to stay hungry after a world championship, that's massive. It is massive indeed, and a massive matchup to go alongside it. It is make it or break it time, folks. We're gonna head to a quick break. When we come back, a massive rematch happening on that main stage. FaZe versus Optic coming your way right after this. This is the world's most advanced processor. In entertainment, its rendering speeds render other processors obsolete. It drives the future of autonomous driving, powers cloud services for billions, helps 
change the course of climate change. Connects communities of gamers anytime, anywhere. And uses AI to accelerate disease detection and cures. We make the world's most advanced processors. But only with your vision can we advance the world. AMD, together we advance. Hey, guess what? New year means a new optic scuff design for a new controller. Check out this sexy design. It's a nod to the original OG logo and a great way to rep the green wall. Choose between the Reflex for PS5, the Instinct for Xbox, and the brand new Envision for PC gaming. Guess what? Scuff saw your comments and they're now selling the base plates separately for the Envision and the Instinct for $29.99. Sorry, I'm kind of busy. Kind of not. Leave a message. Yeah, the mega red boys here, cinnamon. Flow tastes sweet like cinnamon. Open up doors, I'm a gentleman. Fuel top floor, I'm still staying ahead of them. Running on fumes and adrenaline. Do what I do best. Huh? Can't rush in like a roulette. You can't name a better duet. Huh? Don't ask questions. Trying to figure out what sound. Don't worry about what next. Just know we got now.
AES 2024 Kickoff Arlington Major is presented by AMD, Scuff, and Corduroys. Welcome back to Championship Sunday here at the HCS Kickoff Major live from Arlington, Texas, hosted by Optic Gaming. And Optic Gaming, they're getting primed and ready to go on that main stage very shortly, going up against a familiar foe, which is FaZe. FaZe on that roster, they are out for blood, they are out for revenge, but Optic Gaming, they want to do exactly what they did yesterday to those boys. They want to 3-0, get it over quickly, and get right back into that grand final spot. I'm joined on the desk by Tim and Tony. Lads, Optic versus FaZe. It's a tale as old as time. Last time, I think we were all a little bit shook about how that went down. We were expecting closer of a series. Things didn't go quite to plan for FaZe, I think, for some of the fans in here, but I'm sure the Optic fans were pretty happy with how the boys swept them. Tim, how are you feeling about this matchup? Honestly, I think FaZe came out a little flat yesterday. Even in their victory today in the interview, they said they came out flat today. So FaZe obviously not playing to the potential that they want to play to. I'm looking for that to change, though. FaZe, have, they're going to be coming in angry into this series. This rematch is going to be a lot different than what we saw previously. While I got you active, I feel like there's a couple of members who need to step up again. When we go back to that Optic series yesterday, Renegade and Frosty, not their usual superstar potential being shown here. What do you need to see from those? Right, Renegade and Frosty, you see multiple times not winning those individual pips, not winning those 1v1s, and honestly, two of the best players in the game. So you would expect that, but I think it had a little bit to do with Lucid and his 1.6 KD versus FaZe in that previous series. Today, though, so it's a little bit of a different story. Lucid in that previous series versus SSG, a 0.88 KD. So maybe having a little bit of a rougher day today, FaZe can take full advantage of that. Indeed, and we need to see an Uno reverse here for Optic Gaming in terms of that kind of series we just saw with SSG. Lucid definitely needs to step it up. We know he can. We know he absolutely is capable, especially against FaZe. And Tony, in terms of Optic Gaming, what do you need to see out of them? How can they pick themselves up right now and get right back into the mix? Well, I mean, you're just fresh off of 3 0 this very squad in the phase. So, I mean, you know, keep that same energy going into this series. You know, obviously, it's going to be totally different. I'll take a look at the series layout and uh, things not really favoring either one of these teams. I'm sure we'll go more into that later on, but just keep that same energy. You've already beaten them one time in the winner's bracket. Now that you're down in the lower bracket, why can't you do it again? Uh, indeed, and you mentioned the series layout there. I do know King of the Hill being map one, both teams are pretty damn good at that one. So that should be absolutely fire. We're looking at right now at their records. And Tony, what are you noticing in terms of this? What can the people expect? I mean, it's, it's the entire series, not just the King of the Hill. It is just about even across the board, especially with the first three maps and game types being totally different than what we saw for the winner's bracket, which I think somewhat favors phase. You're not going to get swept, hopefully. Both teams are undefeated as far as King of the Hill. Both teams have a very similar record in Slayer. And it's the same thing with capture the flag only one game separated these two so so it's it's going to be exciting it's supposed to be evenly matched neither one of these teams really having a complete advantage when it comes to the series layout indeed now there's something to be said about momentum we've mentioned this on the desk quite often and active with momentum yes we just had optic play ssg but what is that momentum going to be like for them coming off of a loss as opposed to a win phase obviously in the back trying to keep warm trying to stay with it but there is a bit of a difference here. So Optic, can they ride a momentum after a loss? Is that a thing? You know, mentally, how, where are they? Where are both our teams? See, honestly, this is something that Optic has worked on so much, even with the new change, right? He, they've worked on being consistent when their backs are up against the wall. And if you looked right at the end of the last match, it was Lucid that looked to Formal directly in his eyes and said, it's all good. We got it next. And that's exactly what you got to hear out of, out of a player in Lucid. You gotta get that confidence. Him saying that to you, it builds you up just a bit. It lets you forget that last match and go to the match that matters the most. Now, both these teams backs up against the wall. Let's see who comes out on top. I feel like for Optic Tony, Dead Zone was a huge, huge factor for that phase series. I feel like he was just getting in there. He knew exactly what he needed to do with the team. He was pushing really hard and making some serious game-changing plays there. Dead Zone, do you think he's also gonna be an outlier for Optic right now in this series? 
Yeah, even if it doesn't exactly show in the stats, you'll definitely see as far as their movement, as far as their pushes, this team will go as dead zone go, because you notice every time Optic do feel comfortable to push up and get aggressive, which we kind of slighted them a little bit last year by being a little bit too slow, but whenever they do feel comfortable to speed it up, it's usually with dead zone catching up to two players and for them pushing. So even if it doesn't exactly show within the stats, I think dead zone is a big reason why this team is comfortable upping the pace. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Tony. Listening to the Eavesdrop podcast, uh, of course, with Hex, he, he interviewed uh, Dead Zone and basically asked him, how's the chemistry on this roster? And Dead Zone said, when we're good, this is the best team I've been on in terms of chemistry. I feel so good. But obviously, there's those bumpy roads as well. When you make changes, it just takes a bit of time to adjust, and someone who hasn't made a change is FaZe. Of course, and in terms of chemistry that you talk about here, Active, the Kings on the screen right now, they bring so much chemistry to their rosters. There's a lot of leadership on our screen right now, both performing so well currently in this weekend. On one side, we've got Snakebite looking amazing throughout every single series they've been in. Even against Optic, he looked pretty darn good. And then you've got Formal, really has just grown the entire weekend, and right now is seemingly unstoppable, apart from obviously SSG, but looking so, so good still individually against them. What do you make of this two comparison? When you're talking about snake bite, you can pretty much expect that when it comes to the wire, when you have those very close games, he's going to step up, right? But when it comes to formal, we're talking about controller player of the year. This guy's a champion. He's been in these positions before, and he's going to look to bring Optic to a victory. He certainly is. Tony, on the side of FaZe, we liked what we saw with them in Shopify Rebellion. You know, what were the moments, the glimmers of hope, the, the flow states that we saw them enter against Shopify Rebellion that you want to see carry into this series? I mean, it was, just, it was definitely a team effort when it came to phase like obviously you had players that stepped up in individual moments but what had to happen was a full team effort to go after a team like Shopify who up until then were undefeated when it came to Slayer going into that game five it really was a team effort in that matchup and I think same thing going here to Optic you better come fully loaded. Nobody can get, can lag behind. I think on both sides of the stage, it's going to be a full team effort needed to carry this dub across the board. This is your elimination final. FaZe versus Optic once again. Make sure you cheer for your teams, folks. Let's meet FaZe and Optic. Welcome Arlington to a Sunday afternoon. Three teams left in our tournament and we have an elimination bracket finals on our hands. We have the biggest rivalry in esports, Optic Gaming versus FaZe Clan. I'm joined by Dave Walsh, the legend himself, and it's an honor to even get an opportunity to be able to cast over these two, especially in this moment in the Green Wall's own building. After losing in the winner's bracket finals, Optic trying to rebound. Dave, what makes you think Optic are going to replicate something very similar to what we saw yesterday in the winner's bracket that makes you think Optic can beat FaZe Clan twice in one tournament? I mean, I think Optic can beat FaZe Clan twice in one tournament. I don't think it can be done in that same fashion. The the odds of these teams 3 0 each other in that sort of fashion like we saw yesterday was an absolute statement from Optic Gaming. You know FaZe Clan went back to the drawing board. They reviewed the VODs. You heard that from Snakebite in his last interview saying, 
We saw what went wrong. We made some slight adjustments and we're ready for today. So I don't think we'll be seeing any three O's, but with these two squads, I'm just ready to see them battle out here. We're gonna kick it off though on King of the Hill Solitude. Well, we've seen two series today, two game fives today. Can we make it three up there, man? Would that be special for everyone in the building? I know this building is packed with Optic Gaming fans. I know FaZe fans are in there somewhere. These players are gonna wanna hear you roar for them when they're making plays out there as we load up into game one. Yeah, as we saw in those stats earlier, both these teams have not dropped the King of the Hill mode yet this event. Which one is going to make that first misstep? I know we saw a tie in the winner's bracket finals, but I guarantee you this will not be a tie. Renegade <laughs> made his way to camo, found that camo, got away with his life. And now let's see what the demon can do with the first camo of the series. An easy kill, it's a perfect kill on the dead zone. This is already looking so dangerous here from Renegade. Enemy One thing that I thought was kill. super interesting as I was looking at Renegade's stats from the last time these two teams matched up is he had the second to worst KD ratio out of all eight players in the game. However, he had the most damage. So whether or not showing in the KD stats, he is doing work across the map. Can FaZe figure out ways to find kills early on in this series to gain some momentum? A beautiful kill on to Renegade with that camo from Dead Zone. From Renegade's point of view, we were able to see now we're on board with Lucid. The repulse of the grenade keeps him full shield as his teammate acquires some hill time. Optic already back in the lead. And look at this. Already spot out, spotted out two players in driveway. That now means FaZe are going to have to rotate to a new location. Look at this. They're already looking towards gold. They're looking towards market. They're looking towards glass. They know that those players are going to reposition because if that first push was not successful on driveway, they are not going to stay there. Lucid finds his first death of the game. He had such a big series yesterday against FaZe. He literally took over. It was the MVP Lucid we know is capable. The world champion Lucid we know he has in him. Can he replicate that level of play? He is starting this series off so well. Now we're back on board with the Demon himself. Top yard taking some grenade damage, but dealing some more damage out to the Optic members. Optic in a very bad situation. Great shots by Dead Zone will help that, but FaZe will win the trades and get in the hill. My Spartan does not move like that. You saw how he's one shot there, bottom center towards you. I die in that situation nine out of nine times. I've seen it, all, how... I've seen it all nine times, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he is not kidding. But Renegade somehow have the movement, not only just get over to dip, but move on the way over towards Enemy top gold, do so much damage. But despite great movement, despite staying alive longer, Trippy securing this hill. Optic so close to capping the first hill in this game number one. Snakebite steps in for just a second, but Snakebite gets deleted. The teamwork of Optic stands strong. Trippy back in the hill. Trippy puts Optic Gaming up 1-0. Now the rotation to yards, what you want to pay attention to. Trippy makes his way so quickly with that jump, still using that camo to transition control for Optic to the second hill. And look at this, this perimeter defense. Trippy and Optic are not just waiting in yard for FaZe to coordinate their push. They went over it. They swept out market completely. Now they know all the pushes are coming from LR and from driveway. You know it, but can you stop it? FaZe Clan find the door. They kick it open. They control the hill now. They find the first pick on the Trippy as well. They should get some significant time here. Let's see if they can tie it up. And look at this difference in strategy. Last time when Optic had control of the arc, they pushed over and took care, took hold of market. You see what FaZe are doing here. They took control of LR and Luke. Which strategy is going to play out better? Well, I think they're both viable. It's going to be who hits their shots and who gets the kills. Immediately, somehow, Optic are able to come off spawn, retake yard control, and continue scoring the point. FaZe unable to hold a setup for longer than one spawn rotation. That's got to worry you Ooh. if you're a FaZe fan. Snakebite missing those shots right there could be crucial. Formal wins a big pivotal battle that could allow his team some more significant time here on Hill 2. The old stick the crouch move. It works every so often. I feel like I see it mostly from Boo Boo Doo Boo, but we also see it from every player out the stage from time to time. Another push from FaZe. Royal 2 does not expect Formal to be hiding under yard. He's able to get great damage. A trade? No. Somehow, Formal stays alive. One-on-one -on -one against Frosty. Can't quite get another kill, but Formal doing so much. Somehow, FaZe still trading out successfully. And that tie-breaking fight goes in favor of FaZe. They have spawns, and look at this flank. He knows the push is coming from LR. He gets the first him. pick on Lucid, but gets taken out by Trippy. It's going to go back in the hands of Optic. Royal 2, last one close to the hill. 
gets damage, but not enough. One shot may make all the difference on this hill. That shot is cleaned up by Renegade. Somehow, though, Optic with the third camo of the game, Formal snuck away with it, makes his way up through LR. There's going to be pressure coming from Yar, but there's a player behind him. Frosty spots him with camo. Formal with shots, but Frosty sits him down. Usually when you have camo, you're expected to be the one taking the first shot, but right there, Frosty's spotting him out like you said. And this one is anyone's hill. This isn't trading back and forth as much as you, as you see, like in something like bottom center or closer towards hotel. Instead, you can get a round of kills and hold this whole area entirely. So Frosty and the base clan are not out of this hill just yet. Optic know that this is their one push to break another phase setup. Unfortunately for Optic, Trippy gets taken down. Frosty looking to be aggressive towards you. The thrust can't allow him to get an angle on the kill. Dead Zone being such a difficult target, but multiple members of Optic across the map falling. Lucid tries to help. Lucid gets erased. Uh Optic all on respawn will not have an opportunity to get back to this hill. This game will be tied up. They are going to have to give this one up and try to go for kills and control. If Optic tried to just desperately push across the map, they are going to lose a significant chunk in hill number three. And just like we called out there, Wes, it is now a tie game, but all four members of FaZe died there. Another great rotation from Optic to give them some early time on the hill. That could be so beneficial to how you're able to play, especially now that there's two minutes left on the clock. This is a very contestable hill. How long will this hill last? Optic have intentions of pushing this one through fast. Already over a third of the way. Yeah, getting so much time here. Trippy uncertain of where the battle is. Finds two members up here the snipe. Little bait switch there from Frosty and Snake Bites gonna secure the kill and keep them both alive. I believe the term has bit off a little bit more than you could chew with that push. And with that, snipe control and map control will go over to face. Still members being a nuisance over towards blue. It's formal once again, winning a pivotal fight. Unfortunately, he's cleaned up. Dead Zone able to trade out that formal kill. So a great job by formal to be a distraction. Renegade now trying to capitalize on Dead Zone revealing his location. Renegade with this camera wants to stay alive, but overextends by the mid thrust forward. Still a nuisance. No one can quite finish Dead Zone though, and somehow Dead Zone is still impacting the game until Frosty rips his head off with the shock. Dead Zone did so much right there, taking out his former teammate Renegade when they used to team together on SSG, staying alive, getting a second kill, and just buying so much time for his team to move across the map. Despite FaZe having control there, they got zero time in that hill. But look, this is what I was talking about. A minute now on the clock, half of the hill towards Optic. FaZe have no progression. This may be the final point scored in this game if FaZe do not find a way to get this capture. Optic are fine playing time with this much of an advantage. Yeah, they're just gonna worry about kills, get the slaves, because this game could very much be decided by this hill right here. No need to desperate it. This is also gonna be one of those situations where you almost don't wanna scrap up the last couple seconds if there's a significant amount of time left on the clock, but I don't think time is going to be uh, in abundance here at the end of this game, Wes. Not, not at all, 38 seconds on the clock. Optic Gaming fighting from the hill with all of these trades going on has benefited them immensely. 60% of the hill now in their favor. The point is what matters. 30 seconds starting to tick as the hill becomes neutralized. Phase over towards the side can deny this hill, but they have so much work to do as far as progression. If they want to be the ones that score this point, they will need to nearly play perfect. Optic are going to have a couple of members fall here. Phase will have map control. They need to stay in the hill. They realize it's just going to be a full setup here. Phase are not in a scrappy situation. Sure, they grab a little bit of time here and there if they wanted to, but they need to over-index and slain if they want to guarantee this hill. This is a dangerous time here for Renegade. Look at this, before he takes any damage, pushing over towards Market, gonna try to stay alive as long as possible for his team to spawn, but Trippy, or I believe that's Dead Zone, going over and sniffing him out. The teamwork of Optic, the flooding of Optic, the blue is perfect. There's three players from Optic in the hill right now. They know if they fight from the hill, they will win this game. That player does not Expose himself at all, so it forces oh. Snake Bites to push. He's unable to push, and now five seconds are on the clock, and the hill is moved. Enemy team took Gotta play a little bit of something called perfect Halo here. If Baze want to cap this fourth hill and just tie it, but this is gonna be a little tough. One of the more exposed hills here. All these players from Optic can go towards bomb center, or they can take their time to go through a flank route, just like we saw from Formal. Melee has come out, three players go down, and that's gonna be game number one. Game. Going in favor of Optic Gaming. Game one goes to Optic. It came down to time and the scrappiness of both of these teams. The 
the turnover of every single one of those hills is why that game went so long with so few captures. Neither team really able to hold a setup. It benefits Optic at the end because that third hill, Dave, they were playing from the hill while trading kills, and that minor progression that you continue to stack on top of each other gave them the advantage they needed. You're like in the past, this player dead zone's been called out for maybe not getting as many kills, but who's leading the scoreboard right there? That's gonna be 20 kills in favor of dead zone, making an absolute statement, trying to get his team back in the grand finals. You have to believe dead zone's dream is to join this team and start on what they believe is a championship tour this year in 2024. That series in the winner's finals needs to be erased from your memory. Your dream is still achievable and he is showing that he is one step further in the direction of a rematch in the grand finals. Dead zone leading the lobby and kills. And now we focus on game two. It's gonna be a slayer. Optic Gaming getting such a convincing win yesterday and then winning game one. What does that do to their confidence against this phase clan roster going to the rest of the series? I mean, starts them off, starts them off on the right path. The one thing that's still just mind blowing to me is how heavily focused both these teams were on slays. They did not want to get into an all four down scenario. I think they just respect the other team so much that they're saying, we do not want to let them get their full setup, their full power over index on the slain side. Obviously in game number two, Slain's the name of the game, but I was still just overwhelmed and surprised by how much Slain we saw in game one. Aquarius Slayer is the name of the game for game two. And Dave, when you're on FaZe's side and your perspective, you come all the way from the elimination bracket after what Optic did to you in the winner's bracket, the beatdown that occurred yesterday, that 3-0. To lose game one in such a close fashion, two to one, it goes down to time. Are you frustrated going into game two, or does that stall your the momentum you built through that elimination bracket run? No, I mean, we're talking about FaZe here. They have countless tournament wins. These guys have just the perfect mental game. They're able to take it game by game. They can lose a very close one and bounce right back. So I'm not worried about their mental here. I'm just worried about them being able to try to stop Optic. Right now, it's not a, a case of, is FaZe playing poorly? Is something going wrong there? It's just great play from this optic side taking out that game number one optic responding to that loss in the winner's bracket final so well to take down phase in game one game two will it be a different story there's an overshield bottom pink it's newly added to the map there's a thrust top middle and those are going to be some key pivotal items that you really want to see help dictate the outcome of this game looks like we're going to have a little bit of a reset here the battle, though, for Camo was early won by FaZe. You saw Renegade had... He just, like, ran up and grabbed it. That never works for me when I'm playing ranked these days. I get yeah, lit you, up. Yeah, usually there's three people <laughs> staring at me, so not quite sure what the communication... Maybe it was a counter-strat counter, counter strat situation where you know what the other team does so familiar, right? But I feel like in the mid-game, it was continuously trippy that was picking up those camouflages, dead zone, and they were being such a nuisance, creating so much havoc with those camos that gave them that opportunity to, to just get a little bit more hill time, to have that map control, to win that game in, this, or in the end. This overshot is going to be pivotal for FaZe, and I think that was something we saw them struggle trying to acquire yesterday when they played Optic, where power-ups and power weapons. What are FaZe Clan failing to do right when it comes to these situational fights that they need to figure out a way to win as these power-ups are coming up. I mean, there's different ways you can look at, especially when it, when it comes to an overshield where whoever grabs that generally can pop that and get the advantage. You know, camos, camos in a, a power-up where you have to give it some more space and be able to activate you it stay alive. and get away with it. You have to stay alive, whereas overshield allows you to stay alive. Yeah. Now, some ways you can kind of look at that is sometimes it's kind of like these layers of onions of how close you are to that power-up. Some people are right next to it. They're going to be the ones that can first grab that, but then the people that can counter them are the ones that are just a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and sort of this mind game of like, how far in proximity do you have to be to be a part of the fight, but also not be flanked by the opposing team? And that's just sort of that mind game and understanding where, what's the spawns? Keeping situation. tabs on everyone. Yeah, keeping tabs on everyone, just having a good macro view of the map, saying I can be right here, do as much damage, and not be at risk to help on this power up. And so there's times we see some of these players that are just, in effect, not part of that power up fight. And sometimes people are just crowded in and getting killed right before it comes up. I can promise you, someone who is messing 
with the tabs on everyone issue for FaZe right now has got to be Dead Zone, the newly acquired player for Optic. He has completely changed their play style, in my opinion, to a much more aggressive roster. We're on board with Dead Zone in game two, and he's already making his way to that overshoot. I'm glad you highlighted that aggressiveness. I felt like there was times last year where we would watch Optic, and it felt like they were either just a little too reserved or scared. They would all want to just run together in one area here on Aquarius. Whereas we're gonna have to see if that changes oh here. Oh my god. Yeah, that peak shot from Royal too, just using that heat wave to negate that OS completely. So despite OS going in the hands of Optic, FaZe able just to delete that advantage. The jiggle peaks, the micro movement for Royal 2 allows him to be such a difficult target, doing so much damage with that heat wave. Overshield negated. It is still a 4 to 3 lead for Optic Gaming right now. The map is split in half. A couple of members of Optic trying to push the utility closet right now. One's flanking car one, a beautiful job by Dead Zone. Great job by Dead Zone there. The other person we're going to have to really keep our eye on in this map is going to be Renegade. One thing I was so impressed with him when it came to Worlds 2023, it was just his ability to be kind of that flanker. And like I said, have that delicate dance, being a factor and charging across the map so that you can help your team collapse on somebody, but also staying far enough away where you're not just getting two on one, giving them that free first kill in a neutral scenario. Snakebite is by himself here on this flag right now. He is playing in a cheeky corner, playing it slow, and for information, none being given to him at the time. But Optic, well, they expect him to be here. They've actually chosen to rotate across the map. It looks like a couple of members will be trying to push pink, but Snakebite doing a phenomenal job of slowing the game down and anchoring the space. Partially slowing it down, anchoring it, but also just allowing someone from Optic to make a mistake. Sometimes it's early game. Oh. People are just going to try to charge across, try to make something happen. And that veteran leadership just saying, all right, I can I can just allow windows of opportunity for somebody to overstep. Someone just make that first little mistake and get that first kill. We're not seeing it from his point of view, but Tommy Wilson is frying right now. Lucid with a beautiful five on the snake bite there. Gets his team a little bit of control right now. 11 to 9 the score line. The second overshield already coming up. And right now, Optic have so many members down. Pick one. Trippy tries to go for it. He gets taken down. Dead zone erased as well. FaZe not only get the kills, but they get the overshield and map control with it. Those little engagements, exchanges back and forth are such an important fight. And right there, FaZe not only just winning it, but also getting to walk away with this OS. Trading damage right back and forth there. I like that from Dead Zone onto Snake Bite. Sometimes teams and players just avoid the OS completely, and somebody at some point has to fight them. Snake Bite gets caught out, having two members try to push into the base and get taken down. Phase tries to push the respawners of Optic. It fails miserably. Optic have not given up a death since that push. They've been able to stagger the respawners of Phase, and now they look to push into the base themselves. And here comes the charge. They have the numbers advantage, but a great grenade equalizes so much right there. In the end, a two for two, Royal Two Snake Fight, Dead Zone and Trippy all go into the respawn screen. And all of a sudden, you see Optic kind of on the back foot, all trapped in this util. Can Trippy become a part of the fight quick enough? Answer is no. His teammates fall, and now he's just going for cleanup. Cleanups he might get. He only gets one, though. Snake Bite with some perfect shots on the Trippy will erase that flank from impacting too much. It is still a five kill game. So, although FaZe Clan did trade successfully there, they are playing catch up still. 23 to 18. Make it 19. World 2 with a kill in the feed on the Lucid. Snake Bite spots two players on bridge, and the bandit teamwork from Optic erases Snake Bite. One thing that's so brilliant about that play right there that we saw the double team on the Snake Bite for was. Two members of Optic, they focused on a faraway spot, knowing that somebody that's an anchor on phase are going to overextend because they have the numbers advantage. So they're saying, hey, as soon as this person pops up towards top center or bottom center, melt this target far away, and then we can focus on the nearby threats. Three members of FaZe go down, 27-20 Optic Gaming using phenomenal teamwork to continue to build this lead back up to six now. Overshield is up in the hands of Trippy. I want to go into a listen in with Optic Gaming and see how they treat the mid game. One shot. 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 One shot.
There was a guy still fridge. He was fridge. Playing with thrust. One shot goes. Here, Joey. Here, Joey. Hiding in fridge. 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 Hiding I'm hiding here, guys. I'm just waiting. I'm mocking you, too. I'm mocking if you want. I'm mocking if you do. I'm mocking if you do. I'm going around here. Yellow closet. Yellow closet. Yellow gen. 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 Yellow gen.
much different story than what we saw against SSG. Optics starting to clutch these games out. The pressure not affecting them at all. World champions, we know them as. And they're showing why they want a chance to play SSG for a championship in their own house. Looking at the scoreboard again. Snake surprise, bite. surprise. We got Snake by at the top, but also dead zone for the second time in a row, leading his team in kills. I wonder if he got that name because everything he looks at just ends up dead or shot across the map. Dead zone happens to be in his reticle. Look at the damage as we take a look at the highlights, Dave. 5,800 from Snake Bite, 5,500 from Dead Zone. That is unbelievable amount of damage on a map like Aquarius with no power weapons. And we definitely didn't see, I feel like either one of them with the heat wave, it was Formal that had it the whole time. <laughs> unbelievable how those two performed in that game, but Dead Zone does just enough for Optic to have a 2-0 lead in this series. And as close as these games are, they feel like they're miles away from a grand finals at this point. They got their work cut out for them, losing two very close games here to Optic. They put themselves in a do or die situation. Reverse sweep or your tournament run ends here. And we're gonna be going into a newer mode here. A newer map, I should say, with yep. CTF Forbidden. We haven't really seen them playing this much here on the main stage. I think we've maybe only seen it once or twice on broadcast thus far. Yeah, I feel like I didn't see it much yesterday. So it's great that it finds itself as game three here in our elimination finals. Phase claim versus Optic with a map with two snipes on it. Give me that every day of the week because we know plays are start going to be made. We know how this game's going to go. Formal's going to get a snipe. Lucid's going to get a snipe. Royal 2, Frosty, they're going to pop off. Who are you looking at to have the game that either punches your ticket to a grand finals or gets you to at least a game four in this series? I mean, obviously all the pressure is here on phase at this moment in time. I mean, if Optic just keep playing how they're playing, keep on rolling through, they're gonna end up with a second 3-0, which I didn't think was possible against phase within this tournament. However, you gotta wonder here, on the phase side, who is going to step it up? When I saw Frosty and crew playing earlier today against Rebellion. I saw them playing without fear. I saw some ridiculous play. I saw them repulsing up into the air, going for snipes and hitting them. I'm not seeing that level of freedom or confidence coming out of Frosty or FaZe at this point in time. I think it's slightly because of Optic's change in play style with Dead Zone. At this point, Optic feel like they are a completely different team from last year. The pace that they are playing with clearly giving FaZe a thorn in their side. Five straight games against the world champs. And we'll see if we can make it a sixth for a perfect back-to-back -back sweep and a, a chance at a grand finals appearance. But Optic Gaming, everything they have done in these games against FaZe, even yesterday, including the two today, has been nothing short of phenomenal Halo. Yeah, I mean, these top three squads here that we have in our tournament right now, are still so insanely close. I wasn't sure if going in this event, if we were just gonna see one of these teams like FaZe just sweep everybody and just establish dominance right out the gate. Clearly not the case. All these teams so evenly matched. You've seen SSG and Optic go to game five. You're now seeing Optic edging out FaZe in this 2-0 lead potentially for a second sweep this event. Royal 2 with a higher KD ratio than formal throughout this series. But Formal with more damage, Formal with more kills. You have to think Formal being more aggressive is what that stat is showing you. And that aggressiveness is clearly being felt when we're looking at how these games are being played out. Yeah, there's just something a little different about Optic this season compared to last season. I think it's and Dead Zone. It could be Dead Zone. It could just be they've they've understood they need to get a little more aggression in their play. I felt like before there's, there's, there's this fine line between playing defensive and scared. Yes. And I feel like they almost were consistently putting themselves in spots where people weren't enabled to make plays that they saw or felt like they could just run across. It felt like a little too rigid. It felt like a little too structured. And you can't have that when things get a little wild within Halo. At times, it's always risk versus reward. And are you willing to take some risks in order to reap the rewards of what they give you? Formal pushing pink one there was a massive risk. If he gets caught out, that game is 49-49. Formal 
finds the kill though, and that risk wins the game. So formal, the rest of Optic, I like seeing them take a little bit more risk. I like seeing the aggressiveness out of them, and with that, I like seeing them play at this level of Halo because they are going to be very difficult to beat. They seem to have found them some momentum here so far throughout this elimination finals, but the job isn't done. And if anybody knows, the hardest thing to do is to close a series against FaZe. It is this Optic Gaming team. I am looking at them to not keep this door open long. This needs to be a sweep. Let's make some statements in this game three. It's gonna be forbidden CTF. There's an overshield top middle, two snipes. And you can best believe we're gonna see some headshots with those as this thing loads up. For those that are new to this map, maybe not familiar with what's the main strategy here, you're gonna be seeing these teams try to secure the other team's snipe hut. You wanna control that area as you have better viewpoints. You can control the spawns and then run the flag over towards that snipe hut slash sewer side. Royal 2, he's making his way to snipe. You already know that. Several members of FaZe choosing to push towards the snipe. No one quite going for the overshield at the early break, but it will look like Optic are in a better position at this time, unless Royal 2 has something to say about it. Yeah, Royal 2 not taking his eyes off of that until he knows one of his teammates has it in their hands. Realizing that still nobody's over at that snipe hut. There he well, spots the player, Trippy, trying to go for that OS ball. Snipe. You aren't going to get that for free. And look at this. Look at this jiggle peek. It somehow gets away with it. Lucid grabbing the OS. I believe Lucid also has the sniper. And this can be a little dangerous because when sniper's coming over that close to your flag, Royal 2 can't be that relaxed. Renegade does pick up a big kill there onto dead zone. This overshield continuing as time goes on to dwindle. A body shot from Lucid onto Royal 2 isn't good enough to acquire the kill, but it does suppress him back. Snake fight is going to look to be aggressive here. Multiple members of phase overextend towards Optic Gaming side of top middle. That has allowed them to get all of this pressure on Lucid. Lucid needs to hit the shot. The body shot shot hits, but the stick is great. The flag is on the move, and the overextension from Renegade may give phase an early lead. Optic had the better power-ups. However, they didn't put themselves in the better position. Renegade and FaZe only needed one round of slays to get that flag and move it all the way across the map. Objective efficiency, you know I love to see that. What an unbelievable flag pull as the kills are coming through from Renegade and the boys on FaZe. Since then, we'll see if Optic are able to use this map control. FaZe had to give up to cap that flag in order to get some flag moves of their own. Right now, Renegade was the last player alive. Still staying alive in his hut is a massive job by him to be a presence on the map right now because Optic would have surely pushed. And look at this difference. You saw how during that unsuspecting neutral scenario, FaZe were able to just get one round of slays, get the flagpole, and cap it without much resistance. Whereas Optic, they had three members of FaZe down and they weren't even get, able to get close to that flag. Instead, they're still giving up deaths. They're still trying to fight for their lives over here. And this overshield's just getting picked apart. Trippy taken down. Although Optic get the second overshield of the game as well, no, no kills found, no damage found from Trippy. He was by himself, and unfortunately, all the members of FaZe decided to focus on to him, so he gets taken down. A great defensive stand by FaZe, and with a 1-0 lead, plenty of time on the clock right now, but you gotta feel a lot better than any time in the series so far if you're FaZe. I can tell you right now, Renegade is looking dangerous this game. The little bit that I've seen of his POV, the times where I've seen him just flying across the map, grabbing flag right away, he's doing a little bit of everything. The other thing that also seems to be very complimentary here is, especially off the start, you saw someone like Royal 2 just holding their hut very well. Flag on the move for Optic right now. Three were down. Snake bite the last player alive. He's in the hut, but he's not going to be able to stop this. Optic are going to get this flag cap. Phase Clan coming off respawn. Optic do such a good job to find the kills. There is going to be some damage on the formal, however. Renegade trying to deny this one. Does stop it at the goal line. Is anyone there from Optic? Yes. Dead Zone punches it in. But three down for a moment in time for Optic. Can FaZe get the kills and put the squeeze on? Looks like they do. They have a lot of damage and they're pushing this towards Sewer. This is the preferred route for most of these teams. Royal Two, two running all the way down. And that is dangerous there for Optic. I love this spot here from Royal Two. Taking his time, getting his shields back, let his teammate on the bridge, just lay down shots. And just as soon as Optic were feeling comfortable, they're gonna lose that lead.
No longer are they tied. Instead, we're going to see Royal 2 and FaZe put this one in, but... No, 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 no. Like look at this. Look at this. Yet. Respawners from FaZe will be there to help Royal 2, but Overshield on its way up, and Royal 2 needs to find a kill. He can't quite take down Lucid. Four members of Optic now will swarm the FaZe base and try to get this return. And look at this. This fight is going to be so crucial here for Renegade what? and FaZe. If they can clear out their hut, they don't have to be as worried about the flag, even though Formal Dead Zone's still on their flag. Not as big of a threat in those positions. And look at this. Overshield getting deleted. Dead Zone taken down. And that flag is stopped. But the return comes through from Optic Gaming. That Overshield does its job. You keep this at a one-to-one -one game. Yeah, at least it doesn't spiral any further than that. I thought that flag was certainly going in for phase, but great defensive play by Optic to secure those kills and just fly across the map. Also great play by Royal 2, not just to force that in and try to go in a race against a sniper on the bridge. Yeah, he wanted to get a kill, couldn't get a kill, and because of that, that just gave Optic the numbers and the overshow control that they use in order to get that return. One to one now, the pressure continuing to build on the backs of phase as they are down 0-2 in this series. Every single spawn is going to matter from here on out. Great damage from the battle rifle here. You love to see the utility of some of the other weapons on the map be used. The battle rifle key to some of the long range combat advantages you can have over the bandit. Yep, just using that crossfire and doing such a great job. But keep in mind, their number one focus right here is holding this hut. You see this damage coming from Lucid and Formal. Damage has been laid out. I expect them to charge on in, and here comes the push. Formal getting the first kill on Renegade. They know Snake Bite's still somewhere around here. They want to secure this hut before they run that flag. In fact, they're gonna do both at the same time. That's three down. Renegade, the only one alive. Renegade, the last player alive. Three members of Optic here on this flagpole, next to the flagpole, suppressing the rest of FaZe. Trippy through the tunnel is gonna have a straight line shot here to cap this one. Nobody on FaZe is gonna say anything about this cap. And Trippy gives Optic the lead in game three. And what a time to do it. You get to go back to play defense with your sniper, but Frosty hitting the fade away. Four dead. And now, Faze have a chance to answer. Royal 2 going Overshield. all the way over to block. That's Vaughn. Snake bite going to get the pull. Gonna get started, but he's gonna meet some resistance. How does he decide to play this one? Looks like he decides to go for the kills. Get a little more damage out there. But this fight's taking longer than he wants. Two on two now. Optic versus FaZe right now. The flag is out, but nobody on FaZe there to get a pull, I believe. You do see Renegade trying to get a touch. Frosty's still with the snipe so far back on the map, not able to help Renegade in this situation. Renegade does touch the flag, but he's going to opt to slay. Frosty looking for overextenders from Optic. He knows that Optic are spawning in the back of their base. Yeah, he would have already heard the call out that there's this many players over at a certain position, so he knows there has to be a flanker coming out from somewhere. Flag slowly moving, but you got to wonder, did Frosty put himself completely out of this fight? Trippy Frosty got through. Back, and somehow Trippy gets the flank. Five the long remain. flank from Trippy gets the back smack on the sniper. Trippy got through the timing window that Frosty missed. You saw the icon of Trippy going below, and Trippy takes the long frank, gets the assassination onto Frosty. And you know he's never even expecting that. He's so far back, he said, I've watched this. There's only like a split second I wasn't looking down there. There's no chance someone could have slipped by. But that perfect timing from Trippy, and Trippy going the long, long route all the way around to take out that sniper. Snake fight wins the one-on-one -on -one under Trippy, but he gets focused immediately. Traded out by Optic Formal. Renegade trying to be sneaky up the tunnel. Once again, taken down by Optic Formal. A big couple of kills will allow Optic to breathe a little bit better in their base. Feels like a couple individual pushes there, whereas when it's, we're seeing Optic push in towards a hut, we'll see two members flying by as we've seen like Formal and Lucid pushing towards a snipe hut, whereas it feels like a couple individual efforts there. We saw Snakebite fall on his own. You saw Renegade trying to push up through that sewer. We're not seeing the same level of coordination on these offensive pushes from FaZe as we've been seeing successfully from Optic. As time builds, the pressure builds. FaZe starting to feel it more and more. Three minutes and 43 seconds on the clock. A 2-1 lead for Optic Gaming, and FaZe need to figure out a way to be a little bit more cohesive as this game will start to conclude. And time is the name of the game here. Optic are going to be Perfectly fine just trading out slaves if they get the option. This next, next sniper could decide everything because look at this already. Two members of Optic staying over at the snipe hub trying to stay alive. Renegade maybe a little bit early but gets the kill on Lucid. He has an early aggressive pressure on this hut. 
Rail 2 coming in for help as well. All dead. The kills. That's all dead. This yep. could be a pull. We know where the flag's gonna go. Can Bring you it over towards Renegade? Can you suppress the respawners of Optic long oh. enough for Snake Bite to move this flag? Five shots will suppress Lucid back to the death cam. Renegade wasting snipe ammo, that flag on the move. And this is going to be a cap from FaZe Clan. Nobody from Optic choosing to overextend up the ramp, and because of it, Snake Bite has the go. Two to two now. FaZe will tie this game three up. Not just only tie this game up, but keep in mind Renegade threw off the sniper there from Optic side. So FaZe should have a sniper of their own. Uh oh. Despite that though, Frosty, Royal 2, both falling, Lucid, grabbing this flag, moving it down. Two players in the courtyard, they're so weak, but oh there's no God. angles. That's one of the danger parts. Snake Bite somehow gets over there. Does Formal run this, or does Formal go for the slays? He has the only sniper left on the map. Frosty needed, needs to get an angle. He's on the plat. He is the one shooting Formal currently. Formal forced into a difficult situation here. A lot of pressure on the kid. He gets taken down. The snipe out of his hands. The flag, that one's dead. There's still two members down for phase. Make it three. And Trippy smells blood in the water. He's pushing up the tunnel, blocking these spawns, but he has his eyes on the flag. Yes, blocking the spawns. Can't even run this way. He's running right to Frosty and Royal 2, and this is going to be stopped. Now they just have to get the slays. Also, doesn't even know where other players could potentially spawn. This is such an unorthodox run. They're trying to slay and run the flag at the same time. Kind of reminds me of that saying, building and flying the plane at the same time. Lucid gets taken down. He had the overshoot. That overshoot gets deleted, but three members of FaZe are still coming off respawn. Trippy, with that flag in hand, has a snipe in his back pocket, but he's gonna opt to run this flag. Gets it across to the pistol. It's over halfway. Trippy trying to take it down the ramp, wants to slay for a second, misses the shot on the Renegade. Goes back for the touch, but falls into the courtyard. Knocked to no shield. Trippy can no longer run this flag. Trippy has to say and slay. Somehow Renegade knows where he is at. That's two members down, and FaZe know they cannot let this one go. Looks like Royal Two who sits on the recub and you gotta wonder that slightly missed shot that could have turned into a complete different scenario now flag being pulled out for phase oh my. what a shift of momentum this goes through lucid trying to buy all his time they have two members there from phase trying to stop lucid and pick him off they finally get the kill but who goes to the flagpole where is this push gonna come from optic Two members of Optic trying to defend this flagpole. There's a player right behind the flag. Snake Bite able to trade with that player. It's one member that was still remaining, making it formal, trying to defend this flag, playing in a cheeky spot, but they know he's there. The pings come true. The assist from Royal 2 will give Renegade the kill. That flag still shortly returning. Royal 2 trying to decide, can he go for a push? Does he have the window? Multiple members of Optic coming off respawn will take him down and hop the return. Looks like we're just gonna go straight to an OT. I mean, there's a small chance that if Optic wanted to overextend to try to get an OT pull here, but this one looks like both teams are gonna be just going into OT, relaxing off a brand new fresh start, and these teams gonna be more evenly matched here on Forbidden CTF. Back and forth, those final Overtime. battles went. Put five minutes on the clock, it's Dave. Let's me. play first to one here. Winner can extend the series or find themselves in the grand finals dead zone. Looking to be very aggressive here, an untraditional route. He will have an early flank on the phase, and they have no idea it's coming. Yep, and FaZe being a little more aggressive, getting two picks, and we saw this from Renegade last time he got no S. He grabbed that flag, and he did not slow down. Looks like he's pulling it over towards Hut side, but realizes he needs to oh, get wow. a kill. Lucid right in front of him. Too dead. Gets the pick with Frosty. Now does he run it, or does he slay? Looks like he's gonna let his other teammate grab that flag as he is just gonna get some information. That flag's still not on the move, Dave. FaZe are choosing to slay right now. Trippy will have Phase's snipe, I believe, in their snipe. So he's across the map on an overextension. We saw the impact Trippy was able to have with a very similar play. Renegade pushing into the back of Optic Gaming's base. No one's still moving this flag, but they will have man advantage on the map. Yeah, it looks like Frosty's gonna be able to get this touch. Looks like not actually losing, getting the pick. So Renegade, although he's been staying alive, he has not been able to really progress this flag any further. And this one's going to return, kind of even footing. And you know Optic got to feel okay about that. Yeah. But one thing they don't feel okay about is Renegade still in their hut. As long as Renegade is in the hut, especially with this weapon, 
they cannot rest easy. Face were in a four on two with the flag already out. How did they not get it on the move? Well, no time to think about that just yet. Renegade still with snipe in hand, rips the head off a of one, gives his team a four on two advantage again. Lucid with the peak shots will take down Renegade on the overchow there. Lucid able to stay alive, will release some of the pressure, and maybe Optic can get off their back feet for this overtime round. Yeah, but here comes the push. Trippy and Lucid, the duo, push on their hut. And now they can relax for a little bit. The last minute or so, wow. they could not breathe. Holding their breath there because as people are in your hut, that is where the flag caps happen. But Renegade decided to take a little bit of a different route this time, realizing too much resistance at hut. Also me meeting equal resistance by formal over at the main ramp. Optic with another overshield in the hands of Trippy. Shortly, it's getting deleted. Snake Bites is going to take a ton of damage and a stick to the feet. It's a double for Trippy and the rest of Optic Gaming. They are able to finally eliminate Trippy, but Optic Gaming, for the first time in this overtime, feel like they're being a, the aggressor and have a little bit of control to play around. Yep, they have the advantage now, dodging that grenade right there. But you got to wonder, is Optic going to take over this opposite hut? That's their main target. Too late. Snake bite, Royal 2 already over in the hut. Oh, Trippy, can he do something with his mat? Miraculous flanks. He's done it before. Can he do it again? Flag gets pulled. Everyone from Optic advanced on the map right now. FaZe need to find the kills. Snake bite and Frosty do so tremendously. Three go down for FaZe, however. Frosty, the last player alive, knocked to no shield. The flag still on the move, and that could be the kill that does it. The kill that kills. Face Clan formal with the flag up the tunnel. Overextenders are the only thing Optic Gaming has to worry about as formal takes it in. He takes shots, but not enough. <laughs> formal cap the flag and punch Optic Gaming's ticket to the grand finals. Venue is donned in green here for St. Patty's Day and for Optic's second sweep here against FaZe at Arlington Major. What an incredible push there from Optic. It felt that they were playing defensive the entire overtime round, but if you give them an inch, you give them one opportunity. This Optic Gaming roster can run away with it, and we saw Formal running away with the flag like it was nothing. You blink and you miss it, but Formal and the rest of Optic Gaming will be able to compete for this championship here tonight. Their run is not over, however, FaZe. What a showing this weekend. They had bouts of greatness, and they just ran into a wall, exactly the green wall, twice. Never easy to defend your championship, Dave. I know you have plenty of experience doing that. Some of the times it was easy, but, but granted, there's I mean, a lot of times it wasn't. You were playing T-squared for half of those, okay? <laughs> I love you, Squared. <laughs> but let's be honest, when you come into a, you go into a six month break, you have a target on your back at all times. Everyone looking at what you're doing, how do we beat that? Optic Gaming having to sit on that loss in the grand finals of Worlds last year, the way they lost. Two best of sevens after winning the first two games in the first series that had to eat at them. They even made a team change after being world champions the previous year with APG and the run that they had for so long. And Optic Gaming with that team change, Dead Zone, the newly acquired player. I mean, he's playing his ass off out there and this Optic Gaming team is gonna come for vengeance come this Grand Finals. You see a different style, you see a different player. All comes down to this next matchup. Optic, you said they had to fight so hard for this game. So many close games there during this last series. Yeah, I mean, an unbelievable three games from Optic Gaming's phase, just not enough to get the job done here this weekend. We know they'll be back. We know how, how big of champions they are. And as we take a look at the series layout from the elimination finals, Dave, I mean, two to one, 50, 47, three to two, the margins of victory could not have been any slimmer. I mean, a couple of kills in the Slayer, maybe, but yeah, outside it's, it's of that. It's essentially flipping a coin three times. I mean, arguably, game one wasn't flipping a coin. You saw Optic destroying that second hill, or that third it hill. It felt like they, they were in control. And they were definitely in control, but games two and three, I mean, that fight goes a little different. 
that flag moves a little faster, like you said, from FaZe's side. You know they're going to go back to the drawing board and say, where were we not being efficient enough? Where did we mess up? Because the Winters' opportunity were there. You just didn't see the players go through fully. Opportunity was there. It was not seized by the former world champs. Oh, that's going to do it for us, Dave. I need a break. I need a towel. <laughs> I'm throwing this back to Lot and the boys on the desk. You guys can break this down. Thank you so much, Wes and Walshy. Wow. Optic Gaming, they are looking formidable. A force to be reckoned with. And it is St. Patrick's Day today. So happy St. Paddy's Day, everybody. And the room is filled with green, and rightfully so. Optic get it done once again, 3-0 fashion. Closer games this time, but still in the same form they left phase with last time. Tim, talk to me a little bit about this Optic Gaming roster right now. They came up against a, a phase who were ready to go again. Uh, they kept it close. Things were getting very competitive, but Optic always having the edge every single map this series. Honestly, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be serious with you. I didn't really have a lot of faith in this Dead Zone change, but uh, like I said, I'm wrong. And that's okay, because Dead Zone is playing phenomenal. He's fitting this roster perfectly, and honestly, it's gonna be scary in this year. Now that you have Optic in the conversation, along with SSG, two teams that made a change, I mean, that, I didn't expect that at all. Man really is fitting in like a glove from that game number one 20 kill performance to the 15 kills and 11 assists going to that game two, I will say, Started off a bit slow, 0-7 to start off that game number three, but then picks it back up and ends the game with 15 kills and I, well, I want to say maybe 17 assists. So, dead zone. I said, I said before the series started, this team goes and ends where dead zone goes. He really is that X factor for Optic Gaming in. I think you guys saw it at home as well. Let's talk about FaZe for a second. The, some of the mistakes coming forward here, not capitalizing maybe on some of the gains they had made on the maps, especially in CTF. This is really, really close. And even in the overtime, we see Renegade get overshield imme immediately, excuse me. He pulls a flag, but then there's just this unfortunate situation where they take too long to actually do anything with it. What happened with FaZe in, in, in the entirety of the series, but also right at the end here? Well, to start off with, uh, honestly, when you have your, your Captain and Snakebite, the leader of the squad, kind of leading in kills and leading in assists. You know, you kind of question, you know, I, I think Renegade and Frosty started off a bit slow. When we get to this game number three, though, that's when you started to see FaZe get a little more comfortable. You started to see a little bit of a shining light. But yes, the objective efficiency once again. How do we, do we overslay? Is it, you know, a lot of people have talked about that. FaZe tend to overslay just a bit. And we saw a couple of situations where maybe a flag could have gone in, but again, the decision-making, it didn't work out in their favor this time. Yeah, I think Optic, they have changed the game with the swarming that they have honestly got with Dead Zone on this team. The way that they are able to swarm in on you, you can't move, you can't breathe. FaZe have definitely felt that this weekend against Optic, and it's been very impressive with the aggression. I think the aggression is something new for this roster, Tony. I mean, they are turning up the heat, and it is becoming very, very difficult to move on a map against them, even with FaZe, who have unbelievably aggressive players on their side. Optic were very, very good today. The question is now, can they repeat this type of situation in terms of gameplay against SSG once again? I'll be honest with you, I, I, I don't see why not coming into this tournament. I said Optic Gaming were the third best team in the world. Well, as of right now, they're playing like the best team in the world. They're playing like they're ready to win a championship here in their, in their hometown, here in their home office, if you will. They're, they're going to work, they're clocked in, and I don't know if they're clocking now. <laughs> Tim, the longevity of a reset bracket is looming over Optic's heads right now, but they do have their home crowd behind them, like you said, Tony. That is going to help them kind of push through all the way. Do you think they have what it takes in terms of the stamina to reach that final, that end goal, that end result, and really take Space Station Gaming, you know, all the way and, and take the dub? Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, SSG, obviously, coming from that Grand Finals, they have that advantage. Optic are going to have a tough road ahead of them. Both of these teams made a change. So one of them is going to show us which change was better. Legend looks phenomenal. Dead Zone showcasing all the doubters were wrong, including me. And I love to see it. This is going to be an incredible Grand Final. It really is the battle of the roster changes. Which one made the biggest impact? We'll find out. We're going to head to a quick break right now. When we come back, folks, it's Championship Sunday. It's your Grand Final. And we've got Optic versus Space Station on the main stage. We'll catch you right after this. Hey, 
hey, guess what? New year means a new optic scuff design for a new controller. Check out this sexy design. It's a nod to the original OG logo and a great way to rep the green wall. Choose between the Reflex for PS5, the Instinct for Xbox, and the brand new Envision for PC gaming. Guess what? Scuff saw your comments and they're now selling the base plates separately for the Envision and the Instinct for $29.99. Sorry, I'm kind of busy. Kind of not. Leave a message. Yeah, the mega rev boys here, cinnamon. Flow tastes sweet like cinnamon. Open up doors, I'm a gentleman. Fuel top floor, I'm still staying ahead of them. Running on fumes and adrenaline. Do what I do best. Huh? Can't rush in like a roulette. You can't name a better duet. Huh? Don't ask questions. Trying to figure out what sound. Don't worry about what next. Just know we got now. HCS 2024 Kickoff Arlington Major is presented by AMD, Scuff, and Corduroys.
Halo fans, welcome back to Championship Sunday here at the HCS Arlington Kickoff Major, hosted by Optic Gaming. The crowd is ready to go, and they are primed after that incredible game from Optic Gaming, taking down FaZe 3 0 on the main stage and totally out of the tournament. They rebound now back into the grand final spot where they have to go up against Space Station once again. My name is Lottie, I'm joined by Wes, and I'm joined by Tony. Whew, my goodness me, do we have a game on our hands, people. We've had an exceptional tournament, to be perfectly honest with you. Every single day has been lights out, non-stop action. Let's take a look at the bracket, though, to see how we have ended up at this point in time. Because Optic, they've had such a good run, such a solid run, all the way up until Space Station Gaming. And honestly, even then, you could have tossed a coin at times And in how these games kind of panned out. This was a really close winner's finals. Clutch, do you expect this grand final to be a brawl? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a 3-2 in the winner's finals. And honestly, everything Optic showed me against that phase team is that they want revenge on what just happened in that winner's finals. It's going to have to be two best of sevens, of course, if Optic want to get the job done, but they have what it takes on that side of the stage to push this grand finals the entire distance. Space Station, of course, not going to go quietly in the night. They've obviously earned their, their spot in this grand finals, their advantage in this grand finals. This is going to be a battle. It really is going to be a battle. It's been a battle every single day so far, and I've been so surprised with so many teams who really come out of the woodworks in this offseason, put some work in, dedicated their time and energy towards getting better, putting rosters together to take down teams and to push themselves further up the bracket. And i got to say, for me, Foe were one of those teams to stand out. I was so impressed with Europe and how they showed up to this tournament. And, of course, we do have our AMD power play as well, which is going to be the young gun Wutum. What? And that keyboard and mouse player he is out to play and I'm so happy that he's having already an exceptional season Tony Wootum when he comes to mind his gameplay being able to show off what he can do with a keyboard and mouse it's just wonderful to watch I mean it really is it's fast it's exciting it's dynamic he's able to put damage on some multiple players then quickly take cover stay alive what this young man is doing is really changing the game as far as input go there's going to be a lot of mouse and keyboard players out there to say you know what if wu Tum do it maybe i can do i was waiting for this moment this kid put the world on notice mouse and keyboard is viable for competitive halo for the first time in the history of the franchise you love to see a player with his individual skill of his talent be able to showcase that in the competitive atmosphere on the main stage in the most important series Wu Tom, although he's 17 years old, he played like a veteran this weekend, and I cannot wait until we get him back up there. He certainly did. A highlight for me exactly on the screen right here. <laughs> That's iconic. <laughs> it's iconic, putting that keyboard in the air. He knows what he was doing up there, and he should be so unbelievably proud of it. What an amazing achievement so far. So young and so far to go as well. So Wu Tom, we love you. We're big fans on the desk for big sure, fan. and all of us at the HCS. Where can you see Foe next? That's my question. Well. We do have a roadmap for you guys to have a quick look at. And next up, we do have the HCS London Major. Really, really amazing, amazing stuff happening in London. I haven't been back to London for quite some time, you know, about five years, Wes. Five years I haven't been back. I haven't been back to London. I actually went over last year, I guess. But I haven't been to London for a Halo tournament ever. I've always missed out on them, so I'm so excited. I love when we always get to travel. I love getting to travel, especially to to European countries or wherever we've been as of recent, but London is one you're not going to want to miss. The food over there is so good. I like <laughs> the idea that finally we're giving our European teams a little bit of a home field advantage as well. They of have course. to travel a little bit less. They're always fighting the different hours of the day that they have to compete with when they travel to the States and are forced to play in tournaments over here. It's only right that we give them a little love and we force the American players to go in Royal Two's time zone, demon, Very true. demon time, and play <laughs> over in Europe. Very true. Well, you know, you may not, not have been to London for a Halo event, but Tony, you haven't been, period, have you? Uh, yeah, you guys are talking about the last time y'all <laughs> been to London. I'm like, well, you know, the last time I've been to London was... London, Georgia. Never. I never even <laughs> stepped foot into Europe, so I'm excited to, to head over there, honestly. I, I really am. 
31st of May to June 2nd. This one will be an epic, an epic event. So make sure you guys are tuning in or get your tickets to go head on over there. And of course, we also do have Salt Lake City back again. Major 4 presented by Space Station Gaming. We're back at Salt Lake. We loved that event last time. It was it was vibey clutch, wasn't it? It really was. Space Station, they know how to put on a show. Space Station knows how to put on a show. The passion was felt throughout the entire project, throughout the entire event. It rolled through to the players and we saw some of the best Halo we saw all of last year at that event. We even had a Bulldog in the green room for a little bit. I love Bulldogs. So my favorite event by far last year, getting to hang out with the Bulldog and watch some top tier Halo. What more can you ask? What more can you ask for? Uh, I love the Space Station guys and what they do in terms of content and things. And they really do elevate things for us in Halo. And I just, I just love everything that they're putting out, also including the merch. The merch is absolutely fire, Tony. Top -tier. I know that you know that. I've seen you in their merch. I live in Space Station merch. There you go. What can you say about it? Do you live in it? Oh, absolutely. I, I actually uh, always take my dogs out in their little blanket hoodie and whatnot. <laughs> always. It's so comfy, especially during the cold weather. So uh, thank you, SSG. We really do appreciate it. I'm you. actually so glad that I asked you that question now because I would never have known that. So uh, we, you, we need we need B-roll of that. <laughs> we do indeed. Let's get back to things here on the desk, though. Of course, our main stage matchup. It is your grand finals. Oh. Space Station versus Optic. This is going to be, honestly, I, I think pretty close. Uh, based on what we saw in the winners' finals from both of these teams, it was head to head, toe to toe. And I just want to know how things are going to shake out. Do you think the series layout is going to have something to do with that? I think the series layout will absolutely have something to do with it. But that being said, it's a best of seven, and if Optic reset it, it's another best of seven. So you're going to get tested in just about every map and mode if you're SSG and you get pushed to the brink of elimination in this tournament. So. That can't be an excuse. It really is going to be about superstars making the biggest plays in the biggest moment, the grand finals. And that stage has eight superstars on it. I cannot wait to see these guys go at it. Me too. And Tony, how are you feeling about this matchup? Because obviously Optic, if they want to go the distance, there's two series layers they have to get through in order to get that dub. Well, the good thing is if you're a fan of seeing more Halo and a fan of Optic Gaming, this series layout really doesn't lend much towards Space Station Gaming. So if if I'm looking at this Grand Finals, I'm thinking Optic have an advantage to maybe win one series, maybe force the bracket reset and just give us more Halo to watch. I'd say sit back and relax, crowd, because it's St. Patrick's Day. Hope you have a brew in your hand, because this is going to be a long series. I'm hoping for a reset. This green wall crowd will start to get louder and louder with the amount of wins tallying up for Optic Gaming. I'm looking at SSG to try to silence the crowd quickly. So if you're in the crowd and you want Optic to win, you might not want to let that happen. You don't want oh. to let that happen. Do you think actually SSG is going to be phased by the Optic crowd? I think this SSG crew has been a core team for what feels like a long time, especially Eco and Stellar. They have played against every crowd known to man, right? When they were Splice and all of the CLG and Tox fans were in the crowd, they know what it like, it's like to be the villain. I think they embrace that. I think Stellar and Eco kind of thrive in that. And you know Bounds' personality? <laughs> that guy was born a villain. He came out the womb a villain. And I think he <laughs> wants to ruin everyone's here St. Patrick's Day. Well, I know that this venue right now is stacked to the nines. Everybody's finding their seats. We need to get this stage set, ready to go for your grand finals. We've got Optic Gaming versus Space Station. Let's see who takes it. Hello, Texas, and welcome to the 2024 HCS Arlington Kickoff Major, hosted by Optic.
has been absolutely amazing. But now we got two final teams remaining, looking to hoist that first trophy of the season and set the pace. This first squad coming to the stage is out of this world. Get them yellow towels in the air and make some noise for Space Station Gaming! We got Stellar Eco Bound and Legend Space Station looking to go to new heights. Give it up for them, Texas. It's time to bring out their opponents. This squad here knows Texas is their home. And they see the green wall in the crowd. Esports Stadium, get loud for Optic Gaming! Show some love for Trippy. story it is right both of these teams making changes to take down the defending world champions in phase and guess what they found themselves first event of the year up against each other and the question is which of the two team changes on each side of the main stage will be the defining one to take the title at event number one of the year yeah who is going to have those bragging rights is it going to be space station who made the change bringing in legend or will it be dead zone getting some revenge on his old roster as part of this new look Optic Gaming roster. Now, we mentioned Legend. He's got an opportunity here to make history. He could be the first ever international player to win a HCS event. And, and what a story it already has been. As we said, already made history today. An international player has never placed within the top two in over 20 years of professional Halo. However, as you say, an opportunity to push that story even further and potentially take the first ever event win for an international player. Now we should highlight as well, we move from best of fives over to best of sevens, and it's SSG, Space Station Gaming, who come into this grand final with that series advantage. Why is that such a big thing? Why does it matter so much? Well, the last time that Space Station won an event, it was from this position. So many times we've seen them in grand finals, but usually they have to come through the Elim. Right, the story all of last season for Space Station Gaming was the winner's bracket finals. If they won that, we thought that they might be able to win an event. They did that in Salt Lake City. They find themselves in the same exact position here. And as you heard on the desk, what a winner's bracket final it was. Going not only to five games, but going to six games. A very rare feat in a game two tie that had to be replayed. And that final game coming down to the wire as well. And we are set up here for quite a grand finals to kick off the year. This feels quite special, doesn't it? I don't yeah. know what it is. It's just a little bit of magic in the air. And it's kind of uh, poetic, I like to say, as we take a, a look at the uh, grand final series layout. But when Space Station won that event last year, it was in front of their crowd at their event. Well, Optic Gaming, they've got the opportunity to do exactly the same thing here in Arlington in front of the green wall. Yeah, taking a look at the series layout. Some interesting numbers across these first few games of our first best of seven. Both teams are 1-0 and in King of the Hill on live fire. They swap on Slayer Streets. Optic Gaming is 1-0. SSG has lost that game type. However, across maps 3 and 4, it's worth noting both teams are 1-0. So three of your first four game types, these teams have the same exact record throughout the weekend. Which is fascinating, right? There was nothing to separate them. Just a few kills. The last time we saw them go up against each other, a little bit earlier today, but that's history. It's time to make some more here. You can see the players are set. We are ready up here in the caster booth, and I'm pretty sure this crowd is ready to go as well. It's a Sunday night in Texas, everyone. 
everyone. You know what that means. It's time for a grand final. And no surprise here, the Let's Go Optic chant already starting in the room. You saw Forbel hyping up the crowd, making sure that they're getting up and they're getting loud. And we are underway in game number one. And why wouldn't you start with a man on your screen? He's already made history. He continues to make history. Legend, the man we're talking about, of course, has the opportunity to do what no one outside of North America has managed to do, to lift a trophy and call himself a champion. And the man on your screen right here, Stellar, he was quoted this weekend as saying there was only one player in the world that we were making a team change for, and that was the French phenom in Legend. He's brought them here undefeated so far in Arlington. Can they finish the job up against Optic Gaming? Well, it's been a really strong start here for Optic Gaming. Of course, they have to do the hard work here. They have to reset the bracket and beat Space Station Gaming, not just once, but twice. A great start for them. You can see they've already got over half of that first hill converted, and they're still stood inside of it. Formal in full predator mode here. Invisible with the snipe. We'll see what he can do. Shots coming in, though, from sandbags and pillars. is going to make things quite difficult. Three will fall. Trippy is your only player alive. That will be a four dead clean wipe for Space Station. They respond, and they arrest the optic gaming progress at about 75%. I mean, so many times there when you lose the camo and you've lost that initial hill time, you kind of give this first hill up, right? But what a push that is from Space Station. Somehow they spot out four with that camo and make it a non-effect on the map. Stella has the sniper rifle Ooh. as well, and at the moment, he's putting it to use. Almost connects on the third. That mud push will come in from a teammate, though, and off of that pressure, off of the timing, looks like it should have come oh. early. Finally, he takes down Lucid, but Lucid buys a bit of time for the squad. However, most importantly, look at the scoreboard. Tied up on the first hill. I mean, Dead Zone doesn't want to poke because he knows that sniper rifle and he knows the teammate that he used to sit alongside is pretty damn good with it. Stella starting off in championship form as Optic find themselves three dead and SSG are moments away from converting this hill. It's a staggered three dead as well. Lucid is sandbags. He's the only hope to apply pressure right now. You see the rest of the players coming in from scoreboard. This should finish. This should be the first hill going to SSG, and it will be indeed SSG who strike first as Stella has started this game at five and one. And it sounds silly, but the man doesn't miss very often, and he looks like he's trying to keep that up right now. Still three dead for Optic. Take a look at that top left. Still controlling here from Space Station. They're now out slaying 17 to 14 on the rotate. Not only that, like you say, they've won the rotation as well. It's not just the first hill. They are set up inside the second. They have oh! the tower, and Stella! Oh, he takes to the stars, disappears into the ether, but reappears when Optic fans did not want to see him. Up close and personal, beautifully done there. Just having the QT right on the QT spawn spot to land that melee very cleanly. And that leads to a little bit of more control on the board for SSG. However, Trippy with a big opportunity here. It's Too dead for his side, he needs to slow it down. Yeah, it's an opportunity, but with those kills going in the favor of Space Station, he has to just stay alive now. Because if he challenges and he gets spotted out, there's going to be three or four Space Station Gaming members who are going to be able to hunt him down so, so quickly. So all of this time, it's just free time for SSG. Trippy now has to make his play. Really is. Let's see what he can do. He does pick up one. That's going to lead to three dead for SSG. It's very good timing. They're going to look for the last one as well. But once again, it's answered back by the side of Optic. A clean four dead. Very well executed by Optic Gaming. Excellent patience from them. Now they will begin scoring on hill number two. He's got a sniper rifle as well. So there's an opportunity here for him to get that first damage, break a shield, break a skull, and give Optic some control here. Stella gets that first kill and manages to get away. However, there's a couple of other players who Lucid's going to have to deal with here. It's a 2v2 on the map. Sniper rifle still in the hands of Lucid. But look how elusive Eco is being. He's baiting. He's waiting for help to arrive. E and no! Oh, unfortunate. Lucid, of course, goes for the repulse there, bottom mid, but just taps his head against the bottom of the ceiling and instead going to fly off and lose snipe. So what should have been clean control and a fourth dead player on the side of Space Station actually will go to Space Station control. We're going to get this. In a game of margins, that's what can cost you. SSG, they managed to break, and Optic will find themselves three dead. They know where the last player alive is, and that's going to be Trippy. And Trippy says, I know I'm going to have to give this one up. He's trying to buy time, but Eco just has to dip his toes in. Oh, look at this. They're waiting. Able to convert, but I love this from SSG. They're trying to get kills before they convert and trying to take the rotation with them. Let's see. There should be a player there. Yes, indeed. They buy a little bit of extra time off the game clock. A little bit of min-maxing coming out from the side of SSG, but I cannot stress enough how big of a blunder that was. Eco was the only player alive on C plat. Lucid trying to stay alive back tower because he falls. That hill gets forfeited. What should have been an optic gaming hill goes to SSG, and just like that, they lead now two to zero. Two v two inside a garage. You can see the bound is alive, and he's got that QT, which is such a problem to deal with inside of this particular hill. So are perfect shots. As bound will hit the five onto formal, and he's still got some QT to work with here. So optic, even if they see bound. 
They're only going to see him for a second. That was a clean four dead. Where's this first pick go? It's a triple concrete pillars push coming in. See if Bound can fight against it. Actually, it was a quadruple. All four players on this side of the map as Camo was popping as well. Yeah, Optic were trying to bait Bound in there. I think they were expecting him to have that QT a little bit longer, maybe waiting to see if he was going to try and use the portal to get behind enemy lines. Instead, it just disappeared in time, making that push a little bit easier for them. Optic have won this little fight. Camel's it's still a little up. skirmish that's gone on, but it's all around the camo. And as you say, even though they won the fight, they don't have the space to walk forward and pick up the power up. Yeah, quite a delay there on that camo. As you saw, it came all the way back into cuts right onto the dummy. So Bound is the one that gets the communication about exactly where it was on the map, but he's going to start the new push. It was pretty much tied up. Trippy's still inside. Oh, big win from Trippy. That's going to take the camo out of the game, but it wasn't without a little bit of damage to the numbers of Optic Gaming. Stella flies in for yet another trade. It's going to be three dead momentarily here for Optic Gaming as SSG step back into that hill. And this fight here, this could be Optic's last oh, chance to push. Oh. Lucid will win the fight on Bound. Trippy's going to fly as well. Last chance saloon. And Optic stand up. Lucid was the only player alive on cuts. He wins the first 1v1 against Camel. Then he flies scoreboard, somehow wins the second one against Keydord. And by that time, Trippy has the help on the push. And somehow they will steal this hill out from SSG to put the hill on the board. An amazing individual effort coming in from Lucid. It's a killing spree for Lucid just when Optic needed it. If it's 3 to 0, you start looking at game clock. You start thinking maybe the time is going to be a problem for us to get back in this game. But 2 to 1, completely different feel. Enormous play there. Otherwise, we'd be at 3-0 to zero here. Lucid with just an enormous effort coming off of cuts to win those two battles. And by, as we said, by the time that all happened, the cavalry was in. With Optic Gaming trailing here, 2-1 to one, with 2.29 left on the clock. Let's get into a listen-in with Optic Gaming. I'm going to go above. Yes, no, yes, no. I'm going to the list. Repulse that weak. Repulse that weak. Absolute bottom tower. Absolute bottom tower. On the ship. Top nest, top nest, top nest. Top nest. Pop it. 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 Pop Camo and 20. Big door, Matt Zane. I'm watching it, I'm watching it. Yep, we're good. Same one. Can we like... Yo, no, no, no. Not right now. Yo, A-Pot, 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 Big door, Zane, back B. Cuts, go. There's absolute. Shut back green, guys. Shut back green, guys. 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 Like, hey, I got a tower. Top eight. I killed him. I killed him. Top eight. Initial. Top eight. Initial. Bottom middle. One guy bottom middle. On the repulse spawn. Bottom mid. We'll try. You go. I have a sniper. Auto. Auto. Cuts. 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 I think I did the jump, I did the jump. I did the jump. Yo, spider, spider, spider. Wait, 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 Optic secure their second hill, tying the game up at 2-2. Two to two. We jump out of the comms, it's composed as it always is, but, I mean, talk about composure. The man on your screen right now, the only reason, really, Andy, this game is how it is, is that 1v1 that was won just moments ago. I mean, really, really, what a different game than just a few minutes ago here. Not only tied 2-2, two to two, look at the progress on that hill as well. Optic's about to close out the third go-ahead hill as well. They've entered back in such a big way. They're currently outslaying 59-53. to 53. Well, they're four dead. That's the problem for them right now. It doesn't matter how much of the hill you've got. It's about closing it out putting that point on the board. And SSG now have their opportunity with a couple still dead here for Optic to really establish themselves on this top middle hill. Pretty sure they've got control of the tower, but look at the push up back green. Numbers been evened up momentarily. 2v2 on the map, as you say. Immediate kills coming in for both sides. Let's see if they can hold here. This is a big moment. Might be an SSG grab if they hold. I mean, Bound is playing this so well, but Eco has been taken down. Bound has to clean up this damage. He has to clean up these kills because Optic are stood inside of that hill. They're trying to desperately here, but they won't get Gets close. Optic Gaming will turn this game on his head. They're up three to two. Oh boy, Seller answers back right away. Three dead here for Optic. Dead zone's your last player alive. But what a push coming in from Optic there off of concrete and pillars. That's not easy to do. You're coming uphill. You're coming through a very narrow corridor. Somehow they put the numbers into the mix. They get top mid. Bound gets just pinched. He can only isolate the sandbags kill there. It's not enough. And Optic oh. closes it out. Oh my God. Stellar though, controlling top tower. A beautiful no scope. And in addition to that, they've already got some points on the board. But keep in mind, this is do or die for SSG. They cannot forfeit this hill, as four hills will win the game.
Well, they're continuing to keep Optic Gaming down in numbers at the moment. They're picking Slay up after Slay. It's Formal who was last alive. Lucid just come off respawn as well. And you can see that Eco is hunting. Now, Optic do have a sniper, I'm pretty sure, in the hands of Formal. But look at the damage output from Eco here. Every bullet that goes into a different Optic Gaming member slows the push down by one or two seconds. And look how close they are already. Space Station a moments away from capping this hill. Gets the trade as well. As you say, three dead. Formal's your last player alive. This hill will go, and we are tied up. Three to three here. SSG versus Optic. And how fitting in game number one, the next hill, Sudden Death will win. Almost still alive, trying to get that damage down, but there's already the rotation won again by Space Station, not for the first time in this game. Our second rotation of hills gives the same pattern as the first. SSG win the green hill and rotate to tower. And almost like we saw before, Formal has to make a play of back tower now to try and break. Doesn't get the clamor there. We'll see if it costs him. In the end, he doesn't get the help he needs. That will lead to two dead for the side of SSG. And Formal just desperately trying to stay alive here in tower. This is such an important battle as well. It's a 2v2 all round tower. Whoever wins this wow. might just get the position of this hill. Formal not only wins the fight, but he comes back for Bound as well. But Bound wins the big battle. Wow, somehow it looks like Teamnade, though, comes in. There. As you see, actually, Formal's going to get the kill on Bounce. So that's a teammate from the side of SSG that will take him down in the end. So just about neck and neck here on the fourth hill. Keep in mind, also 119 left on the game clock. Pretty sure the Legend has the QT as well. So he can afford to just overextend, be the aggressor for his team. Get damage down and being able to retreat. It's going to be important for them to try and break. However, look at the damage output at the moment. Look how Eco is having to play this slowly. He's trying to be the pivot for his team at the moment. Putting down damage, allowing other players to move around his position to clean up those kills. Of course, unsurprisingly, based on what we're seeing from his POV, that he would be leading his team in assists right now with 14 on the board. Finally, he's taken down top mid. But worth noting here, as Optic Gaming continues to score on this fourth hill, Space Station was down by an 11 kill deficit. They've brought it right back as they're right back here tied neck and neck in the Slay department. But all eyes on this last hill. Oh, Legend with a big win on Lucid though, stays alive on the pillars just so he can make that route to back tower. Really important moments of this game. Optic Gaming inside of the hill. Space Station do manage to break and get a few kills themselves though. Another kill going to be picked up here by Bound and it's at the most important time of this game. Space Station will break. They will have control of the tower, Ooh. but Lucid and Dead Zone combine off the respawn and Legend is under pressure. Keep in mind that Lucid and Dead Zone were the spawners. They come up to sandbags right away. They start the push. It's a really big push there. Unbelievably, Space Station had great control, so we're 2v2 on the map here. Enemy team near TV2 on the map, but Optic inside of that hill. And look at the angle that Lucid has right now. If he can clean these two players up, then this might be massive for Optic Gaming. The repulse keeps him alive. But Stella's going to come back here to challenge. Bound will be in the position as well to try and get a little bit closer to that hill. Sniper rifle in his hands. A few shots here from Bound, and this could be an SSG game. It was too dead for Optic yet again. Look at the spawners, all in back green. Optic's going to have one more push here. We'll see. A few pushes to put together. All they need is one push, of course, to get the hill themselves. Got the camo as well here, SSG. They've got all the toys, but they don't have any mistakes. Seven seconds left on that game clock. Optic know this. It looks like the game clock won't be a factor here as we will go to that next hill, but Optic are inside. An Optic are forcing Space Station's hand here. Ooh. Eco has to go. He's got to go right now and make a play. He's got to make this play, but it's Dead Zone! He's gonna Dead do Zone it. against his old team! That's he it. wins the 1v1! The wins Optic game one! What beautiful patience coming in from Optic there, as you said. Eco with the camo and dummies, but Optic just forces their hand. They jump right in the hill. They keep the game clock at zero. And what felt like we were going to get a little bit of extra time on the clock to see how things played out at Tower instead results in Optic Gaming scooping up that win. Let's not forget, Optic Gaming was trailing 2-0 to zero early on in the game. They bounce back. They win 4-3 to three and also outslay in the end, 88-83. to 83. So many pivotal moments in that game. I'd love to watch that end game back, though, because you could see that SSG looked a little bit split on what they wanted to prioritize on the map. And even though they were a little bit split, they ended up pretty much getting everything that they were split for. They had the camo, they had the sniper rifle in and around that hill as well, but nobody seemed to be inside of the hill to get that little bit of time and force Optic to come towards them. Optic showing some great late game resilience there as we take a look at some of these highlights. And what a game number one. I mean, you heard the desk talk about it. And if you caught the winner's bracket final, you knew it was on the way as well. But for that game to end four to three on a big comeback from a two to zero deficit for Optic, I think it just, first of all, is a great table setter for the series. Second of all, just a testament to how closely matched these two teams are. Great QT work coming in early on from Stellar as well.
It's going to feel like a long time ago, though, for Space Station when they were up 2-0 to zero in this game, as they will fall in the end. By the way, looking at the numbers, it's going to be Lucid going 25-20, and 20, leading his team in the kills department. On the side of Space Station, it was stellar in the end, 29-21 and 21 for him. Such a close game, and it sets us up again. This, it's what we saw earlier on between these two teams, right? It comes down to these tiny moments, these one-shots that are missed, or one decision that is countered by a player on the other team, and it's Optic who start the rally. Winning game number one when you know you got a reset of bracket, Andy, is so, so important just to restore the confidence, just to show yeah. that you can force the hand of SSG and that they are going to be in this for the long haul. Here's the last moments you're talking about. Look at the win from Dead Zone. Also, him staying alive. Make sure the Trippy can actually, with full shields, jump in. No spawners. Legend was your only player pushing top mid. In the end, it's a big, big win for them as they close out the game 4-3 to three on that hill before going into any additional time. As you say, they'll take game number one, which is not just a big game on the board when we're talking about a potential double best of seven, but also a big momentum boost for them because they're looking ahead, if they have their way, to a long evening of Halo, and that'll just be one more step in terms of resetting this bracket. I mean, it's a long way to go, but how good must that win in that 1v1 felt to dead zone? It's not yeah. an easy fight against Eco, even though Eco took a little bit of damage on the way in. The fact that he had the camo, which makes the aim assist a little bit you know, less when you're going into those first few shots, it's going to feel good to do that against your old teammate, especially in the position where you can win the game for your squad. Now we move on, though, to Slayer Streets. And I mean, we've seen some big moments from both these teams. And one thing we, kind of, we were talking about before this series got underway is where SSG lost a lot of the big series last year was in those Slayers. Right. Optic have already won series at this event in those big Slayers. Their record is, is superb at the moment through the tournament, whereas on the SSG side, it doesn't look quite as strong. Yeah, coming into the series, Optic Gaming 7-1 and one in Arlington in the Slayer department. However, Space Station Gaming 4-3. and three. And keep in mind, we've got quite a few Slayers in our best of sevens. That could be a really big factor here, especially in this first series. So for SSG, the question is, have they been able to right those wrongs even between series? And for Optic, after the game one win, and knowing that their record has been so, so good on those Slayers, they're probably thinking, we can send this to a reset pretty quickly. As we take a look at uh, some of the stats coming in from the man on your screen, Lucid, very, very big pivotal battle one to get Optic back into that game. And here's some of the stats that go alongside it. Yeah, take a look at that. Your left side, of course, is going to be that winner's bracket final versus Space Station earlier today on a 0.88 KD below one, of course. Not used to seeing that on Lucid's side of the screen. However, versus Phase and the grand final so far, already back on a 1.2. The man has regained, and we should also mention that Optic Gaming is a squad. They're 1-0 in this game type here, Slayer on Streets and SSG has only lost this game type. They're 0-1, potentially more momentum coming for the side of Optic Gaming. And you look at those stats that are on your screen right now, maybe that tells us a little bit more about what Lucid, how important Lucid is to Optic being successful against Space Station Gaming, right? SSG managed to keep him quiet in that previous series, and I say keep him quiet, keep him quiet by his own extremely high standards. That first game where you just see him bounce back a little bit there and you see the series against FaZe where he has that influence in the kills that he picks up, that's what gives them that little bit of space. That's what gives them the breathing room and that's what keeps them even in numbers yep. a lot of the time. is Lucid getting into a position to clean up damage when it looks like Optic maybe were falling onto the back foot. Another important note here, that is Space Station Gaming's first game one loss of the tournament. They have was 6-0 in game ones coming into this series, however. Maybe a sign of additional things to come as Optic ruins that perfect record and takes that map number one to their own name. As he said, leading one to zero in the series. If you're just joining us, it's the grand finals between Optic Gaming and Space Station. Already met in the winner's bracket finals. That one went not only to a game five, but a game <laughs> six due to a game number two replay. Tied 50 to 50, not something we see every day. That was a treat of a series and unsurprisingly based off of the game one, this grand final already starting to become something special as well. Yeah, it's such a, it was such a funny series. Like even when you go on social media, put a tweet, I was like a crazy six game series. I was waiting for some smart ass in the end. It's it five games, uh, you weren't watching it. <laughs> Were you? You weren't there. 50 to 50, that gave us that replay. It was absolutely ridiculous. But as SSG just take a second to regain, step off the stage and get ready for uh, Street Slayer, it gives us an opportunity to talk about the game type a little bit more because it sounds very obvious, Andy, but that camo has been such a difference maker. Not just picking it up on the run you can get to, but it's the fight beforehand. Everybody funneled into that mid map, and that's where you've seen these big swings. It really is. That, that camo, just in case you haven't caught anything from this event so far, camo, of course, replacing Rocket's bottom middle on streets as the central power up and the pickup, and it's really changed the game. Not only does it as a delayed spawn 30 seconds into the match, but it also really changes the dynamic of how 
how it's played. As we, as we saw, sometimes if you can force a trade with a camel, that's an enormous play from the defensive side. However, as we saw Trippy earlier, right in that game number one, if you can make big camel plays, the game has to slow down. It becomes for about 30 to 45 seconds a beautiful chess match where you need to put all the pieces together. As the camel player, you're grabbing info for your team. You're making sure that you can put every single puzzle piece together for the perfect push. We saw Optic Gaming do it in that game number one. Street Slayer is going to offer an opportunity for that as well. I think one of the keys to success in these Slayers for SSG is going to be discipline. Because we've seen on the other side of the stage, Optic Gaming, they are so disciplined in these Slayers. They are so conservative with those deaths. They do not want to give you anything for free. Whereas sometimes I felt in previous seasons in those Slayers, it feels like SSG want to try and win it as quickly as possible. And sometimes that costs them just those one or two kills that maybe they over challenge for, whatever it might be. But that steamrolls, that starts to add up a little bit. It snowballs into three or four, and that could be the margin difference between two such closely matched teams when right. it gets that final moment. Yeah, and both these teams know it, right? And I think that's why Optic is realizing that even if they want to send this series to a second best of seven, it will not be easy. And it will be a very, very long night of Halo for them. But I tell you what, Greenwall fans in the building and the hometown crowd potentially are going to get their money's worth if Optic Gaming can do just that and send us the distance. By the way, it does feel really good. Just turn it around here, looking at the crowd. It is absolutely packed in here at the moment. It is standing room only as everybody is waiting with anticipation to get this second game underway. You know it's serious business as well when Coach Box steps in. It really is, yeah. Sold out crowd here, and uh, I will say the uh, eSports Arena Arlington, home of Optic Gaming, tends to be a sold out crowd unsurprisingly here as there the crowd are. has been loud and proud all weekend repping their squads. Of course, most of them in green, not only for St. Patrick's Day, but also for the green wall. It's a nice coincidence, that one, isn't it? Yeah, as it, someone, they did well there. I have some Irish blood. I'm allowed to celebrate. Someone bring me a Guinness right now, or other <laughs> Irish drink. <laughs> well, let's wait for the uh, the games to get back underway, but I think it gives us an opportunity to look back on the winner's bracket final that we did see, right, and how close it was, because it, usually when you're looking at a winner's bracket final, you look at a loser's bracket final, it feels like we, we're very rarely getting these like extremely close game fives. You go into a grand final, it feels like one team has a little bit of a hangover yeah. from what they, they went through last time they matched up. Maybe they overthink, and that team has an advantage going into it just you know between the ears in the, in the mental game. but. I feel like knowing that both teams will know how close it was, it won't have really felt like a loss to either of the teams now that they're back in the final. It'll just be a case of, hey, if we get to play you again, uh, and, you know, this is going to be either something different for us where we come out on top or we've already proved we can beat you even if it's small margin and every game is going to come down to that one. It really will. And I think what we saw also in that last game, which a lot of Optic fans can be proud of, is the fact that not only did Optic play the objective so well, but also outslayed in addition to it. And the reason I bring that up is because against their phase matches, they often were winning the the objective, however, getting out Slade, which is still pretty impressive in the terms of objective efficiency. However, it's even better to see for Optic fans that not only are they winning objective department, but also in terms of Slays, also out slaying here against SSG after that winner's bracket final. Well, one thing we could talk about as well is the preparation time. We were questioning that coming into the event, right? I mean, Optic Gaming, we spoke to Trippy. Yeah, you know, yeah. we were lucky enough for him to give us a few words. And we were saying that, you know, yesterday after the win against FaZe, how is your mentality as a player, as a team, now having won that big series in the way that they did as opposed to coming into the event as the fifth seed which is you know it's a very interesting thing to talk about right and he's he's like yeah i mean we ha we needed a little bit of time fifth seed we're obviously disappointed with even though it's online halo but winning that series made us believe that this was the right thing to do right Absolutely. this is our event now we're yeah. going to go on and win it and those small moments in, in tournaments can completely change the complexion and the outlook of a team yeah they really can right now we're taking a look at some highlights from these two teams playing earlier in that winner's bracket final we keep mentioning that game number two that was a 50 to 50 tie here's some highlights from that one while we talk through this but you're right i mean one of the biggest things that trippy said to me was he's like you don't know how many thursday and friday nights right that we spent reviewing vod going over gameplay going over strategy and so far this weekend it has undoubtedly shown and the work has certainly been worth the time put in. And the same can be said on the other side, right, about Space Station. It's a it, big pickup. We've talked about it a lot. We know that SSG and Legend had to make that big move across the pond to, to North America, and we spoke to Bound. And <laughs> Bound's, Bound's <laughs> that, biggest concern was that, that Legend <laughs> tends to dip he, his french fries in mayonnaise. mayonnaise. And I said, <laughs> you know what, if that's the biggest concern on the side of the Space Station gaming camp, you probably have a pretty good tournament outlook here. I just want to say, like, it's not the weirdest thing in the world. No, it's not. Actually, we put up a poll afterwards, and I believe that if, uh, mayonnaise on french fries actually about 50 won. 50. It's about 50-50. I, I think it won. I think yes won. Does it really? I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not voting. This is, the, this is the people voting. There's your tie, 50-50 to 50 with a top gold trade. 
as we said, not something you see every day in getting a six-game series between these two, but once again, it's just indicative of how close these two are and how closely they are matched. I will say, by the way, I wanted to talk about what Bound, you know, said about Legend, not just not just a fresh eating rest. habits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was saying that, you know, he just sits in his room, he, just sit, he wakes up, he plays Halo. This That's is Bound. It. He wakes up and Legend is playing Halo. He goes to bed, Legend is playing Halo. He said he plays it 20 hours a day. And that kind of dedication is all you can ask for from I mean, someone right as a player in a professional environment. It has shown. It has absolutely shown. And one thing we have to talk about as well is just the significance of this moment in Halo history. Because every offseason, uh, each team will kind of regurgitate the same thing. We made this team change to take down the current world champions. We've heard it now for two decades. However, how special a moment that the two teams that made the biggest team changes, the ones that are the most talked about in the league to take down phase are now up against one another and all it took was a few months of off season and then the first LAN event they're up against one another that is testament to how strategic how intentional these team changes were that these two are now going up against one another and we are here in game number two optic gaming leading space station one zero we thank you for humoring us everybody we're back into the gameplay like you say optic up by one in our grand finals a little reminder they will have to win this series and another against space station to call themselves champions but it's been a good start for them so far in this series. However, not such a good start in the game. They're down four to one. Bound picks up two. The really nice strategy they're coming in. Tries to shroud B stairs, tries to come in with the shotgun lucid, tries to get away with something crafty. In the end, though, Bound is wise to it. He picks up the double, and off the back of that, it's an early four to one lead. Look at him as well. Pushes lucid back one more time. Oh my god. He's buying so much time here. So much time. Just holding off that B Street spawn. You saw the dead zone kind of got behind them. I'm not sure if it was a, a spawn that was back Ivy or if he'd managed to sneak in, but by holding off the players in front, it allowed the rest of SSG just to deal with him. And now it's an eight to three. Really, really well done there coming in from the side of SSG, as you say, to answer back. We'll see what Seller could do here with the camel on the prowl. AR in his hands, doesn't even fire a bullet. Now he fires some bullets and it turns into a double kill for him. However, he will get taken down, which means that the camo is good for two, but no more at the moment. 10 to four, the score at the moment. And as the gap starts to widen, the Optic fans realize that maybe the team on the stage needs a little bit of a helping hand. They start that Optic chant, but a 10 to four, I think SSG will recognize that as something good as well. Here comes the driveway push. That's going to be cleaned up immediately. Kills are traded out. 2v2 on the map as the driveway push comes up from Optic Gaming. Space Station able to answer it there on B rails and B, and things will just kind of even out and slow back down at 12 to 6. Formal finds himself a battle rifle as well up on the balcony, which is so, so good for doing that long range damage against the bandit. Has a little bit more range and a little bit more ability to output damage to these players who are across the map. And not only the battle rifle as well, it's going to be three dead. And the red gun is in the hands of Optic Gaming as well. So they can keep Space Station at bay here. Those kills time perfectly with the camo coming up. And Ooh. Formal e might be able to get away, but Bound and Stella combined to make sure that he doesn't. Yeah, he was there for just an extra oh, second. Oh, oh, but oh. most importantly, he needed to bring it to the beast there, oh. but it gets flooded right away. Optic Gaming with very good timing on the initial kills. However, it might have been just a bit too early on the grab, and it punishes them. Now 15 to 9, camo will be burned in the end. And SSG maintains their lead quite a handily. Seven kills. Bound is quietly going about his business in this game as we're watching a little bit of legend. He's two and one at the moment. Positive one for the game, but he's able to lock down the commando of Tram here with his shotgun in his hands as well. Bound seven and three as he picks up his third death, but legend is a problem here. But Formal sniffed him out, and Formal looks like he might be able to deal with him, but legend stays alive for long enough for Dead Zone to come in and have to give his teammate a little bit of a helping hand. Optic Gaming doing what they can to keep things respectable. They trail now by five, 19 to 14. Kills will be traded over here in Music. Formal knows he needs to slow things down as well. It was a very good push coming up driveway. They kind of ran the same playbook on that earlier camo grab. But you have to think, maybe Formal just uh, one split second early coming in from the L across benches trying to get that camo back to the B stairs. It will still be a five kill game. Legend's position, Legend's position. He's behind two here. Legend was creeping up on those stairs and just stayed alive long enough for Eco to get one and for him to trade out the second. And how many times? I mean, do you remember the quadrant play where Legend was stuck on those stairs? Seems remember. like a position that he likes to take. Remember it well. One dead for each side. Here comes the push into Red Room. Gonna maybe try to get a trade out. Trippy's still alive, should not get away. Legend makes sure of that. 23 to 17 here. Let's not forget, Optic 1-0 in this game type. Space Station is 0-1. However, it's been a very different start between the two. It's still a six kill game. That lead has been established and pretty much been the same for this game 
since it was initially picked up. And now you're going to see a big swing come in from SSG here. They want to try and take down all of the players on the pink street. Trippy's going to be weak. Formal's trying to fly across to help him. The grenade should be good enough to get the kill at least. But Formal is trying to hold it down for Optic. Bound will pick up another kill elsewhere. Formal will fall and that will be Optic losing member after member. And now it's an eight kill advantage as the camo goes up and Bound is going to collect it as he crosses 10 kills in this game. Wow, look at this now. 29 to 20 in favor of SSG. Let's hear the play call from Bound and SSG with the listening. Let's play around bound again. Two guard, two guard, two guard, two guard, spikes. Watch the back, Kevin. We can't be, we can't be, we can't be. Two guard, get in above. Yeah, one side, trippy. It's him, watch out. He jumps up, jump, watch out, it's him. Makavi, two guys, Makavi. Two dead. No, 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 bottom mid, bottom mid, laundry, 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 Kevin is sitting there, on the box. He's on the box. Ivy, Ivy, one more. It's him, it's him, it's him, bottom mid, bottom mid, shooting, bottom mid, shooting. Makavi, weak. There's one Kevin, Kevin. The baby weak. Shotty's up, Shotty's up. The baby is up. Shotty's up. Are we weak? Good shot in, good shot in. Watch out, Kevin. Arcade. I'm good, you guys. I'm good, you guys. Arcade, kill me. Hey, team, Kevin, watch out. Kevin, Kevin, watch out. Kevin, two guys, two guys, Kevin, pushing. He was in B1. Two guys, Kevin, pushing. I'm gonna push him. The bottom mid, pushing bottom mid. Bricks, bricks now, jumping up towers. Two there, bouncing right and left. They're gonna have five bullets. I'm gonna be safe with you. He's in B6, he's in bricks for shot. Careful. What's up, Z? Yep, all weapons, careful, be live. Watch out, Devin. Do you want spikes right now? Might run out, that's good. Might run out. What could be here? What could be here? What could be here? I'm watching, guys. I'm here, I'm here, Legend. Yeah, on me, on me, on me, bro. Legend, ice cream, ice cream, Legend. In B, in B, also. I think he's in the corner, Legend, yeah? In B, we can work, we can work, we can work. Uh, it's not weak at all. In B, stack me, stack me. Help, help. Help. One shot, Kevin, one shot. One shot in B. Okay, Moen, 25. Keep living, keep right, living. start playing together again, here. They have all weapons. Yo, he has a stalker, a stalker kill me, a stalker kill me. Try, 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 try. Yo, front trash, weak at that. See, watch out. Yo, we want to trap them C, by the way. Yeah, we want to trap them C. Stop going through. Yo, freak, yo, freak, yo, freak, yo. Watch out, DJ. Relax, man. Watch out, DJ. Then, just listen to me. Just listen to me. Well, from the listening, it's been all Optic Gaming in the scoreline. They are now down by just two kills in this game. And even though SSG were doing their best to keep that lead established, it's been chipped away one kill after another, and Optic are back in this. And just in case you weren't keeping a very close eye on the scoreboard, Optic was trailing 30 to 20. Oh, that's big. Big, big sneak king coming in from Eco as well. Might separate them yet again, but Optic was trailing 30 to 20. And over the course of 1 minute 25 seconds, they bring the game back. That's so important for SSG. That might be the game winning play for them from Eco. Taking that camo down without taking damage and without him, the camo player, Trippy, being able to impact the score means they can keep that comfortable lead for now. Stella's going to fly down to finish off formal. Two players going to be trapped on the B stairs here. The damage is good. Can they turn it into a double Eco? Yes, he can. He's going to make it three, and that might be the dagger here for Optic. Wow, how about that? First gets a back whack on the camel, then answers it back with a triple as well to maintain the seven kill lead. Now SSG only five kills away from closing out game number two. Talk about legend bound, Stella. It's so easy sometimes to forget about what a player Kevin Eco Smith is. And he's taken over this game. Can't quite win the battle there at the back of the tower. But the influential plays in this game that have made the difference have been from the end of his gun. Now I'm just trying to stay alive here on tires and B knows that there's presence here at tower. Entire SSG roster just stacked on this kind of right side of the map of the vertical split of the map. Two players though going to push back to Tram as well. Such a good play, they're trying to rewrap to take down Lucid, who was the spawner, and now Dead Zone flies in to try and clean up wow. the damage. Bound in the 1v1 against Trippy. He'll win that. Dead Zone equals it out. But every kill that goes down brings Space Station closer and closer to closing out this game and tying up the series. It's one to go here. Stella looking to move in. Formal will be the victim. And SSG will answer back. Wow, 50 to 43 is your final score and what looked like it might have been a little bit of a wobble coming in from SSG after throwing away a 30 to 20 lead. They maintain composure, but as you said, Mark, off of the camo back whack from Eco, that really slowed down not only the momentum of Optic Gaming, but of course also the advantage that Optic could have played off of that camo. Eco also follows it up with a triple thereafter, and in the end, goes 13 and 11. I mean, everybody stepping up there is Bound, who kind of led the way in kills, and KD overall in that Slayer, 14 and 10 for him. But nobody on the side of Space Station went negative. And when you win by seven kills, that's pretty impressive. It really is. Really tells you just how tightly organized this team is. We take a look at some of those stats. And on the other side, it was Formal, who did manage to drop 15 and 11. However, not enough for the green wall as they will go ahead and fall in that game number two. By the way, that marks not only their first 
ever loss in that map game type here in Arlington, but it also marks their first loss in any of the game types in the grand final. Take a look at some highlights. Yeah, I think the initial lead was established almost off the break, right? It was SSG who won that opening strategy, won those opening battles. And then from that three kills that they got off the break, they managed to just kind of spawn cycle them once more. And that was the difference between the whole team. It was Bound and Space Station who controlled, I would say, the early camos in the game. And the one the one important one that Optic got was shut down immediately by that back smack from Eco. I love that he took the risk just to fly through the shroud. Many people would have gone, hey, this camo's gone. I'm not going to overextend here because I know Optic are waiting. But Eco's calculated decision and it paid off. So SSG, they take game number two. They tie the series up one to one. Now let's not forget that only means that SSG is three games away from potentially ending the tournament here and now in this grand final. However, Optic also three games away from sending us to a second best of seven, potentially sending us the distance. But taking a look at this series layout gives us a chance for just a moment to talk more about these game types while we get ready for game number three. As we said, overall, it's quite a noteworthy stat for these game types. Optic Gaming was overall 9-0 across these game types here in Arlington. Now, of course, that they've lost that Slayer Streets, they become 9-1, but it's worth noting that for the rest of the best of seven as well, they have not lost these game types. However, if we look at the two losses that were to come in on the side of SSG, as we said, Slayer Streets was the one game type they had lost previously. They've also lost the Slayer on Aquarius map number seven. SSG comes in 6-2 and two overall. However, they already answer back, win the game two Slayer. So that might just kind of indicate that we really can't trust those stats from Arlington too much. <laughs> sure. Things are kind of already out the window. Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting when you talk about it like that, right? It, it, all it really tells us is that you're not quite sure who has the advantage right. in any of these maps. Both teams are so equally skilled and talented when it comes to every single game type. And I love what Clutch said on the desk as well. Wes was saying, you know, it's you can look at game types across the series in a best of five, and it gives you a good indication who might, who, who might have an advantage. But with a potential 14 games in front of us, if the bracket is reset, it just means whoever the better team is is going to win. You can't rely on game types because you're going to be tested on right. pretty much every single map and mode game type that we have in Halo Infinite. Right, and just like you said, it comes down to margins. And this wasn't necessarily the case in early on in year number one of Halo Infinite, but now deep in the game's life cycle, it absolutely is the case. It comes down to small moments, small margins, small back wax on the camo, for example, coming in from Eco. Taking a look at some attacking CTF stats here at Arlington between the two teams. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at average caps. It's Space Station who get more caps per game. But when you're looking at conversion rate, it's Optic who are just slightly ahead. So it seems like Space Station are pretty good at winning the games and getting to, shall we say, the max amount of caps. But when Optic get that flag moving, it's 50% you know, of them are going home, which is pretty damn impressive. It really is. That's not a stat you see often. It just tells you once again how objective efficient these two teams are. Just to give you ballpark numbers, it's much more common that 20 to 30% of pulls are scored across the board, even in the highest level of competitive Halo. This just indicates to you just how efficient these two are. I mean, you think of a pull, it's usually something thrown out initially. Usually right. it's not a perfect four dead scenario. And I mean, if you're able to turn a, a two dead with a flag pull into a convert, like you've seen from those stats on, on both sides, it's not it's not going to mess up here. 50% impressive for Optic, but 48 not bad as well from Space Station Gaming. It's not like there's a, a gulf in the numbers between the two. It just shows that if they get that moving, they are so good at collapsing on those final kills and clearing the way for their flag carrier that you can't really afford to let them in that base with those kills going down against you. But that's going to be the story of the next game, right? We're off to Empyrean. We've got three flags in front of us to win the game, or, of course, being ahead as we hit the time limit. And most exciting for everybody who's watching right now, we've got two snipers to play with. Got all the goodies, rockets, overshield, you name it, we got it. That's right. Another thing to mention, of course, is just how much time Dead Zone has with all three players on the other side of the stage. Of course, with the uh, with the uh, exception of Legend, he knows what these strats have been for the past 12 plus 24 months right before these players and how they played each of these game types. And you know that they're relying on him to say, here's what I'm expecting SSG to do. This is how we played it last year. And we'll have to see if they're going to be able to tap into that advantage, tap into those strategies and the knowledge coming in from Dead Zone. I'm not going to lie. I just had the, the hairs on my arm stand up for a second there as I saw Stella versus Lucid in the first fight we see with the sniper battle. It was nobody really won it. It's 1-1 one, one in body shots at the moment. But Legend is going to get the early rockets here for Space Station Gaming. Dead Zone. He knows what Stella can do, and Trippy's learning as well. Four dead again. Beautiful cleanups coming in. Already outslaying 7-2 to two 
on the side of SSG. All four players spawning on cuts and flag. We'll see if they can collapse here. Not going to be easy. This is where you wish you still had one rocket left, right? Yeah. Walk into the flag. Easiest overkill. Clip it, ship it, put it on social media, and get yourself one up on those flag caps as well. Bound is going to find out where all of Optic are, though. And I love that Space Station are showing just a little bit of patience here. Not overextending into that base, but also defensively, Optic have somehow got out of this. Yeah, let's see. Ooh, Dead Zone tries to oh fly gosh. out of the needles. Answered immediately. This would be something special from Stellar. That is a tall task. Like you said, credit to Optic Gaming. I think that was a really just nice back and forth respect shown from both sides because when you have four players spawning in the flag on paper, for example, in ranked, that could be an easy wipe. However, SSG knew that that's not going to be easy to take down all four players. Optic knew they had a good chance to push out, and they do just that. We'll stay here 0 0 with no pulls just yet. I, was say, I don't know what your ranked look games look like, but that's not a guarantee for my ones. <laughs> But going down inside of Sword at the moment. Bound's going to get the double, but trade it out. But there is a flag moving here. And it's going to be Legend who's going to be moving it for Space Station Gaming. It's a 2v2 on the map oh at the boy. moment. Formal has one bullet. And he has oh. Frenchman's brain to hit. Of course he hits it. Of course he hits that bullet. Stops the flag dead in its tracks. One dead for each side. Flag will not advance past Long Haul just yet. Return. Talk about, about the, the pressure here. That that I Come on. Crazy. Unbelievable. Leave it to Formal. Unbelievable setup there that there happens to be a sniper rifle with one bullet right next to him. It's like something out of a Hollywood film. Too dead for Optic Gaming. I can hear Breaking Benjamin in my ears just <laughs> as he picked it up. But Legend now going to be moving towards the green box. 20 seconds or so until the next set of rockets come up. Off the opening break, it was SSG who managed to at least get one of them. And it was Legend who got a kill with it. But a standoff around the 50 yard at the moment. You can see Eco and Bounder probably thinking about trying to make a move on the saw side. Legend's job right now is to hold down green and lock. But Optic are getting aggressive here. Here comes Formal, just trying to prenade it. Oh, oh, oh. oh prenade does hit. That's a two-man push coming in for Optic. However, they will lose two. 2v2 on the map. Rocket's going to go to Trippy, though. Eco, the last player alive, and Dead Zone just come off the respawn as well. So Trippy's smartly deciding, hey, you know what? If Eco doesn't show himself on green box to try and collect these rockets, I'm going to back up and wait for the help from my teammates. We've already Stella should be dealt with here, and now you can see the push is coming because they not only have rockets, they have the OV2. One player hiding in the mangler you just saw. We'll see if that is a factor here. Trippy might know about it. We'll see how he runs this. One player still on the needle is going to be bound. Bound's going to fly. Bound's going to fall. And now you're going to see Opti continue that flag run. Stella did get the sniper rifle off the respawn, though. We saw what Formal oh, did, no! and Stella, what on earth is that? Oh my god, you kind of got the feeling when you're on Stella's POV. He's coming out of S1, he's drop sliding, he's going to hit that shot. It's no, an unbelievable flag stopping play. I, I, you can, you're lying. <laughs> I knew it. it. There's no way I anyone expected it. him to hit that on those shields. But hit it, he does. Cool. I've been nah, the, we are, we're in for a treat here in this finals. Let me tell you why I've been on the receiving end of too many plays like that. I've seen it happening in his nightmare fuel. An unbelievable shot from Stellar back against the wall to stop that flag dead. Now a run for SSG starting. Lucid sneaking around the back tower though, and he's going to shut that down almost immediately. So it's going to be two dead and a sniper rifle back into the hands of the Optic Gaming Slayer. Eight minutes left in this game. No flag caps, but plenty to talk about. <laughs> I think everyone, little goosebumps on the arms, and everyone's kind of having a little bit of deja vu of late season Stellar from last year. Remember 2023 Legend late in the year where he was hitting every shot that he absolutely had no business hitting. That shot was unbelievable to fly out S1 essentially in a 1v3 and connect with the no scope in what feels like a violent fashion that might not even be legal in the state of Texas. I was gonna say, maybe get away with it in Texas, maybe not some other states. <laughs> Another kill here for Lucid as he tries to get aggressive on the courtyard. Stella will be last alive for his team here and still manages to get a kill. And it's an important one as well, because that means the respawns will more than likely come in on the long haul side around the Mauler. So Space Station could overextend. And I love this play from Stella. He's thinking, if the spawns come in behind me, then I'm going to have some support. But Optic read it. Optic shut it down. Even gets a death nade out there on Lucid. Not the first time we've seen Stellar using the Repulse in a very, very tactical way, right? He's not simply using it to kind of get out of situations. He's using it to not take damage in these very, very pivotal 1v1s and then push up across the map. Eventually, he's taken down. So we'll see if Optic can come off the back of that kill, maybe get some mid-map presence. How this game's going at the moment, I'm just going to put it out there that we just, we just play this every game. <laughs> In our grand finals. Legend has the rockets again though, and Trippy now as last alive. Stella has the overshield. 
And this is a worrying moment here for Optic because Stella's pretty pretty handy with normal shields. We've already seen that, right? But now he's got a bit extra to play with. Finally gets dinged. They're going to be happy that Dead Zone takes off essentially the rest of the overshield. We'll see what he can do here. I think they, they just couldn't find the last player alive there. You can see Stella's running around, checking corners, and I think it was Dead Zone actually. He was just hiding away in the mauler, and now he comes back out. Look, he gets that kill. And that's the kind of respect, again, yep. that's been shown by Space Station. They need to find that last player. They need to be aware of where he is before they move that flag. And what a grand final this has already been between these two. I think the winner's bracket final told us that it was going to be quite a good one, but tied one to one here in a stalemate. CTF Empyrean as well. Six minutes down, six minutes left, and we're still tied here, zero, zero to zero. Oh, making a flank here. Seen Oga 2 do something like this before, and he picked up a double kill. It's only one at the moment for Formal, but he's stolen the sniper away. And how pivotal could that be, Andy? Keeping out of the hands of Stellar and SSG could be the reason we see a flag cap. And here comes the push as well. He even had the help. Luce is going to try to get through long and overextend. No, he comes back to Needles. Keep an eye on green and long here. Formal just trying to find angles at the moment, but Space Station not showing. Eco gets the kill onto Dead Zone. He was the furthest player forward. Bounty's oh going to slide. Oh, my God. And Bounty's going to fall over. Too dead, though, for Optic. Formal threading a needle, what he's known for there, hitting an unbelievable shot. Now going to try to hold the angle. Nico refuses to play peekaboo with him oh. at the moment. Jeez, legend. Oh, courtyard. I mean, that long haul at the moment, there's a lot of French blood over it. Formal doing everything he can, paving the way, but Bound in the end is going to be the one that actually grabs that sniper. He does oh. it again! Triple kill for Bound on the cuts! Not the first time we've seen something like that from him this series. But what's it turn into? That's the question, right? We've seen Bound do this before. Gets an aggressive multi-kill on their opposition side of the map. And he opens up opportunities for Space Station to cap. Eco gets another, and all of a sudden, the spawns are staggered. Legend's moving that oh. flag, and Stella is set up to spawn kill. Still too dead here. It's an immediate double courtyard push going runway. Two players for Optic do get out. It's Trippy and Lucid, but they have to win these team battles. Oh! Stella's going to win it, though. Trippy, he'll fall as well. It's a double kill that shuts down the final two players as Legend slams the flag home for Space Station. Beautiful teamwork coming in from SSG. They're up by one. Beautiful teamwork and beautiful timing. Take a look at how late Formal died on the pit box. That was really important. I think everyone saw as soon as Formal died on the pit box that late, he's going to get an overshield in the end, though. We'll see if he can answer back. But you had two courtyard spawners. They try to go runway and under bridge up the training ramp. Stellar actually, with help, wins both of those battles. And Legend with a very, very efficient run back. That means SSG leads here 1-0 to zero after eight minutes of play with less than four on the clock. Legend's in a two-view. One here, he bought enough time to break the shields of one player and slow down the run, which is so important for SSG in this situation. Optic have got to regain, recompose, and re-kill if they want to move this flag. This time it's a two dead with a flag out, but there's a flying bound in here. Or oh, is that Stellar? Excuse me. Who manages to get the kills, but now he's lost the light. The flag is still out here for Optic. There's still a chance. Let's see what we can do right now. Just trying to play these angles very selectively. He, he gets the help he needed as well. Space Station are going to have that one go home. So Optic aren't able to get that touch on the flag was, that was away. It's still a one flag advantage here as we move into the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Worth noting, right after that flag cap, Optic Gaming was down seven kills. However, now only down two. So they're slowly getting back into this match in terms of the slate department. But the biggest concern for the green wall here is, of course, the game clock. There's just about three minutes left to play. Three minutes left to play, but there's time for a sniper rifle to come up. There's time for maybe Always a time. rocket to come up and potentially one more overshield. So are Optic gonna try and play around that? Bounce starts to waste sniper ammo. He was getting pressured there. Oh my gosh, just hitting everything that moves. And what looked like it was gonna be a harrowing situation is actually too dead for both sides, which provides Bound the opportunity to move into sword. Form gonna be there, Form was gonna body him. Bound gonna challenge it. This gives you an indication of the confidence of this young man. Not that we needed to know. Not that we needed to ask, I should say. Let's see Bound versus Formal on the sniper battle here, both on both same sides of the map. Formal gets the early body shot and will win the sniper battle as well. Big news for Optic Gaming, but just like that, picks up another one, a killing spree, a double for Formal. Let's see if he can continue on. Stanley got a shoulder peak. Formal not going to hit the shot. Trippy will slow it down, though, but all this pressure on the Optic side of the map is good for SSG. It means they're not over that halfway mark. They're not even close to infiltrating their base and not close to tying this game up with a second oh, no, flag no, cap. No. You saw it happening. 
And of course, Bound hits his shot. Oh my god, a lot of style points. Oh no, Dead Zone gets it. He's gonna stay oh, on wait, the map, isn't he? He stays on? What? Oh my, Dead Zone fakes it. He's coming off the map there. Somehow the shotgun misses as well. The overshield will be neutralized, but it keeps Dead Zone alive in his enemy snipe one. 144 left on the clock. This is big. Bound is chasing him, but Bound gets bodied. And now you're gonna see Dead Zone is a problem for Space Station. Optic trying to formulate this push. Eco down as well, and not for the first time in this series. It's X teammate that is causing Space Station's problem. That was three dead. Seller was your last player alive. It's a 1v1 here on the big oh! box. Somehow gets a back smack, but there's more kills to get. They have to slay one more time before the flag run. Eco goes into the flag. He throws a nade up onto no. the play. It's a brilliant nade, but the shots are pretty good as well. It's four dead. It's four dead for SSG. That's Optic Rally late. Unbelievable. Seller was your first spawner. He's already weak there on the sniper ramp, as you see. Let's see where the next spawns come in as well. Space Station still with some members in the death screen. Stella flies behind him and manages to get that kill. But Lucid, with no shields, has got the flag back to the Optic side. Now he needs to kill. Now he needs to slay. Or maybe he just pushes them all away. It's going to be a flag on the board now for Optic. They tie it up with 50 seconds left. Unbelievable play from Dead Zone. Let's not forget, off of that overshield play, he somehow stays on the map. He times the grab on the OV. He gets it full, and he stays alive. Even though the overshield was neutralized, he gets into the Court. He gets into S1 and with help gets the kill on bounce. Stellar was your last player alive. Green, he still stays alive for one more slay rotation. The patience out of Optic Gaming was brilliant. And now with 30 seconds left on the game clock, safe to say next flag's wins were likely going to overtime here. It's it's fascinating, right? So much to talk about. Lucid, of course, throwing the flag off to his teammates. But then having the repulse to force the player back through green is what causes that cap to go home without any trouble. Eight seconds wow. left on the game clock. Nobody in position to pull it for Space Station. And we are going to go to overtime here. Wow, what a game number three. And we will see the game tie here in round number one. And as you see on your screen, we are headed to overtime off of the late oh. game capture from Optic Gaming. <laughs> he started applauding with the game. <laughs> I was like, bring it on. I'm enjoying it. We are having a great time here in Arlington. We hope you are, whether you're joining us in the room or watching online as well, we hope you're enjoying just as much as we are. Very nice fadeaway from Formal against Eco's Rockets. We'll even things out here off of the opening break. By the way, Optic is now outslaying 80 to 76, despite trailing by 10 kills earlier. One thing that's interesting to talk about here is when we get to overtime, especially, especially when on a map like Imperium, where there's so much available off the break. Oh. If you win the opening Oops. break, you can win the game with a flag cap. Legend is in a position to put pressure on, and I'm pretty sure it was Lucid who was last alive with that snipe for Optic. Last player alive He's on dead. the cuts. He finally dead. gets taken down. Let's see how this plays out. They bought him a little bit of time, and Lucid makes sure that flag doesn't get ran right away. But with two dead for Optic, they need to be very careful here. Legend's got the support. Stella's there with a the sniper rifle on the long haul. Oh. Trippy's gonna take him down, and Trippy's gonna take the 1v1, but Stella as well, Formal gets the naded. It's a battle of the long haul, and Trippy gets two to keep the game alive. Bounds your last player alive. Surely, based on the map layout, there's no way he's in any position to challenge this one. This flag should go. Trippy's gonna go right away. Right now, all SSG players spawning in the court. You felt this is surely an SSG game, but now Optic Gaming are thinking counter cap. We can get this one going. It was Stella with the snipe on the long haul who couldn't Look hit the shots, but now it's dead zone who has it for Optic Gaming. Legend is alive in the cl Look, two players here, Bound and Legend have overextended all the way across the map into the Mangler. Can they stay alive? Not just stay alive. If they get these kills, then they may be able to counter cap the counter cap. It's counter cap on counter cap on counter cap. The return comes in for SSG as Optic fail their opportunity to win the game. Oh my god, what a set of plays back and forth. An absolute tug of war there on the long haul. And that's a tale as old as time as far as competitive Halo goes, dating all the way back to 2007. A beautiful thing to see. And off of the opening two minutes of chaos, we are still tied here in overtime. Catch your breath. That was a little bit too much for overtime. <laughs> They're going to be flying S1 at the moment, trying to survive. Trippy trying to keep the pressure on. and going to be a little bit more difficult for him to do as a teammate will fall elsewhere on the map. There's the force push again from the repulse. But it's going to be Optic Gaming, who's their push ultimately fails here as three players will fall. Dead Zone last alive again as the Rockets come up. A 1v1 here momentarily. Dead Zone versus Bound in the green hole. For the Rockets, Dead Zone wins it. Let's see if he can scoop those back. Not going to be easy with the pressure coming in, so it's good damage that SSG can capitalize off of. And the chaos continues here, <laughs> unsurprisingly, in green. Rockets will fall. Everyone is exploding in the green box. And while that's happening, Legend has decided, hey, you fight for the Rockets. I'm going to go and pick up the Overshield, and I might be able to flank all of the carnage, all of the problems, and pick up some kills myself. 
Knows that Lucid's on that training, and Lucid again. Such a small thing to talk about, but the way he buys time Amazing. for his team is so impressive. Stella finally deals with him. Dead zone in the 1v1. Legend will win that. It's new teammate against ex teammate, and he gets that flag moving once more with Optic 2 dead. He starts to run right away. He goes plat. Very oh my smart. God. Great movement coming out of Legend. He should be able to get through long haul. He does. Where are the nades? Not going to hit just yet. Has to slow down, though. Look at Formal. Look at Formal. Formal's got a sniper. They had no idea that Formal had snuck down the long haul. And Formal has almost single handedly stopped this. Eco gonna be trying to pressure him. Formal no stranger to pressure as Lucid picks up yet another kill. And now Legend is last alive inside of the. Oh flag. no! Do not leave Formal on your side of the map. I don't know what Legend did to Formal, by the way, but he hates him. <laughs> Unbelievable, back and forth. Dead zone will fall, formal will fall, however, so that flag may not see any more distance off of the flag stand. One minute 13 left in overtime, and you get the feeling after about 17 minutes of appearing in CTF that we're gonna see even more. I say this as genuinely as I, as I possibly can to everyone who's here and watching. I am casting this with the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous game of Imperium we've seen in some time. Seriously, I absolutely just, as we said, tug of war gameplay between these two, back and forth, just equally matched. And now 45 oh. seconds left on the clock, Bound continuing to rack up kills and assists on the board. Just a second again for the map to reset. Trippy will be taken down as Eco keeps his good teammate alive here bound on top of the tower. But the sniper rifle ammo is now out. 30 seconds remaining. Is there time for anyone to go forward? Does anyone want to risk it at this point, Andy? Great question. I don't. You're seeing right now with 20 seconds left on the clock, it would have to be a very, very fast <laughs> movement across the map to even get the flag off the stand. Well, there's one person who can move pretty quick and he's on your screen right now. His name is Bound. As maybe they're going to think about just wrapping back through for these rockets. Maybe thinking about wrapping through to make sure that no Optic Gaming member is in a position to pull that flag. And it looks like that's going to be it, everybody. And to, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, I'm pretty good with it. We have a replay being tied up. Oh, what a game. What a game. And as you said, I don't mind seeing more between these two. And we'll have to get word from the officials if this is a straight replay or if it will be the first to one based on the league rules. In the end, though, we can tell you Optic Gaming outslays 109 to 104, only by five kills in the end of the game. We need to talk about some of the numbers because Formal is dropping 40 bombs. Uh, he goes 40 and 20 in that game. I mean, three of the kills, I think, essentially stopped a flag cap or contributed to a flag cap. It was pressure kills with that sniper rifle in his hand, right? I mean, you think about the first one on Legend. Legend, all that Formal can see when he picks up a sniper rifle with one bullet in, one bullet, by the way, as all of his teammates are dead, is the top of the Frenchman's head. Yep. And he hits it. He hits it to stop that flag. A little bit later on, kills Legend again inside of the flag. I, I honestly don't know. Formal, Un Formal hates Legend. Unbelievable. By the way, Formal on your first BR, you, you got to ask on the Space Station side, there was a little bit of a flag delay, which indicates to me maybe they knew that someone could have been on their side. Maybe someone grabbed their snipe. But if you have Formal sitting on your first BR and then in your Mangler, you're in trouble, right? We're trying to get back across the map. And that's exactly what happened. Formal hits the shots that he needed to to buy the time. They even started that run. In the end, that flag didn't go. But as we said, it has been a game of margins between these two. If Formal doesn't hit that single shot from the sword to the long haul, yep. that flag goes as well. And we're going to continue to see more and more of that as we get to see even more Imperian CTF. Some players in the world who live for these moments, right? Live for grand finals, live to make the big plays that you remember for quite some time. And, and Formal is one of them. He's done it for his whole career, right? But it seems like you watch Formal play on a Friday and a Saturday, it's like, cool, it's Formal. He's playing some really good Halo. But when it gets to Sunday, and when it gets to the big moments, he just becomes a different beast. He becomes the player that is one of the most historic esports, you know, historically celebrated esports players we've ever had. He just has this ability to hit the shots when they matter. Yep. I mean, that's really all it is. And I, you, we're living through a very special time. Formal across so many titles. They call him the FPS GOAT for a reason. The fact that you get to see Formal playing on a grand final in a main stage in the Optic Arena, I mean it when I say we will look back on these days as very special times in esports. And he's hitting the shots that he needs to. We also have confirmation from League Ops, of course, in an Imperian CTF replay after overtime also ends in a tie. It will be first flag to win. First flag to win then. So pretty crazy that we, I felt like we only, uh, it's, it's weird to me that we only had one flag apiece with how much carnage went down right. there and how many opportunities there were to, to score flags that weren't taken in those big moments. But here we are. It's essentially a shootout.
That's it. And really, as you say, oftentimes when you have a game to one, let's keep in mind, in overtime, it's a little bit higher stakes due to the limited time on the clock. However, keep in mind that in a reset, you will see 12 minutes on the clock. So you're going to see a lot of aggression off of the rip. If a team gets a clean four dead, it could end so quick, which will be surprising yep. based on what you just saw. However, it's not that uncommon to see a team get a really clean wipe off the opening and end overtime within just a few minutes of and play. I wonder if there's going to be a change up in starting strategy as well because of that. You'd imagine think, so, yeah. You know, you're looking at how closely fought that game was, even in overtime. The fact that you have Rocket Snipe and Overshield coming up right at the start of the game, you've just had the opening strategy twice with the restart, with the replay, excuse me, the overtime that we saw. Does anyone take that risk? Does anyone try and think we can win this game if we try and counteract what we've seen in the opening strategies? Because it, it could work, of right. course, but if it goes wrong, then you're looking back at it and going, ah, maybe we should have stuck with what we were uh, originally going to go with. Yeah, given kind of the makeup of these two teams in terms of personality and the way they approach the game, I think you are going to see a difference in starting strategy just because these teams, as we said, they're assembled to win games. They're assembled to make very quick decisions on the fly, not to simply match the status quo and what they've done previously. So I'm expecting to see a little bit of a different opening. The question will be in that chess match, which players are able to get the early advantage. One thing you also have to mention is just how patient these two teams have been in their run runs just because of how high risk it is to even try to get a pull too early. For example, how about once again, Dead Zone staying alive in S1 around the pit box. He gets a lucky back whack on Stellar. Then they slay again, right? They're really taking their time here because they know if you if you mess up your chance, you may not get another offensive chance. And if you mess up your defensive chance, your flag is going to the other side of the map. I mean, I guess it's an opportunity to kind of review what we saw in that overtime, right? Because we saw the opening break. We saw Lucid is last alive with the sniper. Somehow he lives long enough for Optic to fight and gets a kill on cuts and then we see that carnage happen down long haul we're like oh ssg have this they're halfway down stella's looking at legend with that sniper rifle he's the perfect bodyguard and then the counter cap comes in and we're like optic have got the opportunity now everyone from ssg is scarpering around stella hits the most ridiculous shot you've ever seen in your life and then before you know it, it the battle of long haul is over and no flag to cap somehow. And also credit to both teams on their overextensions. And on, in that overtime alone, you saw multiple plays where it was legend and bound in their opponent's mangler. You also saw, one, as we said, formal on his opponent's first BR. Those players that know to overextend immediately, whether it's a top of the runway spawn, a courtyard spawn, a pit box spawn, they fly out immediately and make it so difficult for the opponents. If you think of the timing that this game type played in Halo 3, you had a lot more time due to the movement speed of the game where you knew if a player was going to be, for example, training under bridge coming runway coming sword however with drop slides in this game someone who spawned out front s1 could be in your courtyard in your runway on your training pit very very fast or as we saw even on your first br so just amazing movement off the rip from both teams on those over extensions it's interesting as well to talk about the strategy because i was talking to wonderboy the foe coach as well and he was saying our whole strategy against space station was control their mauler make sure we're in their mauler for as, as long as we can in this game and they were like Space Station, they kind of played the game and they were like, Space Station should let them have it. Yeah. And they were like, really confused. But then they were like, oh, they're just playing sword side and wrapping back round on us. They were almost baiting them in to trap them on the way back. Right. So that's how good at Space Station are at adapting to what they see from teams. And I think you saw it there, right? They're like, oh, we've given up Mauler. Hey, let's wrap through as quickly as possible and try and fight back to our side of the base. And if we win it, we can. Yeah, that really brings up a great point too, because there's so much power and numbers in Halo Infinite in general. However, especially on this map, these teams are desperately trying to just stay together on the map as they advance. And we are back underway. Sudden death, double overtime here. Next flag will win. I'll be honest, I needed the break. Anyway, <laughs> two minutes. Uh, sort of say two rockets, excuse me. I'm going to be picked up here by Trippy, and they are pretty much uncontested by the looks of things. And this is looking like a very strong start for Optic Gaming. Stella up on his island, up on the tower. Oh, oh, oh and my somehow god. Or other does not care that Trippy has rockets. How cool. How cool and calm can you stay on top of your turret when you have a rocket player, Trippy no less, flying at your top snipe ramp, and he just hits the perfect timing on the jump, the body shot, and the melee doesn't even trade with rockets. What a counter from Stellar. Well, Stellar's gonna have to do it again though, because Formal was picking up snipes. Oh, that was a oh, rocket. Oh. <laughs> oh, god. Trippy, that was Trippy again. <laughs> Could you imagine? Trip, Trippy goes into Rod Review on a Thursday or a Friday. <laughs> like they were talking about it. It's like, I don't care what you say. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I cannot believe that. Stellar has Trippy's number and he's in. Ooh, boy. But Formal also answers back with a shot from the long haul, which means two dead for SSG. Look at the team makeup here. Can Dead Zone make a play on the third player? This is a really big 1v1. Legend gets one. Ooh, it's what a, a trade. trade. What a trade from Eco. 
If he goes down there with Formal on the long haul, there's an opportunity for them to get that flag through the needles and maybe towards the optic side of the map. That's the margins. That's what we're talking about. A trade is a talking point. Especially because Bound had already made the decision to go sword. If he was doubling back to cuts, it would be a different story. However, Eco getting that trade on the flag prevents the run entirely. Stellar, not done yet, but man, back and forth between these two. What will separate them here in Empyrean CTF as we've now played a little bit over 20 oh minutes my. of this game time? I mean, it's just a shot you expect him to hit. It's not like it's a an easy shot either. It's just an easy shot for Stella. Just rips Formal apart. Oh. Trippy down as well, and this is starting to look worrying. The only good news is he's got no sniper rifle ammo left, but he might find a little bit here if he gets this trade. Dead zone. He will fall. Formal is last alive, and Formal is trying to buy time. Eco gets the touch. Legend will get the kill, and maybe this is the moment for SSG. They're going to drop. Whoever gets their shields first will continue that run. This flag is good. Big kill there from Lucid, but there's more work to be two? done. How do they get two kills inside of the base? From there, the flag is pretty much dead. Stellar and Bounder last alive. And Optic again with a last moment. Goal line stand defensively as the Rockets are back up. What a win from Lucid on the flag ramp facing first BR. He gets the fadeaway, just drops into the flag. And as you said, there was more work done off screen we didn't get to see. But Legend and Eco were both taken down by the Optic spawners and we will stay here scoreless. Lucy got a little bit of flank here around the Rockets because he knew he didn't have the numbers. Gets one onto Stella. But it is going to be Space Station who get the Rockets for now. Eco retreats to his side because he knows someone's here and manages to get the kill. Optic are three dead, but as you can see, Formal gets the extra Rocket. And now, Bound is going to be last alive and Formal's got your wow. snipe. And this might be the win condition, right? Even if Formal throws this off the map, if you keep it oh. out of the hands of Stella, then Optic can take over. Look at the timing, it's like, oh, oh my, my god. Somehow finally gets taken down, it was like clockwork there, just grabbing the rocket, hitting the splash damage, finishing the kill, oh, oh god. And now Lucid takes down Stellar. I can't even get a single thought out without another highlight reel, highlight reel clip coming onto your screen. What a match. Pick a POV, as long as they got a sniper, it's gonna be entertaining. There's one thing we can guarantee, Legend and Stellar though. Get the kills to clean out their side of the base, and Lucid has to retreat. Eco, I was gonna say, might be in a slightly advanced position here, but Formal's dealt with him. As now it's a full rotation on the map towards green and long haul for Lucid. Looking at those sword angles, if anyone pokes, well, you know, you know what happens. First, first player to fall is Trippy. Let's see if Lucid and Optic oh, Gaming can hold the answer back with a snipe. Let's get into a listening with Optic Gaming. Watch out, there's two. They're training, they're training. training, 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 training. Ah, back up, man, back up, man. Back up. Watch out, they're training, sniping. Watch out, they're training, sniping. Yo, get in the sword if you can. Do the training, do the training. Under bridge, under bridge, under bridge. There's anyone there. Yo, sniping yeah. on the short box. I kill snipe, I kill snipe. Watch the training, watch the training, watch the training, watch the spots. Down on all the all the way. Shot their training as well. Shot their training. Watch out, they're here. Two, 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 two. two, also. That's two, also. That's two, also. Yes, dude. Train the corner, every guy. He's still weak, still weak, and I got their S2L. Jump in the court, jump in the court. They're turning down. They're gonna get the there's two still. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two there's two, two, two there's two. Three, three there's two. Two more, two more. They're trying to kill me, they're trying to kill me. Runway on Tommy, runway on Tommy. Yeah, yeah. old OB, old OB and runway. They're gonna turn. I killed, I killed there's still there. another guy around sword. They have a sniper and sword right now, sniper and sword going our sword. Weapons? Yeah, we got to their needles. Our sword was, no, back to their sword. Their sword was sniper. Are you ready to flank for these weapons? Just one fucking third. All our absolute. Yeah, one shot there. There's a guy in sword. There's a guy there. Bounce, you got a repulse in there. Close. Short time. Two weeks. One shot. One shot inside sword. Yes. Stop. One shot inside sword. One shot inside sword. Come on, Rock. Oh, what's going through going? I think here's something going on. Truck. 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 Yeah, our second has to leave. One shot. Green weak. Our green weak. Our green weak. Our green weak. Three shots. I didn't play OV. Yeah. He has it. He has it. He's going. He's just sitting on OV. Sitting on OV. S2. 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 Nice. Still has OV sword side. He has OV sword side. Sword side. They're training, which one? They're training, training. I got shots away, I got shots away. Shoot, nothing, 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 nothing. Midbridge, one shot, one shot the sword, one shot the sword. Okay, okay, stay alive, stay alive, hold the angle, Joey, hold the angle, Joey. We're good, we're good, that's what we get. Just watch our angle. Sword, 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 or treat on me. Space Station, four dead. Optic with the flag back. Formal sends the crowd wild as Optic will finally win the game. That Imperium. CTF will be remembered for quite some time. Nearly 25 straight minutes played of Empyrean CTF, and you don't always get to see that much of a game type between two teams. And you very rarely get to see two teams that are this evenly matched. That match and the overtime and the sudden death replay are certainly indicative of that. In the end, it will be Optic Gaming off the back of huge kills from Lucid and Formal that will take the overtime win and take game number three. One of the craziest things about Halo Infinite is 
you keep thinking you've seen it all right. You keep thinking that surely these players cannot get any better. The performance with the precision weapons in that game from so many names, Formal, Stella, Lucid, that run he went on at the end of overtime there, just shows. This is the level we're playing at these days. One bullet, one kill for Formal. That will live long in the memory. Unbelievable, you called it too, seeing just how many shots were left in that weapon. Formal knew just how many shots were left in that weapon as well. This in itself was an un... Look at the angles that Formal's pulling here. He's been sniping from sword for many, many years, going on well over a decade from that position and just answered back. There's a triple kill on your screen once again from Bound. This entire game just felt like a... You could make a montage, I think, from that 25 minutes of Imperial CTF, and I would absolutely love it. Throw some Breaking Benjamin on it, call it good. Ooh. Export. <laughs> This is the play from Dead Zone. Take a look at this. Him, the 1v1 versus Teller, he knows he has to stay alive here. They get a really confusing battle here. Stellar starts to go up pit box, as you see, kind of just phase through each other there. Unfortunate for Stellar as Dead Zone picks up kind of the benefits of that engagement and in the end continues to slay. But even this flag was not enough there. A little bit of a team nade coming in on Dead Zone, slowed things down maybe just a bit, but an unbelievable game. I think a game already that I will never forget in terms of Grand Finals Halo matches. Yeah, it is absolutely superb. Uh, uh, no, it's just exceptional talent, exceptional skill on display from everybody on the stage. But even though we can wax lyrical about what a great game it was, the result is that Optic Gaming win it. They are up two to one in the series now, Andy. And that is massive for them. Just a reminder if you're just joining us, and a pretty good time to join us after that game. Optic need to reset the bracket here. Space Station have the advantage. They will have to win this series before they can go into a series to call themselves champs. And just such an unbelievable game just to, to uh, once again be an example between these two to see just how evenly matched, not just they are, of course, overall, which is quite obvious based on the series results so far that we've seen in these games. However, just each individual battle, it feels like every single time that you feel like a team is starting to pull away and they get a man advantage, a player in a key position hits the shot that they need to. And it, it's, we're so lucky to see a continuation of last year where we really started to see this peak of competitive gameplay and such small differences between these teams. And you're seeing it on display here yet again in 2024. I mean, the expectation now of the shots for these players to hit, right, is just, it's something that we've never seen before, in my, in my personal opinion. You know, you're seeing Lucid there, bounce slides through Sword. And my expectation is not that it's going to take two bullets and a body shot, whatever it might be. It's that he's going to headshot him. And that's exactly what happened in that game. But that's going to have to go into the history books to be revisited once again at another time. An incredible, incredible match of Empyrean capture the flag. But it now has to be laid to rest as we look forward in this series. Optic Gaming up two to one. And now we get some recharge opal. It is wild to think that we are only three games into this series so far as it feels like we have been on this main stage already for quite some time. We'll take a look once again at the oddball recharge records for both of these teams and how fitting both of them are undefeated in the map here surprise, in, surprise. in Arlington. And this is maybe a, game, a series tying game for SSG. They want to still think about closing it out here. However, think about it. If Optic Gaming closes out this game and goes up three to one, you might start to see some bets going down on the second best of seven. If I had to pick it up, uh, game type, excuse me, that I believe Space Station excel in, I would say it's oddball though. This is their kind of game type. And Optic will know that as well. They're gonna have to be so disciplined in those holds and make sure they don't give those numbers away too comfortably for Space Station to get those setups. But it, it's an interesting match of styles here, isn't it? We talk about Optic Gaming in these odd balls. They like to get a setup. They like to hold areas of the map. Space Station are more happy to move a little bit more transitionally, right? Two players alive, if they can get that odd ball in a 2v2, they'll hold it. They'll move it away from those spawners. But off the rip here, it's gonna be Formal who gets that first camo and he's gonna get those first kills too. A tail as old as time. It's Formal with the shock and the camo in the pipe. Three were dead. Minor man advantage should be able to grapple the ball and start to collect some time. How many players do we see miss that, by the way? Quite a few, especially in my rank games. <laughs> Formal does not make that mistake, though. Gets the obble back to his teammates with that grapple. And now goes to work with the shock rifle. No one to hit quite as yet. Legend might be the first target. But somehow, Eco managed to sneak through the pipes there. Just as the attention was taken away, he finds the double and immediately turns his brain to objective mode. Interesting. I think maybe Optic was thinking about a rotate, but then there was pressure coming in as it was four dead for Optic Gaming. A really, really nice counter from SSG as they're going to start to score here, put some points on the board, and a very nice pre nade coming in from Eco on top gold as well. They're now going to hold in pipes. It felt like Optic was thinking for a split second to ro whirlpool rotate, but they had to do a little bit of an awkward 
awkward play ball to the batteries, which was not really the, the normal play ball to bottom mid that you'd want to see, really getting that well into batteries. It made for SSG for an easy pickup. And now, just like that, they lead in the game. By the way, what a start this is from Eco in this game. He's six and one, positive five, with only 28 seconds or so of ball time for his squad. But this has been a very, very strong pipes hold at the moment for SSG. Legend and Stellar are going to pick up more kills as well. And with the camo coming up, I'm interested to see what the play is called is from both sides. Do SSG think about maybe throwing that ball out and fighting for the camo? Or do they just hold the setup and hope they can force a burn? Very nice job here, Eco grappling back. Making sure to change angles, but also holding shield. Look at Trippy with camo. Big, big play here. One dead for each side. Ball dropped. Goes for that ball carrier immediately as well. And you can see SSG, they know. They know there's a camo player around somewhere, so they throw that ball out. Bound can sniff him out. Bound's trying to get the kill, but Dead Zone was there to support the Trippy as the attention was dragged away. It's two dead hit for SSG, and Optic have the ball in their hands. Surgical from Optic Gaming. Once again, how many times in this series alone have we seen Trippy taking his time with the power up? He does it so well. Waits for the help from Dead Zone as well. Very selective in kind of his target engagement, making sure he's getting damage with taking minimal damage. And just like that, Optic Gaming brings the ball game back drop. within six. Four more turn with the snark. With the shock rifle now. Dead zone and Eco are gonna trade meantime. Bound's gonna fly and bound. Stay alive for now. Former gets to clean up damage onto Legend and now he turns his attention back to Bound, but he decides that Needle's fight is what he fancies for the time being. 2v2 on the map right now. Lucid around the batteries. He has the ball. Bound with that ball in his hands. And every time they touch that ball and they reset it, it just causes a problem for Optic. Do we play for the kills? Do we play for the ball? With two dead, you can tell Lucid got the go signal there. It's green light for Optic on the elevator collapse. They're going to be able to grab that one as well. That's Enemy a staggered two ball. dead for the side of SSG. You see a player in pipes that Form was already engaging with. If they pick up both of these and continue to trap in long haul, this will be more time on the board. And we will see a lead change now. Optic Gaming goes into the lead in round number one. They go into a lead, and not only the lead, oh, Andy. They go into Enemy a position of such power. Look at this setup they have. It's ball almost drop. the perfect setup. If this was strongholds, they'd be holding A and B, watching those crosses. As Lucid now tries to take down Eco as well. Ball inside drop. of the turbine. Eco's last player alive in the position of power. The it ball. continues. It's a four dead. It's a clean wipe for Optic. The lead will extend. Really, really good damage across the board. You saw Lucid, even though he knew he was going Enemy down in the whirlpool, he knew to get those two or three shots with the bandit into that final player. As Eco, he had no prayer of getting out in pipes. Now it's a little bit of a rotate coming in from Optic as they start to move things toward pipe and gold, but still holding down an elevator as well. Shroud is down bottom middle as well. Falling from the heavens is going to be a space station player. That's going to be Eco, And at the perfect time as well, because this was the opportunity that Optic needed by picking up the camo to turn things around before. Well, it's exactly the same now that space station get it, because Optic are four dead. They have a full setup, and Bound still has the camo. Wow, the timing is dangerous, as you say. It's a four dead, but it's just after Bound got the camo, so he's able to get the fifth kill as well. Lucid is the first to fall, which will now mean more points on the board, and space station ensuring that Optic doesn't run away with the round one just yet. It's an 11 point game. You get the feeling by the time the Optic are even able to push, this is going to be essentially a tied round. Formal going to be challenging. Oh, Formal with a big, big win. Maybe the extra bullet that came across from elsewhere was good enough to help him out in that fight. But four dead now for Space Station. Optic do get four on the map, and they get four dead. It's a perfect break again from Optic Gaming. And tons of effort on the comeback here. Look at the push right away. Wow. SSG tried to go fast. Will this one bite them in the butt as they get taken down? And they're still on staggered spawns, which means more points on the board for Optic here. Big push coming in, big 1v1. Legend gets one. Legend still alive, by the way, on the elevator. Dead wow. trying to buy time, but Legend breaks through the setup almost single-handedly. Kills two, it's three dead, it's four dead, essentially, for Optic Gaming. And the Frenchman takes over. SSG have a chance now to tie this game up if they can get their hands on that oddball. How Quadrant-esque to even when you're down a man, you fly in the bottom elevator door, and you just start making some noise and getting some kills. Just like that, we're tied here at the 83-point mark off a great counter coming in from SSG. They go into the lead now. Trippy gets the kill though. And SSG are going to have to think about play ball. And this is such a precarious position because if SSG play, then Optic have control of pipes. They're going to be able to gather that ball up almost immediately. Eco knows it. It's a race here to pipes. Player. Last player alive is Eco. Eco has big responsibility here. It's 91 to 83. This could be the last play of the game. Oh, he's going to cut it down though. Look at this. Eco by rotating all the way through gold. Moves exactly Look the play call that comes in from Optic. Legend gets.
gets one as well. Eco might have just won the game for SSG with his decision making. He holds the ball in his hands, and now Optic will have to watch as Eco might have closed this out. Trippy goes for the hero play ball. It doesn't go. Eco chases him down. The last ditch effort. It's not enough. Space Station will get the round one win on a huge comeback. It looked like it was over from the elevator push. It was a perfect four dead for Optic Gaming, but Space Station foot on the gas pedal immediately. With a man disadvantage, they push and they catch Optic Gaming off guard. They win round number one. We'll have plenty of time to talk about that play from Eco that won them the round and the decision making that won them the round. But for now, we're straight back into the action. The first camo is going to be picked up here. You can see the Bound does not want any part of Dead Zone. Say to his teammates, please kill this guy for me. And Stella will say, okay, I'll kill him, but as long as I can have the camo afterwards. The ball. That Santa hat, invisible for just a moment here. We'll see what he can do. Terrible time of the year for that. <laughs> really terrible. Really hot in Texas as well. Quite muggy. Early seven points on the board for the side of SSG. He's going to swoop around the midbridge, pick up another one. That means it's two dead for Optic Gaming. Ever so slight lead here in this round as well. Just seven points, but it's enough. Stella was still with that camo. Trying to nade that ball back, I think. Our SSG and gonna find an optic sandwich down here at the bottom of the stairs two players stacked up on top of each other it was a killing spree but here comes dead zone again trying to force that play ball and that's exactly what he will do gets the kill as well onto legend can he turn two doesn't need to formals alongside him it's three dead for ssg and lucid is immediately on that ball stellar's last player alive and it's staggered there so that's going to be a little bit even more timing coming in for optic but look how low scoring this is we have one minute off of the game clock so far however it's only seven to seven you can just tell the team's really preferring to get as much slaying control as they can before they hold Mount being a nuisance. Oh, oh, Mount being oh. more than a nuisance almost for Formal there. But Formal does get that kill. Opal still in the hands of Optic as the score will go up. And Lucy trying to rotate towards Spawners, trying to rotate towards his teammates. Gets cut down momentarily, but Trippy does have that shock rifle here for Optic Gaming. So Eco's going to be under some pressure. What, what shot did Trippy just hit, by the way, as he's flying in the gold off screen? You saw he gets, gets the headshot. And look at this, Eco just making sure that no time's going to happen. No time going to tick up for Optic, just plays the ball and buys a lot of time for Space Station. Just puts that ball in such a horrible position for Optic, it almost rolled all the way towards his spawning teammates as well. And now, once again, the king of the pipes is Eco in this game. Two dead for Optic Gaming. Stella's going to get that camo. Let's see if Stella can stay alive. This would be huge. He had help in pipes, but he gets taken down. Three dead in the end. Legend was your last player alive. It was a 1v2 momentarily. All reset. All reset. Incoming. Lucy checking those elevator spawns to make sure that no one from Space Station Gaming has snuck through. Now he turns his attention towards Bound, but Bound had already picked up a kill there. Trippy will trade it out. Stella's flying in to try and deal with Lucid. It's a 1v1. Everyone's sliding everywhere. There's bubbles. There's all sorts going on. It ends in a trade. <laughs> of course it ends in a trade. How <laughs> else would it end in this series? Three dead for Optic for a moment. Formal is your last player alive. We'll see if that affords the opportunity for Space Station to grab the ball, but no. Because Formal's chilling pizza. Sounds awfully good right now. The longer this grand final goes, Trippy stays alive in Whirlpool as well. They try to hold down this area, but it's a big push coming in. Formal answers back on the elevator door. Formal, no right really to come out of that with his life. You expected a trade, but he just got that little bit of extra damage in before bounded. Legend trying the same trick again as last time, but Formal's learned from those mistakes that Optic made before. The turbine belongs to Optic for now. As does the score still, it's so low scoring. It really as is. Both teams just headbutting each other for kills. It really is. It's a very, very different round than round number one. You can tell these teams realize just how much is on the line here. We're one round away from Space Station, essentially tying up this series. And Optic Gaming just wants to desperately get this next game on the board to be one game away from resetting the bracket. And surprise, surprise, it's 62 kills to 60 in favor of Optic Gaming, only separated by two. Stella tried to play ball, but Formal caught the ball. And now, Lucid had that shock rifle as well. So it's going to be shock rifle for Optic Gaming and the pipe setup that gave them so much time at the start of the first round. If they could put it to use in the same way, control the map in the same way, and oh let Formal do what he wants then this will be an extension of that lead for Opti. Ooh, gets big damage on form, unbound, excuse me, but unable to take down that last kill. However, based off of the first two kills, that buys them a lot of time. Now here they are scoring 43 to 15. Camo up as well. Trippy trying to move and think about a play ball, but not going to be able to get that ball out into a position where it's not going to be challenged. They're in the 1v1 with Trippy. Trippy will win it. That's two big kills, but Formal now last alive. Where did that camo go? Eco, he's got it in the back pocket. Decides wow. not to pop it quite yet. Again, brilliant decision making from Eco. So many players would have forced the burn there, but he knew he could win that 1v1 and survive with that camo. He also leaves Lucid there as well. That's going to be three dead now for Optic Gaming. Ball is still down on that 
Oh, Eli Ledge, and just as Bound jumps up to grab it, it resets. Just as I was about to say, how long has that ball got left on it before it resets? Yeah, let's see what the play call is here. Eco still with the camo in hand. Let's see what they can do here. Or listen in with Space Station Gaming. Needles in dead zone. Trippy was like bottom mid, guys. Yo, Trippy, watch out. Yeah, yeah. Triple, triple, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. She's serious, I think, guys. Yeah, yeah, top right, watch out. Or battery's dead. Nice get up, she's dead. Trip up, trip up, Rick. Bog up, bog up, bog up. Yo, last guy's too flat, last guy's too flat. Let's try to kill him and bring Bossy. Watch beer, watch beer, watch beer. Watching Bossy. Tommy, Tommy, gonna kill him. Look, 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 look. Kill me, kill me, kill me. He's triple, triple, triple. Oh, 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 Nice, nice. Event. That's two games in That's time, two games in time, time, time. That's a lot of time. Watch the middle Watch the middle man. Rich, 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 I suck one, I suck one. Nice camo, guys, we get this camo. Yeah, yeah, bottom it, bottom it, formal. Bottom it, bottom it. Camo's up now. Yeah, bottom it, bottom it. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, watch it. Watch it, triple. Yeah, no camo, on camo, guys. Triple. Nice, on camo. They have camo, watch it, camo, watch it. Watch out, grab one. Yeah, okay, camo, watch it. Nice, triple, camo, camo, camo. Spawn day. Spawn day, spawn day. Watch out, 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 C plat, hold C. Is it weak or no? No, no, no. I'm watching for the rest of the game. Axe ball time, 54 seconds left. Long reach, long reach, long reach. Okay, she's pulling me. Wait, but I'm going. Are you dead, Legend? No, 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 no. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. But I'm in that. No, I'm dead. Watch out, but I'm in that. Watch out, Shady, watch out, Shady. Look at Shady, look at Shady. After Shady, after Shady. And put your mind, your mind, your mind. After Shady, your mind, your mind, your mind. After Shady, your mind, your mind, your mind. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yo, bottom mid, bottom mid, bottom mid. Camel jump, camel jump. He's grappling at me. I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Top right, top right, top right, top right. Two shots, two shots. Yeah, we got me, we got me. Look at ball, look at ball. Watch out for us, watch out for us. Two more pipes, I think. No pipes, no pipes. Watch out, one tower. One tower, one tower. 30 seconds, one second. Now they're listening and into the lead. Space Station Gaming, they're ahead, but only just for a second as Optic finally gets some kills and Optic go back into a lead themselves. Unbelievable back and forth here coming in. We'll see three dead. This could be the final hold here for Optic if they pick up a few more kills off of this next SSG push. And Formal has the jump. This is big damage. Those are your last two. That could be the round right there with the last two SSG players starting to push. The reason I say no is because SSG just served the game to Optic. They run in without looking. They force it too quickly. And now they're going to lose the round because of it. And now they're going to lose the game because of it. Optic gifted the game in the last moment and they will gladly accept. Wow, unbelievable. They tie the game up here one to one in rounds and back and forth. Finally, Optic Gaming goes back in the lead in Slays. They're out 91 to 88. I cannot stress enough how unbelievably close the kills have been specifically in these objective game types as well. It was a great listen from Space Station. Keep in mind, they were trailing by about seven or eight kills and about 40 points. They bring the game all the way back to come into the lead at the 80 point mark, but Optic Gaming closes it out, as you said. Space Station trying to play their trademark fast play. They're trying to fly through tower. That's not going to be easy. You're going to get baited into those plays by Formal. They catch him off guard, and Formal gets huge damage that essentially secured the round win. Yeah, I mean, the, the level of Halo has been so high. I think SSG just panicked a little bit at the end of that round. Maybe they thought they didn't quite have as much time as they did to formulate that push. They try and get over aggressive, and it just, like I say, falls into the hands of Optic. We deserve to be and earn the right to be in that position to force it. A couple of dead on either side at the moment. 3v3 in deaths. It's only Stella and Trippy are alive at the moment, and they're nowhere near each other. Let's see. Going to push, push in. Tries to get the 1v1. Trippy drops, grabs the ball for a second. Where are the spawns? And Stella, as a result, gets the ball, and he's going to scarf her away, but still with shields to play. Look at the movement coming out of him as he just ushers this thing back very, very gently. It's an elevator hold for SSG. I mean, such a big win for a number of reasons, Why? The obvious one is he wins the 1v1. That's great. You give yourself a number. But by winning the 1v1, the elevator spawns coming for the rest of SSG. He can wrap back around to elevator, hold that ball, and get that little bit of map presence they needed as it just continues to put the pressure now onto Optic. But surprise, surprise, Optic aren't to back with some shots themselves. First one to Falls Eco there. The kills will be traded out. Bottom elevator again. Two dead for both sides. Teams tied 101 to 101 in kills. <laughs> this has been unbelievable between these two.
And once again, it's a very similar in terms of the amount of points on the board mark round here in round number three. It's only five to two with look how much time has come off of the game clock as a result. This one's ticking away pretty fast. Finally, SSG will grab it. Maybe think about a rotate here. They throw to bottom tower. I mean, it, the there's been no room for a full setup yet. No team has been three, four dead. It's been 2v2v2 2v2 for pretty much the entirety of this game. And maybe this is the first opportunity we're going to see for a full setup. Space Station will lose all four members. Trippy gets the camo off the back of it. The oddball is at oh. blue as Eco explodes on the batteries. And maybe this is what they needed, the side of Optic Gaming. Oh! They certainly wanted it. They pick up another one. Trippy with the camo and the shock. They call him Big Game Trip for a reason. Might pick up another one here. Eventually, he'll be traded out. Two dead for both sides, three dead. Lucid is your last player alive for Optic here in Long Haul. Lucid is gonna find Legend in front of him. Go! Oh, oh my god, he explodes him! Right. Dave Walsh, wherever you are in the world. He's in the, the building. Wall. Yeah, he actually. He's smiling in the building there after the insta explode from Lucid. How many times is Lucid as your last player alive doing wild things like that? I was gonna say, Walsh, wherever that happens in the world, and Walsh is, he just sits bolt upright. Just yeah. in the middle of the night. <laughs> Just knows a bad signal goes up. He knows there's been an insta bloat somewhere. <laughs> and the entire Walsh family, they smile. 35 to 7 here in our round number three. Trying to force another play ball here. Shroud will go down just to keep Stellar alive for a few extra seconds, but the extra seconds aren't enough for Lucid to think about changing his decision to chase him down. Eco's last alive here. 35 to 7 is the score. And Optic have been in control more than I think we've seen him in any round so far as they get another two dead, but hey, surprise, surprise, it's two dead on either side once more. Yes, they were really patient to get their points on the board. Look at Seller somehow staying alive, and once again, just beautiful 1v1s coming in here, and Dead Zone will eventually be taken down as well, one dead for each side, as trying to see a hold come together for Optic Gaming. See what Lucid could do from bottom mid. Lucid might have a really good flank on these two players, by the way. If he can win these fights, then there could be an opportunity for a setup. He knows Bound's still here. He's taking damage in the back as well. He takes the 1v1, he accepts wow. it. Bound will win that fight eventually, but there's the damage in the back. The That's what keeps those numbers a little bit more sane. SSG have the ball in elevator, but they're very split across the map at the moment. The big question was, where was Trippy? He was the last guy alive for just a second. He's a staggered kill coming in at glass, which means this will be more points on the board. Seller maybe thinking about a rotator, a play ball here. Right now he's trapped in top elevator. Really spread across the map, these two teams. Lucid re-challenged that. I think Legend did not think that Lucid was going to walk back down long haul after they had that initial little joust. Trippy has the camo, but Eco sniffed him out for now. He's going to have to just survive and let him get away with it. So the score is getting closer. What a hold this has been from SSG, by the way. But this was the power up that allowed Optic to break before. It was about a 30 point lead for Optic Gaming. Guess what? It's completely gone. We're tied at 39. What can Trippy do here? He's going to fly in. He wants to clean up the damage onto Stella. Stella will take one down before he gets taken down himself. And Optic will keep the ball in elevator and will go back into a lead. They should cross the 50-point mark here. And Space Station is back against the walls. Very good play there from Trippy with the camo and the grapple specifically to prevent the play ball from going bottom middle. That will mean more points on the board and a momentary 15-point lead for Optic Gaming. We'll throw down into Turbine. Trippy versus Bound. Bound will be taken down elsewhere. Stella last alive now. Optic Gaming win the battle as the oddball will fall into the hands of Lucid. The shock, though, will go to Stella, and he can even numbers up very, very quickly. He was in a momentary 1v2. Now he's going to be pushing against even greater deficit. Picks up the first one with ease and still has half of the shields to bring to the battle. He's trying to cut the middle of the map as well because he knows Optic want to rotate. Gets the call out. There's a one-shot bomb tower, but that one-shot is Lucid. Two frag grenades are going to be enough for him to win that fight. Legend now taking on formal. The trade will come in. But the trades favor Optic because yeah. they have that lead. Exactly what I was going to say, Mark. Formal knew he was the last player alive, bottom tower. The fact that he picks up that kill on that trade prevents another SSG hold. And it's a big one because still a 20-point lead, 21 points for Optic Gaming. One minute left in this game, one minute left in this round. Optic, no. They just have to keep Space Station off of that ball. And if they can do that, and they will go within one game of resetting the bracket here. Lucid outputting so much damage at the moment. But where is that opal? It's a great play call from Optic. If they can execute here, Camel's going to be down. Oh. Big double kill coming in from Lucid. He's going to go for the triple. He grapples in the killing spree and the triple. And there is the cherry on top of the cake. It's going to be the camo. It's going to be the opal. And Lucid stands next to it and says, They're gonna SSG, come and get it. They're not grabbing ball. They are not grabbing ball. They're going to bait these kills. They're going to hope for another team wipe with only 25 seconds left. 
He just resets the ball for a touch to prevent the ball resetting. They're going to continue slaying with the time on the clock here. He still has camo. 18 seconds left. Down gets one. Lucid will clean up some more damage, though. There is one player maybe in position to make a hero Last play player. here, but that's not going to be enough. Eco, you're a pretty good player, but four Optic players will close down the final push from SSG. Optic Gaming, one game away from resetting the bracket. Big, big kills coming in unsurprisingly in this game as well as we went all the way to three rounds. And what if I told you, you saw some 40 bombs coming in from Formal. How about Lucid with a 53 bomb? 53! Wow. I mean, the level of Sorry, like, 54 50, kills. We sure changed him. Sorry. We did. Sorry, sorry, Tommy. 54 and 35 in a game where a lot of the lobby was in the 20s and the 30s in the kills. Lucid goes huge. How about a 24.7 KDA? out of Lucid. That is unheard of here in a grand final on the main stage. So much to talk about in that game as well. In the third round, there were some really pivotal moments that we'll talk about, but most importantly, Optic digs deep in round number three. Let's not forget, that's a reverse sweep in the oddball. They lost the first round. They had to win the next two, and they do just that to win game number three. When you look at those stats and you see that 24.7 or whatever ridiculous number, it just looked like a data error. That yeah. popped up. It was such an outlier in comparison to everyone else. And it's the stat line that divides the two teams. Incredible game of oddball once more. So many big moments to talk about. I mean, the triple kill from Lucid at the end. That's what really secured it, though, right? Because it's not just the fact that he shuts down the push. Yeah. He gets the camo. He gives the one thing to Optic Gaming that might have come back to hurt them and make sure that they button up that game. And they are now, like I say, one game away from sending us to a second best of seven. Also, a huge shout out to the team in the back, because let's not forget, as these games go into things like double overtime and third rounds, our replay operators and the entire team in the back has to be <laughs> cutting even more and more. These replay packages are so long because that's how long these games are going. They're going the distance. And keep in mind, in the replays, we're only still in the second round here of the replays. Well, I just heard from our producer, they just, oh, they've got, it's pretty easy for them in this series. They just hit record and press play at random points, yeah. and it just shows us you, a highlight. So like, statistically, you're guaranteed to get a pretty good <laughs> Yes, this was pretty good. good. The right here from Formal. Look at this. He waits and he baits in tower and just catching them off guard. They keep two dead. That's how they closed out the second round. And as we said, it was a low scoring third round as well. But big plays from Trippy with the camo and the shock to break things open and start the scoring. Yeah, it's just those moments, right? How many times were we talking about numbers on the map in that game and how it was always no one with a numerical advantage? It just had to be a camo or a power up or a power weapon that allowed one player yeah. to get the double kill first and then they could get the three or four dead that turned into ball time. It was a really strong hold from Optic at the start of that game. SSG made that comeback with the elevator holding that final round, but Optic ice up right in the final moments. And I mean, just take a look at that series. 4-3, 50-43, 2-1 in a pff, reset. D double overtime. Double overtime, 2-1 in oddball. Now, one thing we can't... <sighs> <laughs> I was about to say one thing we can guarantee, and then yeah, we were out of guarantees. We were out of 50 50 yeah. already, so we are out of, we're out of guarantees. One thing we can say is that we're. <laughs> so this case is that we're going to keep sure. playing. I don't know. It's just I, that we're going to keep I playing. Know. I don't know. We'll keep playing. I think that's all we can guarantee <laughs> at this point. I also want to take a second as we wait to get into that game to talk about a very specific moment from Optic Gaming that was just moments before Lucid's triple kill. The way that that developed, you might have seen it. Legend and Eco, last players alive in pipes. Optic Gaming gets damage on those pipes players, and as a result, they get an immediate ball grab. They toss the ball bottom middle, and even though SSG gets elevator spawned, so now they have a really good setup with elevator top cat as well as pipes optic gaming waits to, for the perfect opportunity they bait the camo bottom middle then lucid flies in grapple with the triple really well done to close out that round and there was a lot of plays that led up to that triple kill that optic had to execute correctly in order to set themselves up for success in the end they outslay 146 to 136 across three rounds as they re-enter the stage one game away then from resetting the bracket here but with how tight this series has been, one game seems still like a, somewhat of a mountain for them to climb, right? They've still got to get the job done. They still have to close this series out and not give SSG a look back into this series because 3-1 sounds great. You're one game away, but 3-2 sounds a lot different. Talked about Dead Zone, the addition that he's brought to this team. Let's not forget in that last game, he dropped 29 assists 
in a game where two of his other teammates and also players on the other side were in the teens in assists to drop 29. Four more assists than he had kills. Pretty remarkable. And we've seen that time and time again. Let's not forget Optic's debut on the main stage here this season earlier on Friday. Dead Zone leading the team in assists in all three games in that 3-0. Not surprising to see him continuing to deal the damage for the squad, which sets up teammates, of course, like Lucid to drop a 54 bomb. Not every day you get to see games with coming in with over 40 and 50 kills in a grand finals, but we are being treated to just that. I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm sure Arlington's having a great time as well. I mean, what a series this is. I feel like we're getting really, like, super lucky. Yeah, very Some lucky. of the finals we've had recently, we've had, I mean, just pick your, pick your grand finals from last year, to be honest with you. Yep, yeah. it's absolutely it's, true. It's been crazy, and I, the way that this one's going as well is got all the makings of something very, very similar, but Space Station, as they re-enter the stage, will not want that. They want to get this done in the first series, and even though Optic are ahead, and they've got more than a nose ahead now with a two-game advantage. It doesn't really matter to SSG if they can win the next few games themselves. It yep. puts all of the pressure back onto Optic. Every single game that SSG take from this stage, you know, the pressure goes off their shoulders and it goes straight onto the other side of the stage. Right, and let's not forget that Optic Gaming is going to be really aware of that, right? They're knowing that, hey, just because we're up 3-1 to one in the series does not mean that we can take any sort of energy out of this, any foot off the gas pedal. It's quite the opposite. As we take a look at stats from this series, a deadly duo of Lucid and Formal. Take a look at the numbers on your screen. I mean, 54 and 52 in one game is, is ridiculous. Now, don't get me wrong. One was an oddball game with three rounds, and one was the never-ending Imperium catch of the flag that went double overtime for Formal. But those are some incredible statistics from two players who are known for getting kills. Also just shows you, as we said, even though they have kills like that, look at how, you know, comparatively, you don't have a 2.0 KD on screen, right? These are 1.2 KDs or so. And as we said, deep into these games, these two, for these two teams to be out slaying matched 101 to 101 on oddballs, it's unbelievable to watch these stats pour across our screens. It's been already a historic series, and we're really just getting started of course, in this grand final, three to one here for Optic. We took a look at one man there just very momentarily as we look like we're ready to get into our next game of the series, who, this is his first grand final. He's sat on this main stage yeah. right now and thinking, what is going on? I'm not used <laughs> to this, but I can tell you, I bet he enjoys it if they win this next game and they make a series of it. Legend in the first grand final of his career. We sure there'll be more ahead of him, but for now, Optic, one game away from resetting the bracket here in their hometown. Lucid POV after dropping 50. Oh, he seems fair. It really does. 54 kills on the board for him, and he's going to be looking to adding to that total, of course, throughout the rest of this grand final. Kills exchanged early on, but you're right. All the closeness of these matches and the carnage, we've almost lost track of the fact that, of course, once again, you have the first time a European player has ever been in a major Halo grand final in over 20 years of competitive play. Already making history. We'll see if he can continue to do that. But in order to do so, they need to stay alive. Space Station Gaming with their backs against the walls. If they lose this game, we will go to a second best of seven. Well, Slay is going to be the game type here on Live Fire, and Formal is going to have that sniper rifle. Even though Optic don't have a lead, there might be an opportunity for him to do some work here. But oh my wow. goodness, the <laughs> entire kill feed turned blue. SSG wipe Optic. They will get the camo, they will get the sniper rifle, and this is trouble. Stella's got the sniper. Optic, I want to put an extra helmet on. Absolutely vaporized all at once. When we say a perfect timing push, it's hard to think of a better example. All four players respawn at the same exact time because of how clean the timing was. And now SSG, they're up 9-3. to three, Looking to send this series the distance and not go home in this one. Optic just slowing the pace down for a second. They kind of had to because a few of them were in the death screen just spectating. Now that they're back on the map, they can think about how they want to approach these next few moments of the game. Stella just locking down some lanes at the moment. Optic will know that he has this sniper rifle, and that's exactly why they're reluctant to peek. As you say, five kill lead. Extends here at 90. Oh, no. Ooh, he knows Luz is coming through. Two players in mud. They're going to try to get away. Stella just holding the angle. Two man push coming, and actually, three man push dead zone also on Nest. Now this has got the timing as well to line that shot up. Teammates are there. 
Bobtick again a little bit the better at this battle. And uncharacteristically here, Stella can't hit the headshots, can't even hit the body. And you have to say that was an incredible push there from Optic Gaming, just shoulder bring some of those pillars, just making him use those shots, but not being able to connect. SSG still have the lead as Legend flies forward, but Optic back in this. Yeah, Optic right back in this here. I mean, one dead, Legend and Bound will both fall here, so it becomes 12 to eight. Over Lucid POV, take a look at the camo as two were dead. This is a very, very big point in the game. It's momentarily three dead for SSG. And even though they're spawning inside of the garage here, they're gonna have to be careful because damage has been done. And Lucid doesn't need to be asked twice. QT's gonna be there as well. Form will pick up another. Legend narrowly avoids the green gun and comes back out to get the kill himself. Optic 2 dead. That camo is such a focus. Oh. It's a double kill for Legend. Former with a QT will slow things down, but not enough to stop Bound from collecting this power up. This is big. Former with the QT. Bound with the camo. We'll see how this plays out. Only three, three kills separating the two. Let's get to a listen in now with Space Station. You have no help. I'm getting into green. I have Cypher Tower. Check Legend's position. Yeah, yeah I see, I see Legend. I'm gonna come bigger, right? All right, Reds. Reds, three. Okay, I'm gonna put my... Okay, watch out. 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 Yo, check Kido, check Kido, both three. No, both watch out, both watch out, Kido. Yeah, I'm seeing towers. Watch out screens, watch out Kido. Watch out screens, watch out Kido. I'm seeing towers, okay, though. Alright, alright, reset the map, reset the map. I don't want to snipe from tower, though, by the way. Alright. I want to snipe. I'm gonna go bigger. Lippy, Lippy. Go, 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 go tower, Bounty, go tower. Uh, yeah, I'm jumping. Okay, put him in, put him. I'm going. Watch out, put him in again. Two shots, two guys, put him in. Two guys, Kido. Two guys, Kido. Watch out, Rat, watch out, Rat. Watch your bigger, bro. We hold for QT, we hold for QT. Watch your big. Make sure you don't push me. Watching big. I'm staring at the big. Watch out, big, watch out, big, dead. Nice. Top eight, top eight on the pistol. Pushing top eight. I have QT, I have QT. Top eight, we. Top eight, then. No one in, no one in. I'm pushing you, Nick. Don't see anyone. I think they're cursed. Okay, everyone, what's on the way? Lodor, weak. Lodor, watch out, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's our, what's our? Watch out, about it. What's a cut? Lodor, weak. Watch the threat. Watch the threat. Let's go. Let's see his watch. Top eight, top eight, Lodor. Watch out, about it. Three's on legend. Three's on legend. Look at our reload. Look at our reload. Look at our reload. Look at our reload. One and die, one and die. Top eight, watch out, Kido, watch out, Kido. Dead, 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 dead. dead. I jump mic. I'm stepping top mid, I'm stepping top mid. Smog, 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 smog. Smog, smog, smog. Let's get back to tower. Let's small, small. No screen, screen, Kido. Go small. Two one shots, two one shots. Yeah, I'm stepping top, spec out back. Alright, camo in 20. I don't want to snipe from tower, by the way. Somebody should fly. I got Pilos, Pilos. I'm okay, I'm okay. Pilos, we can jump my wall. Dead, dead, dead. Looking big with snipe. Pilos again. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. Come on, be up here. Come on, Kido. Come on, 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 I think we start playing. Okay, Dummy door, 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 I don't see him. He's here, he's here on the floor, on the floor. Yeah, fuck green guys, fuck green. Nice. Stuck, stuck. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Sniper and Quan are in third. I'm training, I'm training, Kevin. We need info, we need info. Is he in the training, guys? I want these stickies. He's hit me up. Well, the first two thirds of this game have belonged to Space Station, you would say, but Optic is starting to just chip away at that lead a little bit here, Andy. Wow. Dead zone with another here, a legend having to retreat back to keep himself alive. Very nice repulse there of the green. Rat Tunnel just sends that back on the one either repulse and even holds his angle there. 34 to 30, four kills separating the two. SSG got to be careful here. This is what we talk about with the Slayer games, right? When they have momentum, when they have the pace going their way, they can get these leads, but it's when they start to get a little bit kill hungry, when they start to get a bit over aggressive, uh -oh. that they just let people and teams back into these games. Is that going to be the case here? Or was Stella getting away with that sniper? Is that the comfort blanket that they need in this game? Very big 1v1 there from Legend to win that against Lucid. Keeps them in the lead, but only by five. Far from over just yet. And guess what? Sniper rifle and repulse in the hands of Formal here on tower side. Formal going to relocate to tower, you would imagine, to try and get some angles. Stella just falls just quick enough to not be caught in the reaction time that Formal has. Bound gives a little poke. Checks the Enemy cheeky jump up angle. Victory. As you see the battle now oh. happening in and around that camo once more. Bound 
and Stella combined to get that kill themselves. Stella goes in now, Bound will repay the favor. Wow. It's two important kills at this stage of the game. It's seven kills now to go for Space Station to put their second game of the series on the board. Very big kill. Somehow Bound, as you say, keeps Stellar alive. Stellar in the end, though, gets caught off by the big door and the green angle. So just like that, still a five kill game, 43-38. So he gets the kill, but it's traded out immediately by Stella. Trippy with another one, and now we're looking at Optic and saying, these needs to be no trade situations, and that's what has just happened. Trippy gets two. Without response, Legend will get one just to slow things down for a second more. The camo could be the game here on either side. Really is three kills now. No, ooh, ooh, another one comes in, though, for Bound. 46 to 42. What's the camo play here? This will decide the game. Bound got two kills there. Lucy's going to get away with the camo, but I think SSG have realized that they might be able to afford a camo going. They might even collapse right now before the camo can make a play. Let's see how they play this. They're actually going to slow the game down. They're going to sit top mid, try to bait the camo out. And Lucid maybe says, oh, oh, I think it's a double. 48-45, not over yet. Are they going to regret this? Stella gets one himself. Lucid cannot challenge that kill because otherwise he'll go down as the last kill. It's one to go here for SSG. Lucid has to take this fight. He's on an island right, more, right now. You can see SSG are trying to sniff him out, but he cannot find anything to play off of. Space Station now go hunting for that last kill themselves. The camo has disappeared. Oh. Lucid will be the final kill, and SSG answer back to Optic. It's 3-2 now, but SSG are hot on the tails. Another game that, of course, comes down to the wire. 50-46, your final score, however. Really good composure from Space Station there. Allowing themselves to deprioritize the camo. They knew it would be a factor, but they knew they could play around it. They could continue to add up the kills because they had that kill cushion. Here's a look at the stats in just a moment. Some big outliers gonna be Legend, the newest addition. Not only does he lead the team to victory, he also leads the team in kills, 17 to his name. This guy loves Sly Fire Slayer. We saw him drop 21 a little bit earlier on in the tournament, and now he drops 17 in a grand final to give Space Station a little bit of hope back in this series. And it takes us back to the conversation we were having before that game kicked off, right? Optic one game away, they'll know that. They'll know that it's just one more game and they reset the bracket. But now at three to two, things start to turn from, we're about to reset the bracket to, we're gonna be tied up in the series if we lose this next one and we could, we find ourselves in second place. Take a look at some highlights here. Space Station, went, keep in mind, off to a very early lead. They were up 9-3, to three, as you saw on your screen there. Then it was even 31-25, to 25, so things getting very close. In the end, this is really good communication you heard during the listen-in. They were able to take down the camo, but here's your final moment. It's 47-43 here. Look at the kills that SSG are able to get. They get their 48th, and just after that, they get the 49th, which are absolutely huge in the end. It's only a four-kill difference separating the two. Optic Gaming leading 3-2 to two in your best of seven. This track's an absolute banger. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah, where did this song come from? <laughs> Solitude is going to be our next game, though. And this is a very interesting game type and a map to have, right? Because this is one of the most unrelenting and punishing game types we have. We see the best teams in the world go up against each other. And yeah, we've had some changes. We don't have the S7 sniper now. We have the shock rifle. But we still see these 150, 200 point, even 250 to zeros yep. sometimes run against between two of the best teams in the world. This is going to be a game which is, you cannot afford at any point to be the last alive and challenge for a kill. You have to survive. You have to make sure that at some point you're allowing your team to get back onto the map. Because otherwise, if you go four dead and you lose two strongholds, you lose three strongholds, you are going to be in for a rough few minutes. You are. Both of these teams, of course, 1-0 in this game type here at Arlington. The one, though, that I'm looking at is SSG because of what we saw earlier. Let's not forget, they were down by 100 points earlier this weekend, and they mounted an unbelievable comeback to bring the game back up against Quadrant, I believe. They were down 246 to 110 or so, and uh -huh. they bring the game all the way back with six repeated three to four deads. Perfect Halo on display. They've done it once. The question is, can they do it again to force us to a game number seven? We spoke to Bound, and he was saying that sometimes SSG play their best Halo yeah. when they know they have no more mistakes to make. We're not quite in that territory yet, but they were, will certainly be in a position where they're feeling the pressure a little bit more. Strongholds is going to be the game type. 250 points to win here. That shock rifle could be a game changer. And we're starting off with a man who dropped 17 kills to drag Space Station back into this series. It's the Frenchman. It's legend. Truly unbelievable. 17 kills in a game that they won by four. 
keeping his team alive in this series. They desperately want to force this to a game number seven and the opportunity to end the grand finals in just one series. One thing you don't want to do is go too dead off the rip. Because then you're going to have SSG flying at you. It should be a camo pickup here for Space Station Gaming, and it is. The last player alive is trapped in blue already. And this is a worrying, worrying moment here for Optic at the start of this game. Even in the first few seconds, there might be a triple cap on the cards. Love that from Eco, keeping his camo player alive at all costs. Really, really good help just in case Stellar might have been on the receiving end of additional shots. The Stellar versus Trippy battle continues. Time will also continue here for SSG on the BC hold. 25 points on the board. The information that Stellar's just got as well. We still got the camo, so he can avoid all the shots. And Optic are trying to bait a kill out here. And Formal will bait that kill out. It's Legend who just maybe just goes a little bit quicker than his two teammates to try and force the fight on A. And that falls into the hands of Optic. They haven't played this so well. Wow. Eco's your only player alive here. Dead zone trying to pull the pressure, but guess what? Eco answers back with a triple kill, maybe more. Time will expire on that, but how about getting three dead for SSG? And just when you think you've done the job and can push out of your base, instead, Eco picks up a triple and ensures that his team now goes into a 60 point lead. Eco has started this game 6 and 0, by the way. Might be able to pick up his first death now as he comes under pressure. Still has one shot left with that shock rifle as Optic try and convert B. Looks like he'll give this one up. Now the flank comes in as well. He's got the repulse. He's trying to turn attention away to help some other teammates. Lucid, though, should be able to take the fight at sea. There's an opportunity for Optic to start scoring here, and it's one they will take. Stellar flies out right away. That's big because they keep two dead for Optic Gaming. Lucid's weak on truck here, which means three oh. dead. Last player's going to be at snipe. Big damage once again, just because Eco's able to stay alive as long as he was. So Space Station only lose control of the scoring for a few moments. Former does stay alive for long enough to at least have some spawners around ooh, him. Ooh. But the last shot from Bound, it's going to be clean to take down another Optic member. Look at Eco bottom middle as well, doing so much damage. It's a 2v2, but when you're scoring, you're happy with those numbers. Yeah, 2v2 as you said on the map for both sides. And it's been what we've been saying now what for what feels like about an hour and a half. Just so <laughs> back and forth between these two. Keller stays alive. Double kill with the camel. Let's see what he can do at Yard. Three dead. Trippy laughed alive as well, and it's going to be a triple cap here for SSG. It's 95 points and rising as the triple cap is stifling. Legend gets the kill without getting traded. Look at this. And now Stellar with the camo, he can have a field day. Oh boy, this was what was dangerous because Stellar didn't even have to work hard with that camo to get the first few triple cap. A killing spree for him on screen. Three dead again. They're going to get the A reset. And it's perfectly timed. I think everyone watching at home was worried when the trip cap came in without Stellar having to burn the camo or even really be involved in the battle. It was always going to spell disaster for Optic Gaming. And just like that, 156 to 3, the triple cap continues. Optic are trying to break out through mid here. Stellar, by getting those kills as well, and Yard collects a thrust just as if it's bad enough for Optic right now. It's going to be three dead again. It's four dead back to back. SSG. They have Optic in that blender. Three wipes in a row, and Mark, you said it. We've seen 250 to zeros. This one is potentially going to be very close to that. The triple cap continues. No kills recorded just yet for Optic Gaming. It's 205 to three. Optic need to stay focused here. They need to think one, two dead, one, three dead. We're back in the game. But for now, SSG are just not allowing them to breathe. They are hunting them down. And Optic, they are the prey. Formal stays alive for long enough for Legend to pick up another kill. This is domination from SSG. Staggered spawns though. Look at this. They might be able to finish C. We'll have to see. It's three dead. Dead those last player on driveway. That's going to be the game. It's going to be a perfect game from SSG, barring an absolute miracle. 250 to three points. What on earth did we just witness? Space Station outslays 31 to 12, and Eco goes 11 and 2 in one of the fastest, if not the fastest, strongholds we have seen in a very long time. Dominating does not begin to describe what you just saw. Do not adjust your television sets. 250 to 3 is your final score. Trippy drops one kill, and I, it's not even his fault, I think. It's just complete and utter map control, power-up control, power weapon control. It's a game type which is unrelenting, even with the best teams in the world. If you get full control, it's so difficult to do anything. And a few moments ago, we were talking about Optic resetting the bracket. Now maybe we turn the conversation to SSG winning the event. I don't even know what to say. Ego nearly goes 6x positive. Stellar goes 4x positive in that game. And I think everyone was thinking the same thing. When the trip cap hit, 
and they keep Stellar alive on LR with Camo, with everyone spawning Cafe. Here's this play right on your screen here. A huge shout out to the team in the back for having it ready right away. This was when they were in big trouble, because it's already 120 to three, and then you have Stellar picking up Camo after the trip cap hits, and then he gets a killing spree on the yard push, and they showed no signs of slowing in what might be one of the fastest strongholds we've seen maybe since year one. An unbelievable game from them. Uh, and as you see, they're really the outlier in this entire series. It's been neck and neck. We've been uh, relentless about how close these games have been. That one was not. So here we are then, everybody. The grand final could be decided right here, right now, in a game seven. We're either going to have another series of Halo in front of us, or we are going to have SSG walking towards that trophy you can see on your screen right now and lifting it above their heads. What composure, by the way, from SSG in this series. You, you felt like they were out of it. Yeah, you really did. It's, they bounce back in the 50-46 Slayer to stay alive, and then they take that momentum. They carry that in a huge way into Solitude Strongholds to send us to a game number seven. Let's take a look at the map seven record here. Slayer on Aquarius, Optic Gaming in Arlington. They are 2-0, and oh, and SSG is 0-1, oh yet to win this game type up against an undefeated Optic Gaming in game number seven. You really couldn't write the script any better. You just feel the emotion, not just in the room, but on the stage has changed as well, right? SSG now focused. One map away from being the first champion of season three of the Halo Championship Series, right here in Arlington, in front of the Optic crowd. Optic, though, still have the chance to reset the bracket here, to give us some more Halo, another series for them to come back and maybe lift that trophy themselves. Game seven is gonna be Aquarius. Slayer, first of 50 will win it. Everything on the line between these two. One game to decide the series, potentially one game to decide the tournament. It's gonna be Slayer on Aquarius for game seven between Team Space Station and Optic Gaming. Well, it's a good start for Optic and a good start for Trippy. A little bit of a difficult game for him in the last one. And like I say, the game type sometimes doesn't allow you to do anything that you want to. He gets that first individual battle and he wins it. And off the back of it, Optic Gaming will have the overshield. Formal's picking it up. <laughs> oh, look at this stuff. I was gonna say, he's under too much pressure here somehow. SSG just destroyed Optic Gaming. An absolutely clean wipe. Formal gets a little bit aggressive and he kind of goes car one to get angles into the gen of the front base. But right away, Space Station answers back. They actually sent players car as well as going down bottom middle and pink to just shut down that overshield. And it's five to three off of what felt like it was guaranteed to be an Optic Gaming early lead. Optic Gaming are trapped in yellow here. This is bad news for them. You can see it should be a second kill here for Stellar as well. He will get his three dead again for Optic Gaming. Trippy is last alive and Space Station have come out of the gates in this game seven. It's eight to four in their favor. Big credit due there for the side of Space Station. As we said, it was the first kills, the lead and the overshield going to Optic Gaming. They immediately fly out of their base to shut that down and they catch Optic Gaming off guard. Two more kills for Space Station is 10 to five, still doubling up on the score. Legend is holding down the pink tower, but he, now he's got three members of Optic Gaming in front of him on the pink, but this man has no fear. He challenges them all, buys enough time for the rest of SSG to come and try and clean up this damage. Oof. Yes. Ghost stays alive, tries to drop back down. Trippy will have to escape, but Bounce hunted him. Trippy does win that one off the nade. It just banks up to the top jump. So 13-7 inches score, still a sizable lead for SSG. Oof. Ooh, Trippy comes out of that somehow. Still alive. Not only alive, but getting that kill. The overshield's coming up as well. And little moments like that. Might be what changed things here, but there's Eco with a double kill. Legend flies in. It might be a triple kill, kill here for Eco. Stella's going to take it away. The overshield's still down. Wow, just back and forth on the pink side. 17 to 11. Still bound does not pop the overshield. He's not able to. Legend is the last player alive for SSG. <laughs> Can he grab it? No, all the way at car one. This will be an Optic Gaming overshield. Finally, the, everyone runs out of grenades. It was just nade after nade after nade. It was just an absolute nuke fest down around that overshield. Trippy goes for the beatdown. Oh Eco then turns again. it around. It's three dead for Optic, and that play in a game seven can hurt a little bit more. Second time in a row that the Optic Gaming Overshield was absolutely nuked by Stay, Stay Station. Excuse me. Two nades come in, and then Eco flies out of the connector to get the trade on the Overshield as well. That means 22 to 16. And just when you thought Optic had control, they had four dead. They had the Overshield. No. Space Station shuts down the Overshield again. 
but this is Optic's chance to get a bit of map control here. That was two dead, three dead. Eco last alive. And even though it's been a little bit of a shaky start for them, they've kept it close here, Optic. Only three kills between the two teams. Space Station trying to stay alive and not show for long enough for them to get multiple players back on the map. But look at Eco. He's been a, a sneaky little someone, someone inside of that fridge and managed just to get a back smack. Pushing here on the fridge, a lot of help. Lucid needs to come in and clean this up as well. They will get the two dead that he needed. However, two kills traded out, but 25-21. Most importantly, Optic has kept this game close. Not out just yet, down by five. And just got another kill as well. That's two in a row for him. And that just opens the map up a little bit more. Trippy gets that heat wave though, and we've seen some comebacks and we've seen some big performances from Optic. Usually it's when Trippy gets that heat wave and he's allowed to go to work, but immediately he gets shut down as Bound finds two. He's looking for the third on Formal as well. Legend will clean it up. 30 to 22, SSG are here to play. And how about the timing? They get the fifth kill as well. Overshield's popping now. Optic is trying to get immediate eyes on this Overshield, but I think it's grabbed right away. Stellar does grab it immediately, and now 31 to 23. Overshield in the hands of Stellar. This is getting out of hand quick, and they may be able to create the gap they need right here, right now. It shows you that the stats don't tell everything right. We were saying coming into this game seven, the Optic have a perfect record and the SSG do not. Well, it depends who you're playing, how the game plan works. At the moment, it's just a juggernaut walking towards Optic Gaming, and his name is Stellar. He is flying in. He's looking for another kill here. Lucid will get traded out. It's two dead again. It's 35 to 24. Lucid manages to shut down the overshield, but at what cost? At the end of what felt like just absolute wrath coming out of the side of Space Station Gaming, and Stellar's overshield felt like, compared to other power-ups throughout the series, it lasted forever. They stack up an 11 kill lead here with seven minutes left. Well, the Optic fans trying to get behind their squad, trying to drive them to get back into this game. Eco's going to be behind two players here. The nade comes in, and Trippy will get the kill. The flank has now been dealt with as Lucid will pick up yet another, but it needs to be some good Halo. They need an overshield. That's Optic need to get this next overshield. If it goes the way of SSG, it might be Kurtz. 36 now to 27. Can Optic slow this game down enough to try to get back in it? It feels like an impossible task with the way the Space Station has been playing, not only in this game, but in the last three games since that game at number five win. 37 to 28, Optic Gaming needs a little bit of a miracle and some brilliant teamwork to get back into this game, number seven. Legend keeps getting the first pick in these team engagements. And he gets yet another one here, Lucid. You can just see he looks a little bit unsure about where the Space Station Gaming members are. The comps seem to be falling apart a little bit here for Optic, and SSG are taking advantage. It's eight kills, the advantage now for SSG. They are 10 away from becoming your champions. You can tell they're even starting to trade here on the car side. They know that this gap is big enough here with an eight kill lead that they can trade a lot more than they'd usually be able to at a stage like this in the game. 41 to 32, they crossed the 40 point mark, now only eight kills away from closing it out. Well, I said they needed the overshield. Dead Zone got the overshield, but he's already being challenged by multiple members. Eco with the kill. But Space Station now within touching distance. They can smell it, they can taste another championship. Down three to one in this series, forcing a game number seven and off of Stellar's brilliant overshield play. The team wraps around that. They rally around those pushes and still up by nine here. Six kills away from closing it out. Stellar gets taken down. The damage should be enough to be cleared up. Formal's gonna be last alive here. So respawns do come in and that might help. Him stay alive long enough for Trippy to come and intervene. It's 45 to 39. Do not adjust your TVs here, everybody. Optic still have a chance. A break the wall chant erupts versus a let's go Optic chant answers back Legend immediately. Again. Kills traded out, 46 to 40. Still a six kill lead. Only one team wipe required for SSG to close out the game and the tournament. Eco's gonna get spotted out. Uses those frag grenades just to slow down the push towards him. Bound and dead zone trade. Great news as it's now just three kills for SSG to call themselves champions. It's Legend who gets another. And the man who's playing in his first ever Grand Finals, the first ever international player to get this far in the tournament, he wants to be the player to end it. It's 49 as Legend looks for the 50th, not just for SSG, but for all of International Halo. Bound will get it! And SSG will be the first winners of this season. They will be a champions here in Arlington. Makes history. How about it? 
chills here for me in the casting booth in Arlington. History made as a European player wins the first ever major event in two decades of competitive play. 50 to 43 is your final score in the final game of the series. Down three to one, they rally back to win game number seven in your grand finals. Well, SSG are on the main stage right now and you can see they are ready to get those hands on that trophy. A proud moment for Europe. A proud moment for Space Station Gaming. They are your champions. And what did Stellar say? There's one player in the world we were gonna make a team change for, and it's the player who just hoisted the trophy at the first event of the season. Stellar, Legend, Eco, Bow, and Coach Elamite Space Station Gaming are your champions here in Arlington. And you can pick a play from each of them, right? The back smack on streets from Eco on the camo. Stella, the ridiculous Imperial Snipes he was hitting. Bound with the 50th kill in the finals. And Legend with 17 kills in that Slayer. An incredible performance from all four members. And of course, Coach Elamite as well. Space Station will be your champions. Brav, it's been a pleasure to be back in the booth with you, dude. An absolute cracker of a final. But for now, we're going to throw it over to Blaze to interview our champion, Space Station. Thank you so much, Onset. Esports Stadium, show some love to your champions of Major One Space Station Gaming! Man, Coach Elamite, you're back here again. You get the second win with the squad. How does this one, what does this one mean for you? What makes this one so special? I mean, we put in a lot of work in this offseason. Ending up at Worlds was a, a heartbreaking defeat. You know, we, we held on to that all offseason long, and we're really looking forward to getting into this event with Legend, wanting to get a win for Legend as well. He deserves it. He's one of the best players in the game. Uh, this one is special for sure. This one definitely is special. Is he right? <laughs> Let me slide on over here towards the middle, okay? Eco. You know, you guys made this roster chance for this moment right here to get this win, okay? You guys worked so hard, and that was a tough Grand Finals. How do you feel? I feel amazing. Uh, I'm from Texas, so uh, Texas is mine. Texas is mine. Texas is his, he says. And with that win, it definitely proves it. Now, I've been waiting to talk to you all weekend long, and you've been avoiding me, but rightfully so, because you finally got that dub. You're a champion. How does it feel, Legend? Uh, it means the world to me because, like, I play this game 24-7, and finally the hard work pays off. So I'm actually so happy for this win. Shout out to my teammates. Like, I would, I would not do it without them. Shout out to Bond and his family. They made the transition really easy for me in the US. So, and thank you everyone for the support. Show some love to Legend. Now let me slide down here, okay? Stellar, you know, we heard the caster say it. If you guys are gonna make a change for anyone, it was him and you knew why, okay? This win proves it. How does this one feel for you? Uh, feels good, I'm really damn tired, but uh... There was a lot of good Halo played today, so yeah, I'm happy and proud of my team and more to come. More to come, he says, more to come. I think, Bow, you guys definitely got a few more to come. The way that you played on this stage, you know, we hear a lot of love coming to you and your family from Legend. What has this experience been like, you know, since Salt Lake City and you guys getting back here again to win for you? I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of heartbreak, uh, especially last year, the way we went out at Worlds. Uh, we knew we had to make a change and we did. and. It's nice to be on the other side of it for once and, you know, have some ice for once, so yeah. It definitely is nice to be on the other side of it, okay? Now, you guys have had so many awesome people stay to support you. A lot of yellow towels out there, a lot of people in the chat going SSG. What do you want to say to all these Space Station Gaming fans right now? I mean, my first one of you, I said to stay loud and get loud, and you guys brought it, so I appreciate the support and I love it. Thank you so much. You heard it here, guys. Everybody, one more time. Show some love to your HCS Arlington Major One Champions, Space Station Gaming! The roars from the stadium say it all. Space Station Gaming, your Arlington champs. 
And wow, what a show they put on for all of their fans. And by the way, fans coming out so hard for Space Station, of course, in Optics Home Arena. We heard you. You were lifting the roof off. You really rallied for your team, and your team got it done. They lift the trophy. And one thing on my mind right now, Clutch Tony, is that young man up there. He has made history. Not only has he gone from EU to NA, the first pickup we have seen from a top team, that transition is hard enough. But to now pick up a trophy, to now create history in the first major of his season, that means everything to him and his team. What an incredible feat that they have accomplished. The first one ticked off the box and they got many more to come. It's unprecedented. This is one of the most amazing things in Halo history for their competitive side. I never thought we would see a European raise the trophy one day, but when you saw Legend playing last year with that Quadrant roster, you knew he was a special talent. And the second that he was picked up on this SSG roster, you knew they were bound to lift a trophy, but it was the first trophy that these guys competed together and achieved. And what an unbelievable feat from all of these guys to battle through the transitions and, and all the hard times that they've had throughout Infinite and the second places that they keep running into. You heard Bound say it, I'm glad we had some ice for once. Well, they had more than ice. That was some of the best Halo I have ever seen played. That team can call themselves champions. Yeah, I'm so happy we're giving some love to that man, Legend. And, you know, he, he wasn't just a role player. He wasn't just along for the ride. He was a star on this opener championship roster. He really was, and it was amazing to watch. I'm looking at the series, and this was a three to one lead at one point in favor of Optic. And for, with his 17 kill performance in that Slayer, that's really what ended up turning things around. And then they kind of ran with it from there. Congratulations, Legend. You you're a legend. <laughs> I think you can happily say that, Tony. I don't think there's any denying that he is a legend. The game attack speaks for itself, uh, among with all the other legends on that stage with him. That experience, I think, has done so much for him. We talked about it coming into the weekend. I knew that we hadn't seen the best of him yet. I still believe there's stuff left in the tank. I think he's just going to grow. I think he's just going to be able to come into his own a little bit more confidence. Honestly, I would love to see from Legend. I know he practices really hard. I know he's on the game 24-7. This is going to solidify some things for him mentally. I think he's just going to flourish this season, and I cannot wait to see that happen. I also want to just give a little bit of love to Eco. Eco had a little bit of a rough kind of start uh, a couple of times in the tournament. Today, he was lights out. I couldn't fault him whatsoever. He was imperative to the win today to me in that series. He turned things around when it mattered most. In that Slayer, he was pushing so much damage across the board for his team. The cleanups were there for the others. Eco was a massive win factor for me, Clutch. Such a mastermind when it comes down to decision making, and especially in these chaotic situations, he seems to always have the right answer. Being able to weigh all the different factors of information that he has and make these decisions decisions is so difficult, but Eco, especially in that grand finals, I mean, he changed the outcome of games. It wasn't anything flashy, but staying alive when he needs to, rotating objectives or rotating two specific objectives when he needed to. I mean, you can't say enough about him. He's already a world champion. He's been there, done that. It's always a pleasure to see a player like that find his groove especially in the grand finals. We're looking back at some of the highlights now from the series, which honestly at one point in time, I thought, yep, this is going to a reset. We are gonna be seeing a second series here. Didn't doubt SSG by any means. I thought, of, yep, they can get this done in the second one, but I just looked at Optic Gaming and the kind of role that they had going on for them. And I was thinking it would be very difficult to stop. The stopped in its tracks happened. Space Station Gaming able to turn things around. You know, Tony, when you're looking upon this series, this couldn't have been closer. I know we had a shocker of a moment. At one point, these two teams were unbelievably close in kills. In fact, matching each other. Talk to me about that moment for you and the realization of actually these teams are some of the most competitive we're gonna see in a grand final. Yeah, I'm actually going back, so I wanna say that it was like game number four, and mind you, Lucid and Optic are already up 2-1 in the series, and then you see that triple kill with the grapple from Lucid that puts them over the 50 kill mark. It actually sparks an MVP chant in the crowd, and to be honest, when I saw that, I was like, well, hold on, they're gonna run away with this. This is gonna be 4-1. We're going to a bracket reset, but 
Like you said, SSG, they got that ice. They certainly do have that ice. Uh, it was in absolutely incredible to witness as well. Uh, Clutch, you know, looking back right now at the CTF, obviously very close going over time, and things were really happening on your screen that you were difficult to believe, honestly. Some of the shots, some of the kills, the clutch factor of both sides. These individual players are playing out of their minds right now. We're only in the first LAN of the season. Yeah, the third year of the game, this is what tends to happen. The pace starts to pick up. The individual skill starts to really shine. And when you put that much talent on one stage, fireworks are bound to happen. I'm pretty sure Formal dropped about 45 in that first pit CTF or an Empyrean CTF. I mean, it's no surprise that each individual, I feel like, really let their stamp throughout this series. And yes, SSG come out on top in the end in the best of seven, but if that's a best of 11 or 18 or whatever, these teams would continue to go back and forth, back and forth. It's such a, a, a treat to be able to watch this level of Halo consistently, and that goes for all of the Halo today. Even Shopify and FaZe, every single game we watch today, was so close. The margin for error is so little in today's world. You know, it's funny you bring up Formal. He really was lights out in that Imperium. Like you said, 40 plus kills. One thing that really stood out to me and shocked me was just two kills in that game seven to that uh, that closeout game right there where Space Station Gaming really uh, held him down, really restricted what he was able to do on the map. That was a really surprise considering that Formal almost had a, an MVP performance this tournament. He's been, he's been lights out. He's been crazy. Definitely a game to forget from Formal in that game seven, but sometimes the ball's not rolling your way. You know how well Formal was playing throughout the entire tournament, even in that grand finals, taking over some specific situations and even games. Unfortunate, but I mean, he's a legend in his own. Hats off to Optic Gaming for giving SSG every single bit of what they could handle. The crowd, a phenomenal show. And I expect Formal to be the professional he is and rebound flawlessly like he always does. This won't be the last we see of Optic. Certainly, you speak of flawlessness, and we did just breeze over that because it was that fast. That strongholds, the dominance <laughs> oh, of that strongholds. Wow. I mean, I know that you can kind of look at Solitude and think, okay, this can be very snowball -y if you do get everything in your hands, you get the position in, you have them on the staggered spawns. But Space Station Gaming, to do that to Optic, that is no easy task. That was flawless gameplay. And we saw that from here on out, to be honest, from them. They didn't slow down at that moment. They took that opportunity, they ran with it, and it was really difficult to stop them. But in terms of that Strongholds in particular, Clutch, you know, those are things that you just, you can't really pay players to do. That is something that is ingrained in you naturally, and Space Station, they were out for blood. It was perfect Halo, and going into the, that game seven, you had to be worried if you were an Optic fan, because you were up 3-1 in the series. Okay, you lose that 3-2 game, that game five. Game six is where you think this is where we can get on our feet and, and just end this. But before you can blink, that game six is over and all of a sudden you're in a best to 50 kills and all of the momentum was in SSG's favor at that point. They rode that momentum from the very start of Aquarius and never looked back. They certainly did indeed. Tony, looking at the stats, what are you making out here? I mean, the one thing that's crazy to me is you're looking at Stellar's KD, which is a 1.20. 157 kills with almost 50 and damage in one series, obviously it being a best of seven. But what's crazy to me that it doesn't include that 73 assist, which by the way was second most on his team wow. and actually third most in the entire lobby. So not only was he doing it on the kill side of things, but also the assist, man. Stella was crazy. A player we haven't talked about yet in this post game is Bound. And the role that he's kind of had to flex towards with the pickup of Legend, it did change SSG. They can say, Legend fits in perfectly, but what it does to Bound, it, it limits his opportunity that he's gonna have with Snipe, that he's gonna have with power weapons. Bound even went negative, but when it was on Bound screens, the impact that that kid has on the map is unlike any other, I feel like, when he's playing at such a high level. We saw some of the best of Bound, no matter what the stats say today, and that's why he's the one holding the trophy at the end of the day. Completely agree with you there. Actually, we haven't said his name enough today, and quite frankly, he is one of the best players in the world, and he's shown why. Every single player on that team has to be performing out of their mind to take down some of the best in the world also going up against them. Space Station Gaming, they are that team. They are our champions. Insane things that have been happening all weekend 
long. You probably wouldn't believe it unless I had this bracket up for you guys. Here's the winner's side. And of course, Space Station Gaming, absolutely flawless from them. From the second they got here, they were looking on fire. In fact, Clutch, we actually had questions about Space Station in terms of dropping a couple maps here and there, just getting a few of the jitters out, I'm sure. And th there were questions surrounding, like, mm, how flawless will they be when they get to their next part of the competition? The kind of higher ups, how will they perform? And my goodness, did they perform out of their minds? Traditionally, this is a team that plays to their competition. I feel like a lot of the times they rise to the occasion. And in the winners' finals, you see that 3 2 over Optic. That was everything for them. That grand final is just as close of a series, but Space Station brought the ice to Dallas with them, and that's why they're the champions here this weekend. I feel like Tony, Space Station Gaming, they have such a strong mental fortitude. I do believe Optic and FaZe are a little bit more of the mental kind of situation. They have to really battle with themselves at certain times. Space Station, they seem to stand strong a lot of the time. I think that's going to pay off for them this season. And it was definitely clear to me in that grand finals, again, you were down 1-3 in that series. Optic were literally one game game away from knocking, or at least knocking you down and resetting the bracket and putting themselves in a position to win the tournament, but to go back to back to back to back and become your champions. I already knew Utah belongs to SSG, but I guess we found out today Texas belongs to Eco. I was going to say, Texas <laughs> absolutely belongs to Eco. He's made sure he stamped that one down on the main stage. Let's take a look at the final placements and, of course, their prize pool to match. Things are looking awfully good for Space Station Gaming there, especially in their pockets. $100,000 looking very, very bright, not only in terms of their bank accounts, but also the future of their season because things have been working out for them, especially with this change coming in. Optic Gaming will take that second place spot, 60000 for them, and third phase clan thirty thousand dollars there are your top three in clutch i don't expect anything less to be perfectly honest coming in especially with the off season the qualifiers we kind of saw how things worked out there were definitely some surprises though outside of the top three certain things kind of happening all weekend where rebellion they've made a name for themselves i think they need to be very very proud with that top four finish it's a long year for the rebellion boys i hope that this was a benchmark to set as a four for the rest of their season they have high expectations of breaking into that top three steering the pot and telling everyone who they are. So I expect Rebellion and Complexity both to step up here in the future. But who I want to talk about is Wu Tum and Fo. We actually had history made, not just with the first European to claim himself a championship, but the first mouse and keyboard player to break into not only the top eight, but to the top six, putting the world on notice. Mouse and keyboard is a viable input. And I expect to see more of Wu Tum and more of the mouse and keyboard era step up. Let's take a look right now at the KD leaderboard from Bracket Play to see how things have been shaking out there, because I know you guys like to see it. And Stella on top with a 1.20, looking awfully good. Lucid just underneath, and he had a hell of a weekend. Unbelievable. Gosh. You know, there are times I just kind of look at his game plan. I think that's just impossible. I don't understand how you're doing what you're doing, but I can honestly say that for all five of these players on this screen. Incredible stuff. And I also just want to note, third, suppressed. Gosh, he also had an incredible weekend, a 1.19 heel finish with. And the fact that his name is just on this list here, Tony, it just shows you how good Rebellion really have been all weekend long. Because to finish things off there, they get do get to Sunday, they get upset by FaZe, but things are looking really bright for them. And I think suppressed had an awful lot to do with that. Yeah, whenever I talk about this young man, people say I'm faded and whatnot. I'm, I'm over, I'm, I'm over doing You're not it. I'm, faded. I'm, really, I'm telling the world that suppressed is the real deal, and he doesn't fear any moment whatsoever. The damage he's able to put on the map, the chaos he's able to cause. There's, there's, it's not a, a coincidence why Shopify Rebellion were in the top four. The whole team is so talented, and that includes Suppressed. Indeed, it does. Well, this major may be over, but we have a ton left to go. We've only just started, guys. This is the <laughs> first one. Yeah, SSG take it, but they got more work to do. You heard them on the main stage because we do have another few lands to get through. And these are some big ones. We have so many different destinations this time around. We're going to be hitting London, UK, Atlanta, Salt Lake City. And I love the fact that our orgs are also getting involved here. We have headers on these. We're going to have home crowds, hopefully, fans coming out in the numbers. So support their teams. Which one are you looking forward to the most, Clutch? It's got to be London. I, I love the idea of being able to go overseas, visit Europe a little bit more. And honestly, first time going there, like I said, 
uh, for a Halo event. I'm excited to see what the uh, European crowds are like. I know that they get up for their uh, their football games, so I'm very excited to see if that's a very uh, comparison in, in their uh, eSports as well. I expect that stadium to be rocking. Now, Tony, I know you bought the cowboy hat here to Texas, to London. What are you going to be bringing? Some tea? A tea set maybe for, you know, the Royals? What, what is going to be the theme for you when you get to the UK? I'm excited to try a full English breakfast, Ooh. okay? I've been hearing about this whole <laughs> beans on toast stuff going on. I don't know anything about it, but I will say I'll try anything once, and maybe if I'm feeling good enough, I'll try it twice. I'm going to get me a full English breakfast and uh, bring on all the beans on toast. Okay, well, do you know what? I like to hear that because that's one of my favorite foods, just to let you know, Tony. So I'll, I'll make sure you get a good, uh, a good meal coming your way in London. Uh, folks, it has been... Phenomenal. Wes, Tony, thank you so much for being here all weekend long. You guys have been superb as always. And folks at home, thank you for tuning in. It has been a historic first major this season. I don't know how we're going to top it. But if I do know one thing, Halo Infinite is filled with surprises. I don't think this is the end of some of these crazy upsets, some of these crazy runs from teams. I think it only gets better from here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll see you guys in London next time for more of the Halo Championship Series.